All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and uh, this is the first video of 2013. Woo! Awesome. So, um, this is my monthly update video for January 2013. As always, if you're watching this in the future, greetings. And most of the stuff will be irrelevant and will be laughed upon. Just saying. So, anyway, uh, let's get started here. Now, keep in mind, uh, since it's January 2013 update video, in addition to be talk, in addition, I'll be talking about uh, stuff that I plan to be doing in the year 2013 as well as this month. So, yeah, let's get started. Uh, the first new thing I definitely want to talk about is YouTube 101. It's a planned concept series that I have for uh, basically just telling people how to make videos and upload them to YouTube. That's the, uh, the basic gist of it. But where it gets complicated is in how I want to present that. Do I want to make it really simple and just give, be give people the basics, maybe a couple tips here and there? Or do I want to kind of make it a lot more complex and add in stats and uh, figure out how to use certain more advanced portions of YouTube to leverage your videos and things like that. You know, do I want to do it that way? So there's a lot of uh, different possibilities and scenarios being thrown out, but I do definitely want to at least make an ebook about it. Um, I don't plan on making it, you know, styled like a, you know, read from front to back kind of book. It's more or less like a referent, reference material, like a tech pub or a manual or something like that, basically. So if people can look through the particular topic that they uh, want to and just kind of get to that little portion and just read about it rather than watching a you know five, three to five minute video or even a 15 to 20 plus minute video on the topic I figure ebook will be much easier to digest when it comes to uh, referential material like that but I do plan on making like maybe little snippets of video to add to the ebook so because it's an ebook you can do that you can just like you know scroll 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 look at all the text that's cool and then oh there's a link to a video and the video will be in there you just boop there you go video for more information cool so there is that and I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop as far as that goes so stay tuned for more info and uh, next little bit uh, NFAX is coming back you heard right NFAX is coming back it's coming back I'm bringing NFAX back even if I have to make one fucking video, I'm fucking bringing NFAX back. You heard it. So, all your demands slash prayers have been answered. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to bring NFAX back until I get a working laptop. Which, uh, in the previous video I said that my Alienware M11X took a shit on me. Uh, so I have to get a replacement laptop. As well as uh, get a new laptop. So, the plan is to... Get my uh, Alienware repaired, get all the stuff off of it, sell it on eBay once I, you know, like format it and clear all my own personal info off of it. And then once it's sold, use that money to put down for a new laptop, which I have uh, some, bleh, I'm going to be buying an Asus laptop. Um, it's going to be super awesome. It's going to have at least a 1080p display, at least 4 gigs of RAM and a quad-core processor, preferably an i7, but I'm willing to work with like a, maybe a really awesome i5 or whatever the AMD equivalents of the i7 is, like an M8, M10, or something. I don't know. I don't know much about AMD, so there you go. So there's that, and um, I'm also going to be upgrading my tablet as well because I like this tablet. I have the uh, Asus TF300 love it but uh, the main reason I'm upgrading to the TF 700 which is the transformer infinity is because in addition to it being faster and having a better high resolution screen the, the cameras are both high resolution so in the event that my cell phone would take a shit on me or my camera battery is dead or the camera took a spill or something like that I'd have an extra backup an extra means of making videos that are better quality and I checked it out at Best Buy awesome stuff definitely worth buying so um, there's that and speaking of checking out stuff at Best Buy I'm also uh, planning on getting a new point-and-shoot camera because 
Uh, the main reason I get point shoots is because, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, because a lot of concert venues don't like it when you bring in the uh, like camcorder style videos, video uh, cameras. Uh, they prefer either like point and shoots or your cell phone, but uh, those are the ones that they're most willing to work with. So the the two point and shoots that I plan on uh, or that I'm debating between is the uh, the Sony HX 30V, which is the uh, like the super zoom style cameras, as like 20x uh, uh, optical zoom for a tiny little point and shoot body, and there's also the Sony Nex 5R, which is like a camera. The camera on steroids, it's so awesome. But the problem is, awesomeness comes at a price. And the NEX 5R is really expensive. And it also has interchangeable lenses, which is good and bad because, you know, it's good because you have a lot of different options available to you. But it's bad because it bumps up the price even more. But it's good because it adds more versatility to the camera and increases its value. So. Just kind of take your pick there. So I don't know which one I'm going to be going with, uh, but I definitely look forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments. So what do you think? Sony HX30V uh, or Sony Nex 5R? List them below. And uh, there's also a uh, possibility of me getting, uh, there's this, uh, bleh. there's this company called Pivothead who makes uh, sunglasses with a little camera in the middle for like point of view recording, stuff like that. And uh, I'm planning on getting uh, later on a uh, pair of glasses that has that, the little pivot heads. And I'm using that for like stealth recording when I'm in certain places. And uh, I know some places don't really like it when you, you know, have your camera out or your cell phone out. They, you know, they just get a little weird. So rather than do that, I can just go boop. There you go. And uh, I've talked with the people at Pivot Head. You can record up to an hour's worth before the battery dies out of stealth video, stealth video, stealth slash point of view video. So that's uh, another thing that's gonna be coming down the pipes. And uh, but the biggest thing that's gonna be happening this year, not this month, but this year, is uh, where I'm gonna be staying, where I'm going, what's happening. Because, um, just to let you guys know, uh, the ship that I'm attached to right now, the USS Kurtz, is going to be decomming at the end of February. So um, once it's done uh, decomming, I'll be sent to uh, back here in ASW, actually, to undergo the new sonar school and to learn the new sonar system for about two months. And then after that, I'm going to be going to the USS Lawson, or Lassen. Not quite sure how it's pronounced yet, but uh, if you guys know, as always, comments below. Lassen, Lawson, what is it? <laughs> so we go in there, and that is in Yokosuka, Japan. So I'll finally be able to make videos in Japan, and I hope to meet up with a with a lot of the J vloggers out there. Maybe do some collabs, things like that. Um, it's gonna be a great time. I plan on making a boatload of new videos because I mean. Japan's awesome. It's the reason that I uh, joined the Navy, was to go to Japan. And even <laughs> the reason I made the videos that I make is uh, because I, I'm trying to emulate the style of a lot of early J vloggers from the time I started making videos. Like, uh, you know, Tokyo Kuni, the late great Roger Swan, uh, those style of videos, which is basically just like travel videos, travel video slash vlog. So I tried. You know, even though at the time that I started making videos, it wasn't really feasible for me to go to Japan even for just like a, a weekend or a week or whatever. So I decided to, uh, in lieu of that, figure, well, I'm going to need to at least prepare myself for Japan so I can make videos that are presentable and stuff like that. So I decided to practice uh, doing it in my hometown and doing it in other places in the world where I've lived, you know, Chicago, San Diego, different places I visited during deployment, like uh, Panama, uh, Guatemala, Colombia, Mexico, those kind of places. So I figure, you know, I got about six, almost, uh, it'll be over seven years worth of practice 
uh, by the time I get out to Japan. So hopefully I'm somewhat decent and not a complete and total bag of ass when I get out there. But um, yeah, that's the plan. That's uh, that's the deal. That's my spiel. So yeah, this is the Andy San signing up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video as always. And I also got to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. I'm just making a video response to Reyna of the YouTube channel, Comical Reyna. And, uh,. <clears throat> In a recent video, she asked about uh, different lifestyle changes that you've made or like big life decisions that you've made. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about uh, one of the biggest lifestyle changes that I've made, and that was uh, joining the U.S. Navy back in 2010. Now, just to kind of paint you a picture of uh, what my life was like back then, um, I was unemployed for the most part. Uh, in between jobs, uh, it, I was only able to hold on to a job for maybe two, two or three months at the max, usually because of uh, lack of hours, uh, lack of pay. Um, the work would either be too much for me to handle and I'd just end up quitting or I just didn't like the work, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, I owed a lot of money. I was very heavily in debt, mostly due to student loans and a couple car loans and just a lot of really bad financial decisions, which uh, I've since learned from. And uh, I was living with my parents at the time, and uh, due to my lack of employment and lack of money, and because I owed a whole bunch of mon you know, money for student loans and stuff like that, I couldn't even go to community college because I didn't have the money to pay out of pocket. And uh, like I said, student loans were out of the question. So eventually my mom gave me an ultimatum, which was to join the service or find another place to live. And since I didn't really have another backup, I didn't have anywhere else to go, basically, um, I decided to join. But before I actually put pen to paper saying I'll serve and stuff like that, excuse me, I talked a lot with my, uh, my cousins who are a predominantly military family. And I just uh, talked with them, asking them, you know, what boot camp was like, uh, what life in the Navy or the Air Force was like, and stuff like that. Just asking a bunch of questions, doing a lot of research online, looking at the, uh, the at the time, scant amount of YouTube videos of, you know, real soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen and stuff like that, talking about their lives. And actually, you know, keeping it real rather than it being a bunch of infomercials. So, um, also did a lot of research on uh, about.com's uh, military section, which I still think to this day is a really good source of information. So, um, yeah, definitely check that out. It's my little my little plug to uh, military.about.com. So, check it out. But anyway, um, did a lot of research, uh, talked with actual people that have been in the service. And eventually decided to put pen to paper and was sworn in on uh, April Fool's Day of all days of 2010. And I went to boot camp uh, June 24th, 2010. Graduated uh, August 20th, 2010. Uh, went to different schools. Went to a school out in the uh, Chicago area. And then got transferred here to San Diego uh, around Thanksgiving time, 2010. And that's pretty much where I've been ever since. But uh, the cool thing is, um, one of the reasons, there's a lot of reasons I wanted to join Japan. Um, obviously for uh, a, a good job, uh, money, money's always good. <laughs> and uh, to, you know, see the world, stuff like that. Uh, get to visit different countries. Um, and eventually uh, go to college, you know. I can do courses while I'm in, uh, but mostly, you know, when I'm out. You know, go back to college, all expenses paid, and stuff like that. So that seemed really enticing to me. And uh, But one of the places I really wanted to go to, and one of the main reasons I decided to join, was to go to Japan and be stationed out there. And uh, to kind of get back to you know my cousins as a predominantly military family and stuff like that, uh, 
at the time, uh, my one of my older cousins was stationed out in Yokosuka on uh, the USS The Sullivans, which I think is still out there, um, at least at the time of this recording. I believe that's that ship is still out there. And this is back uh, in the early to mid-90s is when they were out there. So um, at the time, I was around six, seven, eight years old. And they were always sending me uh, a bunch of cool Japanese stuff like chopsticks and I think a, a couple... Uh, glasses and things like that but one of the things that really uh, sparked my love of Japan you know from way back in the day was a little Lego boat um, they sent me you know I was really big in the Legos back in the day so they sent me a little boat you know, a little speed boat with a little guy and it's pretty easy to set up and uh, I don't know if they still do this now but back then they had a little uh, they had the little instruction book on how to make it and a little pamphlet on uh, other Lego sets. You know, you'd have like the castle set, uh, the pirate set, the Technic set, which uh, you could like build cars and stuff like that. You'd have the town set um, and other various things that were out at the time. And uh, since they bought it in Japan, all the writing and stuff was in like kanji and katakana and stuff like that. And that seemed really intriguing to me just to see you know, all the pictures of the same Lego stuff that I've gotten from other sets, but in a completely different language. And just, like, it was so foreign and so so amazing. And I was just like, whoa. Like, this is really cool. It just, like, it it just blew my mind, you know? So I think that that's one of the things that really um, started my big love of Japan. And uh, it's kind of funny that, you know, almost 20, 25 years later, uh, yeah, 20 years later, I'll be out in the uh, the same exact place that they were at. I was be I'll be stationed out in Yokosuka in May of 2013, and uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird full circle moment, you know, to see, you know, 20 years ago they were stationed out there, and you know, 20 years later I'm I'm stationed out there, and it's just it's it's really a like I said a full circle moment. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. But uh, to kind of get back into the whole, you know, big life decisions and stuff like that sort of deal. I kind of went off on a tangent there. But um, like I said, it was it was really hard for me to make the decision. And uh, I think uh, I'm about, you know, I've been in for about two and a half years at the time of this recording. And uh, I've been faced with a lot of different challenges, not only uh, with my job, but also with... Uh, just simply being away from my family for extended periods of time because um, me and my immediate family are very tight and you know we're very you know we're very tight and it's just uh, you know it's really hard for me to deal with the fact that I'm not with them you know often or at least within you know reasonable driving distance away from them and you know it's been very difficult for me to handle that but thankfully nowadays we got technology like uh, like Skype and, uh, you know, I text my mom, call my mom on my cell phone. I don't have to, you know, <laughs> write letters, write actual letters, you know, send them out, stuff like that. You know, the technology makes everything very instantaneous. So I think that's going to be, uh, it's going to be really helpful for me, especially when I go off to Japan where it's going to be a completely different world out there. And uh, we're going to be running different time schedules and stuff like that. So... Um, to have this kind of technology, I mean, I, mean, I honestly, I couldn't imagine being, you know, a sailor back in the early to mid '90s, where the technology wasn't there to constantly keep in touch with your loved ones, and just, I, I honestly don't think I could have handled it. You know, it was a totally different time back then, and uh, I definitely, you know, tip my hat to those who have served. Uh, during that time frame and even earlier than that that's just <laughs> it just blows my mind you know so the, the things that they went through uh, but anyway um, yeah that's basically uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video about uh, one of the big uh, lifestyle changes as well as you know the upcoming big lifestyle change of moving out to Japan May 2013 can't wait uh, so, yeah, this is the Andy Son signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video here and others. And I want to thank you guys for liking, 
commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, Raina. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here with my monthly update video for February 2013. I'm going to try to make this as quick as I can. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to go over. I'm just basically kind of giving you guys an update from the last video. And I'm also uh, suffering from a cold, so um, if I'm coughing and hacking and kind of sound funny, uh, that's why. So, with that said, enjoy your 10 minute video. So, um, first on the list is YouTube 101. Um, honestly, I haven't really done too much from it from the uh, previous video. I'm still kind of ironing out the whole details of what I want, want it to be. Do I want it to just be basically a rundown of how I do things, how I put out videos, how I uh, do the settings and everything like that, or do I want to make it a more collaborative effort and bring in other YouTubers to uh, put their two cents in and how they do things. Because honestly, what works for me may not work for you, and what may work for you may not work for me. So different strokes, you know, the whole deal. So, um, But I definitely do want to release the ebook sometime by 2013, sometime this year. So I definitely look forward to that. Um, as far as videos for YouTube 101 go, um, I might do that as little addendums or just to kind of uh, illustrate certain topics. Uh, like I said, I'm still ironing out the whole concept of what YouTube 101 is. So uh, definitely stay tuned for uh, more updates and things of that nature. And uh, like I said, the last video, I'm gonna be resuming uh, NFAX once I get my laptop fixed. I got hit with bills pretty hard in January, so I haven't been able to do a whole lot um, despite the uh, unboxing videos from earlier. Um, that was paid with uh, Christmas money, so uh, <laughs> yeah, otherwise I've been living uh, the pauper lifestyle pretty much. I uh, haven't been going out to eat or anything like that, which I guess is, is kind of good. I need to lose some weight, but that's a whole other story altogether. So anyway, uh, NFAX are going to be coming back once I get my laptop fixed. And let's see, going to Yokosuka, Japan at the end of May 2013. So that's also incentive for me to make as many videos here in the States as I can while I'm still here. Um, so I have a nice catalog to look back on fondly while I'm in Japan. But when I'm in Japan, obviously gonna ma be making a shit ton of videos over there too. I'll be getting a lot of ideas from uh, people that are already in Japan, uh, people that have been to Japan uh, on my ship. Uh, my friend Mark, he's been giving me lots of different ideas and places to go to in Yokosuka and the Yokosuka area. Uh, definitely going to be hitting up those places, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see, next on the list. Uh, yes, I am going to be fixing my uh, Alienware M11X, uh, but I'm not going to be selling it. Um, I had to think about this carefully. Um, basically, I really wouldn't be able to recoup my money if I were to sell it, so the plan is now to just get it fixed and have it as a backup uh, computer for when I get my new laptop, uh, which is the big plan for my uh, tax return this year, is to get a new laptop, uh, preferably an Asus laptop if I can. I'm not going to bore you with the specs and all that stuff. Still the same from a previous video if you're curious. Um, but the laptop's going to be the main thing for this year. And uh, sometime I'm shooting for probably mid-2013, I'm going to be trying to get a uh, Transformer Infinity tablet, uh, which is the upgraded version of the tablet I currently have. Um, not in any big hurry to get it, but it's definitely on the horizon. Same with my new, uh, or upcoming new, uh, Sony HX30V point-and-shoot. Um, nothing wrong with this camera, like I said in my previous video, uh, but I do want a, like an upgraded version or at least a uh, another camera just in case this one were to take a shit or the battery would run out and I need to quickly change cameras, which was made pretty evident at the Uli John Roth concert uh, last week when uh, I ran out of battery life and uh, yeah, we'll get into that here in a sec. But um, thinking about getting the Sony HX30V or the uh, upgraded, the successor to the camera I currently have right now, 
which would be the SX260 HS. Um, so I'm thinking about between those two, been kind of A-being uh, videos of them on YouTube just to kind of compare. And uh, audio is no longer an issue since I have the Zoom H1, so that's not really as important as it was before. I'm just mostly focusing on video quality, especially in low light situations uh, where, you know, concerts and stuff like that. As well as zoomability, just in case I get like uh, nosebleed spots and I need to zoom in. So it's always good to be able to zoom in. So, um, yeah, with uh, my laptop currently uh, on the fritz, I can't edit the Uli John Roth concert that I recorded last week. Uh, so that's going to be out um, once I get my laptop fixed, as well as a couple of other videos that I've been uh, just working on this month and uh, previous months as well. They're kind of awaiting editing right now. So uh, once I get laptop fixed, I can start putting things together and releasing it so uh, you guys will have stuff to watch. So that'll be awesome. But this month, the month of February, I'll be focusing on concerts mostly. So unfortunately that means they'll be released later because of the laptop thing, but um, the wait will definitely be worth it, for sure. So upcoming concerts this month that I'll be at. Uh, this Sunday, Silverstein is going to be playing at SOMA. So I'm definitely going to be going to that. Uh, I remember first hearing them uh, back in college, my friend Dan. Uh, he, he really got me into Silverstein. Uh, especially the song Smile in Your Sleep. That was the, the main one that got me into them. Uh, I got into a bunch of other ones later. But uh, that was like the main song that I listened to. And I still listen to it today. So uh, Sunday, be going to Soma. Can't wait. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, the Canadian band Hey Ocean is going to be playing at Morena. So I'm going to be recording that. Uh, the main deal with that is that Ashley, the singer for that band, is also the voice actress for uh, Rainbow Dash and Applejack from MLP. So I'm uh, gonna try to get like maybe uh, some pictures with her, maybe uh, a little voiceover or something like that, hopefully, fingers crossed anyway. Uh, so that'll be fun. And if not, hey, at least you guys have a good, good concert to uh, watch because she's a really good singer too. And it's kind of a shame that uh, they didn't really let her sing in, uh, whenever those characters have a chance to sing. I hear that they get somebody else to sing. I don't particularly agree with that, but eh, it's their deal. And uh, anyway, the last concert I'll be uh, going to this month is uh, Coheed and Cambria at House of Blues. Let's see, Monday the 25th. So I uh, can't wait to go to that one. I've been uh, really looking forward to seeing them live for the, like the longest time, but they're, they're either always in L LA or I'm not, here when they're here you know the usual deal so i can't wait to see them i know they're gonna just bring the house down yeah boy okay see. see last thing on the agenda here is uh i've been getting a lot of ideas uh, mostly from uh, guys on the ship that watch my videos see ya um they've been kind of shooting me some uh, ideas for future videos mostly uh just kind of improving production uh, being a little more gregarious in my presentation, you know, being all wacky and exciting, wah, explosions, stuff like that. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I don't think I'll be doing that, but I do have an idea for a new like travel channel esque kind of series, where I basically like go to different places in San Diego, like uh, different restaurants, you know, maybe do like a like a let's eat kind of deal where I just review different uh, restaurants, you know, different, ooh, excuse me. <laughs> speaking of restaurants, I'm kind of hungry, but anyway, um, so going to different uh, local restaurants in San Diego, maybe some uh, like different fast food chains that are local to West Coast, so people uh, back home in Ohio have an idea of what fast food's like out here, you know, you know we have Carl's Juniors out here, they have Hardee's, that kind of deal. Uh, let's see. And also doing different uh, local snack foods as well. Just kind of stuff that's uh, unique to this part of the globe. Um, so that's another thing, another idea in the works. And as well as, you know, different 
uh, landmarks and bars to go to, uh, different places to see live bands, uh, <laughs> especially that because, I mean, I go to a lot of concerts, so I'll be able to tell you which venues are good, which ones are okay with cameras, and which ones you kind of kind of keep you know, low so the bouncer doesn't throw you out, uh, those kind of deals. Uh, so that, that's uh, definitely something down, you know, that's going to be in the works. Um, as far as that particular series, I don't have an idea for what it's going to be called or if it's just going to be like broken up into different mini series. Um, still kind of new, so um, definitely looking forward to your input in the comments, uh, private messages if you want to elaborate, um, things like that. So, that being said, this has been your monthly update video with me. Andy San. <laughs> so yeah, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this incredibly long and boring video. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I also gotta thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. It's alive. It's alive! <laughs> hey gang, Andy here. Just uh, want to do a quick video to let you guys know it's been going on for uh, the past couple days and give you guys a heads up on some uh, upcoming videos. Now, uh, if you've been uh, following me on Facebook, you know that uh, I got kicked out of Soma for taping the Silverstein concert. And uh, in addition to getting kicked out, they also had me uh, delete all the uh, footage from my camera and on top of that they decided uh, to actually take my camera take uh, the SD card out and uh, make sure made sure that I deleted everything so um, needless to say I'm not gonna be going back to Soma until they change their taping policies which uh, I don't think they'll be changing that anytime soon so yeah won't be going back so yeah, um, I got, uh, really upset about it, um, so I've been kind of off the grid for a couple days, uh, just kind of recouping and stuff like that, and, uh, I mean, to be honest, uh, I, I pretty much tape concerts for, uh, three reasons, uh, one, because it's fun, first and foremost, uh, two, because it, uh, helps spread the word for uh, bands that I like, and three, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's kind of good to, uh, remember, uh, the concerts that I went to, so, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, and it's, I still, uh, look back on, uh, some of my old playlists and, uh, see all the concerts that I went to when I was, you know, when I'm still in San Diego and stuff like that, um, so yeah, when something like this happens, I get really, uh, really defensive and uh, hurt even. But, you know, it's uh, it's club policy, so it's not much I can do about it. Except for uh, just simply not going there anymore. So, uh, that's the plan for now. Um, but, fortunately, they didn't uh, delete any of the uh, audio that was recorded from my Zoom H1. So, I still have audio of uh, the concert from uh, for about five songs. So, I got about five songs in for the uh, Silverstein concert, and then I got the old uh, boot. So, uh, thankfully, a uh, fellow YouTuber, Evan, of the uh, YouTube channel, The Real Concert King, uh, definitely a good channel to check out. I'll put links and stuff below. Um... He's got a lot of uh, great concert footage out. So, um, with his permission, I am going to uh, take the uh, video footage that he shot and uh, put my audio track on top of it so uh, you guys have something to watch and listen to. And then I'll just uh, tack on the rest of his videos onto the Silverstein playlist. So, uh, that's going to be coming up uh, fairly soon, probably sometime this week. Uh, I'm not sure on dates and stuff like that because I got a lot of stuff going on. So I'll kind of be uh, in between things a lot. Uh, so definitely expect uh, some big changes that are going to be coming up. Most notably, if you guys saw at the beginning, 
uh, my laptop is uh, fixed somewhat. Um, it, it, uh, the thing is, the uh, monitor itself is the only thing that's really busted, but the actual computer inside uh, still works. So what I did is I got a uh, new monitor, an Acer monitor, and I just uh, plugged it in thusly. And right now I'm rendering uh, some video footage I took for the uh, unboxing of said monitor. So that's going to be coming out very, very soon, as soon as uh, this is done rendering. I'm actually uh, uploading the other two parts as we speak. So yeah, that's definitely something that's going to be coming out uh, probably sometime tomorrow, at least the first two parts anyway. I don't know when this is going to be uh, done. It says about two hours, but you know how these things are. So, um, yeah, I'm also, uh, on the 6th, I'm going to be uh, recording uh, the Hey Ocean concert um, at the Griffin in uh, Morena, which is like a suburb of San Diego. So I can't wait to see them live. Um, hopefully I can get uh, maybe like a backstage picture with Ashley or something like that. But if not, hey, at least you guys got an awesome concert to watch. And uh, hopefully I don't get thrown out. But since it's a bar, they're not as uh, anal about uh, taping as uh, some clubs are, like Soma. But uh, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Um, in addition to uh, Hey Ocean, I will also be going to the Coheed and Cambria concert uh, at the end of this month. I think it's the 25th, if I remember right, at the House of Blues. So I'll be recording that as well. Um, so definitely look forward to that. And hey, if I get thrown out, I know that the Real Concert King will uh, come to my rescue and, you know, link to his videos and stuff like that. So, that's awesome. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much all that's been going on for the past couple days. Uh, like I said, look forward to uh, uh, more videos. And since I got my laptop back up and running, I'll be able to render a lot of the uh, unfinished projects that I started uh, when the laptop kind of went on the fritz and I wasn't able to use it at all. So uh, more stuff's coming down the pipes. Not only new stuff, but uh, older projects as well. So... Lots of stuff's coming out, so uh, stay tuned for more. So yeah, this is the Andy Son signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. What is the strange land of mystery? It's home! <laughs> hey gang, Andy here. Ooh, I got some chocolate left over. But anyway, um, I just wanted to make this uh, little video to let you know that I'm back home in Ohio for uh, about a week or two. Uh, just looking forward to visiting uh, family and friends, catching up, uh, just relaxing. You know, all that fun stuff. Um, just wanted to give you guys a little update as far as... Ooh, I went dark. <laughs> as far as, like, future videos and stuff like that goes. Um, since I'm back home here, I don't have my computer with me, so I won't be able to edit uh, new videos. Sorry, I got chocolate over me right now. <laughs> anyway, I won't be able to edit uh, new and upcoming videos until I get back to San Diego. And realistically, I probably won't be able to start until um, after I'm back in ASW. But, I'm going to try my best to uh, get a couple things out before that, so um, definitely look forward to those videos. I'll still be doing uh, mobile videos, uh, but as far as like prepared videos goes, I uh, don't really expect too much. At least not until I get to ASW, so next month. But uh, anyway, me and the uh, Talking Vidalkin, also known as Ariopolis, are going to be uh, recording some videos tonight for the third season. A first Impact anime, Impact the Third. <laughs> so uh, definitely look forward to that. I don't know what anime titles he wants to review as of yet, but uh, I'll be sure to keep you guys posted and stuff like that. So that's another thing that's going to be uh, coming down the uh, the pipes very soon once I get some time to start editing things again. Um, so there's that. Um, I also recorded a, uh, a video uh, about me going from San Diego to here. So uh, that's going to be coming out as well. And there's a lot of layovers this flight, so I get 
uh, <laughs> I get really depressed and I'm really tired because uh, I pretty much went straight to the airport right after the Hey Ocean concert. Like as soon as it ended, went back to uh, to my room to get my stuff and left. So I was running on like no sleep and I was just like really mad and <laughs> really depressed and just like, get me on a flight already. But like 10 and a half hours later, I was back home. So it was rough, but made it through. So yeah, like I said, um, back home for a couple uh, yeah, a couple weeks and uh, really look forward to uh, spending some time here just uh, recharging the batteries, catching up with family and friends, and uh, that's pretty much all I got to say for now. So yeah, this is the Andy San, right here, signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others, and I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. And my eye is twitching. <laughs> All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. I just wanted to uh, make this video uh, just to kind of get some things off my chest and let you know what's been going on in my old uh, nog nog here. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to give you guys a tour of uh, Scenic John's old room. So check it out. So I think uh, so. The uh, the walls are still the same color, but I think some of the paintings are a little bit different. And you got the little pig there holding the door open. Uh, TV's still set up the same. Got some old knickknacks and stuff from when my mom was in San Diego. Uh, there's my mom's old tiger painting in the back there. There's my stuff. Uh, they ha they brought in an elliptical since uh, the last time I was here. I guess they been trying to th you know make this like a workout room or something like that. And they got a painting in the back here. Ugh. God, the camera angles are really lame, I know. But, um, yeah, there's uh, more of my stuff there, too. So, yeah, that was mostly for my own personal reference. So I could see the progress of scenic old John's room. So, I, I just wanted to uh, make this video to kind of, like I said, air some thoughts and debates about the future as well as the past. And... I've been I've been listening to a lot of uh, a lot of music that I used to listen to back when I was in college, and it's kind of got me pining for the old days, you know, hanging out with uh, my friends from college and just kind of catching up and stuff like that. But um, a lot of them are out of state, so it's really hard for them to come back to Ohio or anything like that, you know, unless it's like Christmas time or something like that, and uh, you know, so. Like I said, I've been listening to a lot of stuff, kind of getting nostalgic and remembering the uh, the old times, you know, back in high school, uh, back in college, you know. And I know that those times weren't, you know, the best because there was a lot of really, uh, really hard times that I had to go through. A lot of really dark, very deep depressions that I went through that I think overall helped me grow as a person. But uh, we're definitely not fun to go through, let me tell you. Um, it's uh, It's been almost six years. Uh, it'll be six years as of May this year, uh, 2013, since I've been at uh, Urbana University. I got kicked out in May 2007. And uh, from there, my life's kind of been on a bit of a roller coaster. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, you know, the first three years afterwards were hopping from job to job trying to just move on with my life and not really going anywhere and then in 2010 I joined the Navy that's when things started you know really picking up for me I was able to pay on my bills again and just kinda of develop a bit of a career but um, I don't know being in for almost three years now uh, I don't know if I want to stay in, you know, long term. I really want to go back to college so that way I can get my degree and go out and just do my own thing, you know. Um, so I think once I get to my next command, not, not ASW, but, you know, the next ship, uh, I'm going to be pursuing, you know, getting an early out um, so I can go back to college. 
And there's uh, there's other avenues that there's a lot of different avenues I can pursue in order to get an early out, um, which I'll probably cover in future videos once I'm a little more informed. But um, yeah, just uh, you know, I, I've been really debating over you know the past couple months, especially since I was on deployment, about uh, where I want to go to college at, what I want to major in, and things like that. Um, you know. It changes from day to day, week to week, month to month, but uh, right now I'm thinking of something uh, in uh, like cinematography, you know, more more of the technical side, not so much like uh, the artsy fartsy, you know, film studenty side of things. I'm looking more into like the technical, how they actually set up the cameras and the microphones and leveling audio and doing video editing and stuff like that, you know, more on a, on a professional level of things. And uh, it's kind of about uh, kind of a toss-up between that and, you know, the whole new media thing, as well as uh, doing, like, sound engineering, you know, being like a music producer, basically, you know, helping them, uh, you know, set up the, uh, the levels and help uh, mix things. So I guess it'd be more like a music engineer, I guess, so, that guy, <laughs> so, um, it's kind of a toss-up between those two, you know, the audio and the visual that I've been, uh, looking into, and, uh, as far as where I want to go to college at, that's also been a toss-up, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, do I want to go to college back here in Ohio, where I'm closer to family and friends, do I want to do, like, maybe Michigan, where I'm further away, but still, you know, if I really wanted to come down to visit people, you know, I could come down for like a weekend or something like that. Um, or do I just want to go back to uh, the West Coast, you know, back to California to uh, pursue my degree out there? And it's it's something that I've been really struggling with, to be honest. Um, so, you know, I've been thinking about, well, what if I sit, spend a semester or two here in Ohio or Michigan and then go out to California to do the rest of my degree, or go study abroad for another semester, and then go to California to do my degree. So there's there's uh, a bunch of different, uh, uh, different uh, ways to pursue this. But I think, um, realistically, I want to probably do my degree out in California, if that made any sense. <laughs> Well, that sounded so undecided, but I, but, uh, I really want to do my degree out in California, and uh, I think, you know, the California lifestyle has been very good to me. I've really made a lot of progress as a person, and honestly, I've been babied out there too much, um, just with the way of, you know, hey, you want to go out and do something? Just walk to the trolley, go downtown, and have some fun. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, I don't know if I want to go to San Diego, because even though I've been there for two years and I love it, um, I don't know. I, I just I want to explore other areas of California. Now, as far as like L.A., mm, I don't know about L.A. That's a little so-so for me, but maybe further up north, you know, more like Bay Area, San Francisco, Sacramento, that kind of place right up right up in there. So like mid-California, I guess you could say. Um, and just kind of explore uh, different avenues and stuff like that. And I know they got a lot of good film and music uh, colleges and stuff like that up there. So I know that there's definitely uh, places for me to explore those options. And, uh, you know, like I said, I could probably do like a semester or so closer to home and then move out there, but, uh, I don't know how, uh, funding and stuff like that through my GI Bill is going to do. I don't know if you have to declare a certain state or anything like that, so, uh, depending on funding and stuff like that, I may either just go to California outright or do what I said and take a semester or two closer to home so I can be closer with family and friends for a while before I make the move out there, travel abroad, or something like that. So, that's just a couple uh, different avenues that I've been that I've been thinking about. And as far as, you know, making a career out of the Navy full-time, 
nah, I don't really want to do it. I want to, you know, pursue an early out once I get to my next ship and see, uh, see what they say about it, see if I can get an early out, because I'll be approaching my uh, three-year mark once I get out there. So um, I will be eligible for an early out. So uh, we'll see what they say, you know. Even if I have to stick it out for another three years, it's no big deal. But I would prefer to get out early so I'm not not as much of the uh, the old fuck in class, you know. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Just a lot of pining for the past and looking towards the future and uh, stuff like that. And also, uh, well, <sighs> crap, it's almost at the 10-minute mark. So, uh, for some reason, when... Uh, my camera hits the 10 minute mark, it cuts off the first 10 seconds of audio. I don't know why, it just does. So, if the audio just cuts out for a little bit, just hang in there, and I'll finish the rest of the video. So, just, uh, just hang tight in like 5 seconds, so, yeah. Okay, I don't know why it does that, but anyway, um, what I was trying to say is uh, little video updates. Um, I, will, I won't be able to finish up uh, like editing First Impact Anime or any of the other stuff that I recorded while I was here until after I get back so I could actually work on it on my computer because all I have here is my tablet and my phone, so I, I can't work on that here, obviously. So, um, I have a lot of stuff that's going to be coming out, but I'm going to be really busy once I get back to San Diego, because i got to be busy checking out, and uh, moving, and moving, not only moving out, but also moving in, and it, it's, it's a big to-do. So, um, I'm going to try to work on it as much as I can, but realistically speaking, don't expect anything until May. Or not May, sorry, March. March, not May. So, uh, expect a lot of stuff to be coming out in March, realistically speaking. But if it does come out earlier, then awesome. So, yeah, that's uh, all I wanted to say, just to get some stuff out of my brain. So, yeah, this is the Andy san signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this channel, in this video, and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. I just wanted to make a quick video to let you guys know that I'm alive, and I'm back in San Diego. I'm not dead or strung up or whatever you guys thought I was. So I didn't forget about you. I've just been uh, really busy as of late. Um, just got back from leave uh, a couple days ago. Uh, got some stuff settled in. Uh, work, I'm currently working on uh, just checking out of the ship, you know, as far as like, you know, Navy related stuff goes. So, check out of the ship, move all my stuff from this room to uh, my other room in ASW once I check on board over there. So, I don't know if I'm going to get barracks or, you know, hotel room or what. So, we'll find out. But uh, anyway, yeah, before I went on leave, they uh, had us move to this uh, other room. So I'll give you guys a really quick tour because I got some uh, announcements and stuff to make. So I don't want to make this video too long. But anyway, here's a room tour. All right, so this is a lot fucking jankier than uh, the last room. I'm actually starting to miss it. And uh, pardon the mess. Uh, we're actually kind of, <laughs> my roommate is in the process of moving all his stuff to a storage unit, so he uh, has stuff just everywhere, and it's just kind of encompassing. And this is my side, it's still messy, but it's somewhat organized. And what is this? Oh yeah, it's a project I'm working on. The Uli John Roth set that uh, <laughs> I've been... Uh, waiting forever to work on. I'm currently working on that right now. So that's one of the uh, announcements I wanted to make. So um, I just finished the uh, Silverstein set. 
I only had a couple videos left on it that I had to upload, and I think I uh, re-uploaded one, one or two that got blocked, so hopefully those stay up a bit longer. Hopefully I don't get, like, super blocked, but if they do, not much I can do about it. But they're all up there as of uh, this recording, so yeah, guys can uh, definitely check that out. I have the uh, playlist on my Andy Son channel as well as my The Andy Son channel where you can see all the videos in their entirety and all that stuff. And uh, the rest of the set was recorded by uh, my friend Evan from youtube.com slash therealconcertking. He managed to get the whole set. And uh, when I got my videos deleted by the SOMA staff, um, they didn't uh, manage to delete the audio that I recorded. So I just basically took Evan's videos and merged it with my audio. So. I've got like seven videos out of it, I think, about six or seven videos, and then the rest of it is uh, his stuff entirely, so um, there's that. Um, like I said, right now I'm currently working on the Uli John Roth set, I'm about seven songs in as, the, as of like right now, <laughs> on the tail end of that. Um, once I get uh, the Uli John Roth set done, I'm going to start work on uh, friggin' the Hey Ocean set. Uh, then I'm gonna start work on uh, new episodes of whoa, new episodes of First Impact Anime. You heard right. Um, gonna be busting out some new episodes of First Impact Anime. Uh, probably starting uh, March, uh, depending on what's gonna be going on with uh, moving and all this other stuff. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be like beginning of March or like mid March, but. Realistically, it'll prob probably be mid-March, but I might be able to uh, get it out sooner depending on uh, like how much time I have and stuff like that because, you know, 1080p video t takes a while to process, even at a lower uh, bit rate, which is what I'm doing right now for the Uli John Ross set. I've kind of made a bit of a compromise as far as like... Uh, video bitrate and stuff like that. I mean, it still looks good. And it's going to look great on YouTube, but it's not like super duper high def quality. So, keep that in mind. <laughs> but the audio is great, no matter what. I uh, definitely did not compromise with the audio. So, um, and uh, I think for like a future Zoom uh, video, I'm going to do some like Compare and contrast for some uh, like audio clips and stuff like that, just to give you guys an idea of uh, what the zoom sounds like compared to internal mics. Um, so that's that's another possibility on the horizon. But right now, I got a lot of stuff on my plate, so that's going to be further out, maybe like a month or two later. So just uh, give you guys a heads up. Um, like I said, first impact anime. We're actually switching up the format, which. Uh, me and the Talking Vidalkin will let you guys know in an update video that I also have to edit <laughs> and put annotations and all that stuff in for. Um, I don't know if Blip TV has an annotations feature, but we're going to find out. And uh, thinking about maybe like putting preview videos up on the Floppimation channel on YouTube. It's, it's currently inactive right now, but hopefully I can... Uh, Put at least the uh, like the preview videos and stuff like that up there, and then you guys can go to our uh, Blip TV channel to watch the whole thing. So that's another possibility. Um, uh, what else we got? What else we got? What else we got? We got we got lots of stuff. Um, my going back home video and coming back to San Diego videos are going to be out as well. I got to work on those. Um, I think I recorded a couple videos while I was over there too. I don't remember. I got <laughs> I got a lot of stuff to look through on my uh, my video card. So um, oh yeah, we also did a uh, movie night as well. Me and the Talking Vidalkin found uh, one of the lost uh, <laughs> videos that we were looking for. Um, we didn't get it on DVD. Uh, one of the guys on YouTube found a copy of it and put it up on YouTube. <laughs> so we're just riffing off of that. Um, so that's another thing coming up, as well as uh, the whole First Impact anime thing. And, uh, let's see. Last little bit before you guys get totally bored and uh, 
<laughs> click away from this video. Uh, really important thing. Um, I've been really debating, like I said in uh, previous videos, about uh, making like a Facebook fan page or bringing back my Twitter page or something like that. Uh, just because, I don't know, at the, you know, I really didn't have a lot of time to put into it. I still don't really, but I think, you know, I can start to make the time, you know, as best as I can. Now, keep in mind, you know, deployments and stuff like that, you know, I can't always be on the computer. And even if I can be, you know, the internet quality is kind of mm, so-so. So, um, with that said, um, I will make a deal with you guys. If you guys want me to bring back my uh, my Twitter page and make like a Facebook fan page so you guys can you know know when my videos come out and stuff like that you know without subscribing to my YouTube channel or whatever so you guys know on Facebook um, once I hit uh, 1,000 subscribers on my main YouTube channel which is youtube.com slash andyson that's the channel you're watching right now um, so if I get a thousand subscribers, or should I say when I get a thousand subscribers, which I think at the time of this recording I have 716, if I remember right, so about 284 more subscribers. Hey, I'm good at mental math. <laughs> anyway, uh, 284 more subscribers, at least at the time of this recording, and uh, I'll make a Facebook fan page so I can share all my, uh, all my uh, videos that are being released when they're released. Um, also put up like playlists for concerts. Um, maybe give you guys like little updates and stuff like that for uh, future videos, like text updates, you know, in case I can't make a video or what have you. So um, that's basically what's going to be going on with the Facebook page as well as the Twitter page. And, you know, maybe put up some fun pictures of deployment, stuff like that. You know, we'll just kind of play it by ear. But anyway, that's all I got to say. So, yeah. This is the Andy Son, signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video, this incredibly long video, and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Seven years, guys. I've been on YouTube for seven years. Ain't that some crazy stuff? <laughs> awesome. So, I just wanted to make that little screenshot just to let you guys know that I am recording this on March 1st, 2013. But because I only got like 20 minutes left on my coast, it'll prob probably be uploaded at the beginning of March 2nd. But anyway, you guys know. So, with that said, hey gang, it's Andy Sand here. And uh, in addition to this being my uh, March 2013 update video, it's also going to be my seven-year YouTube anniversary video, so I'm going to give you guys like a state of the Andes on address as well. But first, updates. Um, first on the list, um, going back, uh, I'm currently working on the Hey Ocean set. I actually have a, a video rendering right now. I'm about, excuse me, about halfway through the Hey Ocean set um, because, like I said, because I'm rendering them in 10, 1080p. Uh, they take a bit longer to render than the old 720p videos that I used to do. Um, so it may take a bit for me to actually get the set up there in its entirety. But at this rate, you know, I'll, you could probably see it in like a week or two. Um, hopefully. Pending uh, personal life and things of that nature. So I got the Hey Ocean set currently about halfway through. Um, other stuff... On the agenda here, I have some things. Um, I have a first. Oh, sorry about that. I have a first impact anime, as well as an episode of Movie Night that the, doc, the Talking Dawkin and myself recorded while I was uh, on leave. Um, but we are going to make some changes to the first impact anime uh, format. To, uh, changes that we think are for the better, which will be covered in a future video. So after the whole. Hey Ocean thing, I'm going to be releasing an announcement video, which will cover this in uh, more detail, but it's, uh, I just wanted to let you guys uh, know, you know, give you a heads up and stuff like that. So, uh, there's going to be that. 
Like I said, first impact anime, an episode of Movie Night. Um, I think I have. Oh yeah, I have a couple things that I'm gonna be uploading on my The Andy San channel. Uh, I did a, a run through uh, for this place called Convoy Street, which is like uh, like San Diego's uh, Asia Town of sorts. It's not really like Chinatown. It's I guess you you could call it like Koreatown. Because it's mostly geared towards Koreans, but even then, it has Chinese restaurants, Japanese restaurants, Thai restaurants, uh, pfft, you name it, <laughs> as far as Asian stuff. Um, by Asia, I mean Oriental. I don't didn't really see any like Indian restaurants out there, but still, you know, they got places for that here. Um, so I did an initial run through of Convoy Street. You know, I the actual. That sounds nasty. Anyway, um, I did a run through of uh, different businesses and stuff like that that uh, you know I like to go to when I'm out there in Convoy Street. Uh, it was uh, the first run of videos I did with my friend Sam when she was still here in San Diego. And uh, to be honest, uh, I didn't, I wasn't really satisfied with uh, those series of videos. It just uh, like I had a concept going, but what came out really wasn't what I wanted, but because the videos were already done, you know, I figure it'd be a real waste to just delete them. And plus, I had my friend Sam on them, so you know, just it was one of the uh, some of the last uh, video footage that I had with her. So um, I'm gonna be uploading those onto onto my The Andy San channel soon. Uh, the videos themselves are all done. It's just a uh, just a matter of uploading them. Uh, but they are at uh, regular resolution, which uh, is a bit of a bother because I used a used a combination of my uh, my cameras as well as my old uh, Droid 2 Glo Global phone, which only recorded in uh, standard definition. So think like 480p basically. So that's going to be coming out, and because I wasn't really pleased with the uh, the first. Uh, batch of Convoy Street videos, like I said, from 2011. Uh, earlier this year, back in January, I did another run-through of Convoy Street videos and uh, went through, went through uh, pretty much the same shops, show some updates, uh, do uh, basically like more thorough uh, walkthroughs. Um, some places I still had to go fast because, you know, I don't want shopkeepers giving me hassle or anything like that. Like, what are you doing filming here? What are you doing? You know, err, because, you know, people are like that, so. Um, try to move as quickly as I can, and still try to pack as much detail in as I can. So, like I said, I recorded uh, the new batch of Convoy Street videos, was it January 13th, according to my notes here. Um, so, after I get all this stuff done and uploaded and all that fun stuff, I'm going to be working on those videos. So, my plate's pretty full. <laughs> to say the least. And uh, in addition to that, I'm also going to be taking on uh, a couple new projects. Um, some are a little uh, secret right now. I'm going to be potentially filming this weekend once I get done uh, moving, which uh, in, uh, in personal news, I am going to be starting uh, school on Monday again for the new sonar system. So um, I won't have as much time as I used to to uh, like make videos and do that, all that other stuff. I still have to uh, maintain schoolwork and all that fun stuff. But that's not to say I, I won't be doing videos. It's just you know with this new workload, ex you know don't expect them to to be released like every day. Is what I'm trying to say. So um, that said, uh, I'm gonna be. Moving, I'm going to be really busy this weekend. I'm going to be moving all my stuff from this room over to my room over in ASW where I checked in today. And, uh, I mean, the rooms are a lot nicer than I remember. They have updated amenities. They have Wi-Fi this time, so I don't have to slum it at Starbucks, you know, if I want to get some Wi-Fi or tether off my phone to do that. Um, they got some really decent Wi-Fi up there that uses the uh, the same account that I have here actually so um, it'll just be easy peasy just move my stuff and be like oh okay mm, done <laughs> so that's nice 
And uh, but I guess the downfall is I w I'll still have a roommate because they're still bringing in people for the uh, the upcoming class. So I guess I will have a roommate. I don't know if it's going to be like a regular student or another fleet returnee. But judging from the people I've met on my floor, um, I guess they're dedicating that floor to fleet returnees. Or I just happen to run into a couple of them, whatever the case may be. So um, that's the thing. And uh, like I said, I'll be starting class on Monday. Um, it'll be for two months. And then uh, at around mid-May, mid -May, I'll be uh, going on leave. And then after that, I'll be going to the USS Lassen in Yokosuka, Japan, where uh, I'll have all kinds of fun adventures and be forward deployed and busy as all get out. But uh, I definitely look forward to it. Um, I know it's going to be hard. But uh, I think it's definitely something that I can uh, I can do, and uh, I definitely got to hit the ground running, you know. <laughs> Especially as a second class without a uh, a warfare device, I gotta really uh, step my game up, to say the least. Um, but that's that's a video for another day. But anyway, this weekend uh, the plan is to move all my stuff out of here, move it over to my room in ASW, and. Uh, get all packed in, settled in, and uh, maybe film some uh, some videos, potentially, maybe, depending on uh, if uh, circumstances work out. Um, that'd be awesome. Uh, but I gotta keep a uh, hush-hush about it for now. I don't want to get you guys' hopes up or anything like that in case something were to go wrong. But uh, if, it, if it does turn out to be good and I can do it, then you guys will love it. Trust me. Um, so that's going to be going on. That's like my personal life, Navy life, uh, March 2013 updates. So now, about nine and a half minutes in, um, and of course we got to wait for the uh, the 10 second thing because I'm doing this on my phone. So uh, if I stop speaking around the uh, almost 10 minute mark, uh, it's because my phone does that. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a software thing. It, it just does. I don't know. So I'm going to stop speaking and wait about 10 seconds after the 10 minute mark to start speaking again. Then we'll resume the state of the Andy Sound address. So stick with me. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why it does that, like I said. But anyway, um, State of the Andy Sound Address. Like I said, I've been on YouTube um, for seven years. And uh, I know I say this every anniversary video, but I can't believe I've been on YouTube for X amount of years and stuff like that. So for May, or not May, March 2013, I'm going to say I, have, I can't believe I've been on YouTube for seven years. <laughs> And I'll say eight years next year, then nine the next, and then the big big one oh then the following year. So that's gonna be some crazy shit. If YouTube's still around, but who are we kidding? Of course it'll be. <laughs> anyway, um so I've I've definitely seen a lot in my time on YouTube. I've seen a lot of changes, you know, not only from when I first started, but even like a year or two ago. YouTube just a year or two ago, like I said, is way different than YouTube now. And uh, I could go into detail about it, but this video is already 11 minutes long, and you don't want to hear me blather on about that kind of stuff. Um, I do have some uh, some incentives for you guys, though. Um, once I hit uh, 1,000 subscribers, I will be making a uh, Facebook fan page. So if you guys got like Navy questions or something like that, or you want to like get updates and stuff like that for videos on. Uh, on Facebook, I will be doing that. But once I hit a thousand subscribers, that's kind of like my incentive to you guys. So if you know, the faster I get a thousand subscribers, the faster you get your fan page. And uh, I'll also be uh, updating it through Twitter as well. So I'll be reactivating my Twitter account and linking it to Facebook. So if you guys want to follow me on Facebook or you want to follow me on Twitter, you're more than uh, able to. But once I hit a thousand subscribers, so keep that in mind. And also, you know, deployment schedules like that, I can't always keep it updated, but 
you know, it's definitely a, uh, a means to keep you guys updated when I'm able to. So, um, that's the thing. Ooh, excuse me. And another thing I want to talk to you guys about uh, before we close things out here is my blog. Now, I haven't, <laughs> I feel so bad. I haven't updated my blog uh, since pre-deployment, since I actually got orders to the Kurtz was one of my last entries on my blog. And uh, I really feel bad about it. Like, I really want to update my blog and do this other stuff, but I just don't feel the energy to do it anymore. And I know my main audience is on YouTube, and they don't want to go to my blog and check all that stuff out, but I still want to keep my blog up because it's, it's a part of me. It's part of my history, my pre-YouTube history, and it's, it's something really near and dear to my heart, but... I just, I don't have the heart to go in there and, you know, write stuff anymore. At least not in this phase. Now, I may get on, like, a little writing streak and do something as far as that goes, but um, I definitely need to retool my blog because it's, it's been a while. It needs updated, uh, retooled, redone, like I said. So if you guys have any suggestions or anything like that for my blog... Uh, please, by all means, put them in the comments below, or uh, send me a personal message if you uh, if you'd like. That would be great. So, with about a minute left on the clock, I think we gotta close this bitch. So yeah, this is the Andy San signing off for now. Thinking you guys for tuning in to my videos and stuff for the past seven years. And uh, once again, like I say in every one of my videos, I gotta thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And uh, I, I really do mean that. I'm not. It's not just a little cute catchphrase to close things out. You know, I when I say I thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, I really mean it. You know, without all that stuff, I wouldn't have continued YouTube this long. So with that said, as always. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, little tour of my second room here at uh, Snyder Hall before I leave. I'm um, actually all the way packed up. There's, uh, there's the rest of my stuff, and there's some trash that i got to throw out. Uh, most of it was old food stuff from my roommate. He just kind of left it here when he left. Um, he actually checked out um, a little bit before I came back from leave, so yeah, all this stuff's gone. So let's begin the uh, the room tour. So right now, like I said, I'm in Snyder Hall. Um, some somebody asked in the comments, I, I forget who off the top of my head, um, like when this building was made and uh, what it was before it was a uh, barracks room or barracks building. Uh, so I had no idea until recently. Let me focus on, on that there. That it was built in 1989, so it's not quite as old as I thought it would be. But um, as far as it being like a, a motel or something like that uh, before, I'm not really sure. So, um, But it's not as old as I thought it would be. I thought it was built in like the 50s or 60s or something like that, despite what the, uh, the janky-ass wallpaper suggests. Anyway, here's my roommate's armoire. Um, that Here's my armoire. It's... Uh, Janky as fuck. Let me show you on the inside. Jeez. Okay, so up there is nothingness. And you got some hangers, hangers, hangers. Uh, janky ass floor. This is all pretty gross. Here's another mirror. <laughs> so, um, just to give you an idea of the uh, shittiness of this, let me close it up real quick. Now, you can't, with this one, it has its own little tick. Like, you can't just shut this and you know, walk away, because doors just fly right open, right? So, jeez. So you gotta, like, hold your foot, press against the bottom, right? And then, yeah, do that. So that, then, uh, nothing happens. So, anywho's whistle, let's, uh, continue the tour. So, this is where we put, like, some dry food and stuff like that. Here's our, uh, micro-ass microwave. Pretty, uh, pretty shitty, but we made several foodstuffs in there. That gross, actually. My fridge-ass fridge. Came with a little ice tray, stuff like that. Pretty, pretty small. The actual rest of the fridge-ass fridge. Uh, there's also 
quite quite uh, petite to say the least but it's enough to hold maybe like a day or two's worth of food so this is my roommate's side his desk uh, some trash I gotta take out his bed ass bed the iron that he left out and then like a shared dresser I guess we we normally kept it for like a, a miscellaneous things like cleaning gear or whatever um, some spices were in there too here's my side of the room there's my uh, my little uh, uh, shit, what is it called? Nightstand. Jeez, I couldn't think. Um, and for the longest time, I didn't... Uh, now, keep in mind, I haven't been in this room as long as my other room, so I didn't know much about it, because as soon as I moved in here, I went on leave. And like a week or so later is now is when I'm moving out, so... Um, I didn't realize that there was an outlet right there. And I'd always leave my phone on the nightstand to uh, wake me up, and it'd be at like... 70 or 80 percent by the time I got up and it always pissed me off because I'm like ah shit I can't charge my phone or I just pass out or whatever the case may be so there's my bed ass bed the linen and stuff like that which I might come back for depending on what the building manager says which more than likely will be yes <laughs> so vacuum trash ass trash can my desk and uh, my old setup was I'd have my monitor uh, right here right then I have like a a little six-way splitter there for power, power strip. That's what the word I was looking for. Then I have my uh, Alienware computer there. And then I have whatever over here, usually my tablet or food or just extra stuff over there. It's plugged in over there on my roommate's side. So anyway, let's give you a quick little tour of what it looks like outside from here. Now keep in mind this is... Uh, only the second floor, so it's not quite as glamorous as it was on the uh, 10th floor, but uh, yeah. So it is on the same side, actually, as my old room. So, whoa, let's uh, zoom out there so you don't see the screen. There we go. So that's uh, the Pacific Beacon, one of the uh, one of the Pacific Beacon buildings. There's the, uh, the other one right there. And uh, it's really nice to live there, from what I've been told. It's like uh, basically like your own little apartment. Then there's a little car lot over, over there for extra parking and when people go on deployment and they don't want their cars rained on or whatever the case, they still gather dust and all that. So, and let's give you a quick little tour of the other stuff here. So, a much clearer view. So you got, you got like a, whoa, there's my finger. You got a Navy Fed right there, or there we go, right there. Then uh, you just get on the other side. You got a, you got a, bleh, you got a, Subway, Jesus, I can't think today. Subway over here, Brugger's Bagels over here. Like I said, there's a car lot, Cars car lot, and uh, whoa, there we go. So, um, this is like I said, this is actually on the same side of the uh, the building that I was on when I was on the 10th floor. So, the uh, Coronado Bridge is like around here ish somewhere, but the trees are blocking it, so we can't see it. But it is, it is over there somewhere in the distance. And uh, also on the side, if I can fix the white balance, I'm sorry about that. But um, over around here-ish somewhere is the bridge that I would take to uh, go to the other side of base. And uh, that's how I'd get to the Kurtz, from this side of the base to the other. Because I'd go from here to the other side and then make the long trek over, the mole, over to uh, Mole Pier, which is where the Kurtz was at the time. And, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a pain because it's so far away. And I actually recorded a video on that bridge, too. It's, uh, it's my very first deployment-related video. So it's, uh, I think it's called Goodbye San Diego, or uh, Deployment Day One. You can check it out on my Deployment 2012 playlist if you, uh, if you don't want to search for it. It should be the very first video. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the view from here. And uh, I know, like I, I know, like I said in my uh, my other uh, room tour videos, this isn't exactly the uh, the most glamorous of uh, rooms. Um, my other room was way nicer than this, and my new room that I'm going to be moving into uh, over at ASW is even nicer. And once I get everything all situated, I'll uh, make another tour video of that too. So once again, mirror smear, and let's make our way to the head where I make all kinds of dookie and stuff. So, once again, there's that toothbrush. 
that just pisses me off by just sitting there. Why is it sitting there? I don't know. Anyway, it's another Miras mirror. <laughs> and then uh, this is my sink. It's uh, gross. And uh, you don't want to see what's in those drawers. Probably get my uh, my video blocked for uh, graphic content, so I'm not going to open those. It's my uh, headmate's side. Now, uh, some people have been asking me like how these are set up, how the rooms are set up, and basically, like uh, this room right here, this is my room. You'd have uh, two people per room, so it'd be me and my roommate. And then next door, you'd also have two people over there, and we'd share a common uh, bathroom area. So you'd have four people to a bathroom. So this is the Dookie Palace, Dookie Hauser, and uh, I guess the guy next door, geez, fuzzies all guy. The guy next door had like little stickers and stuff like that. He got a van sticker, audio, stuff like that. I know this is mundane as all get out, but yeah, it's mostly for my own personal record. And uh, yeah, it's shower, shower curtain, back, that. He still has stuff on the floor, including his little puff ball, which I don't get, but it's whatever. Gross ass shower. And fuck you, toothbrush. Go suck a dick. So, yeah, that is pretty much it as far as uh, the room tour goes. So, let's uh, close things off here. So, yeah, this is the Andy San signing off for the last time here at uh, Snyder Hall. And uh, I want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you with a bliggity vlog. And I haven't really done one of these in a while, so I might be a little rusty. Anyway, I guess this is like a vlog slash uh, update part two video for uh, March 2013. Uh, got a lot of stuff going on for the rest of this month, as well as leading into April of 2013. So I figured I'd get some uh, stuff out the way so you, I uh, can give you guys a heads up. Blah. <laughs> So pardon the mess behind me, but I'm in the middle of a bunch of different projects right now. I just got done filming a bunch of new videos. I uh, got a couple unboxing videos filmed. Uh, I just got to uh, edit them. I just got done filming. So, yeah. Um, and I also have my first uh, episode of NFAX already recorded and everything for uh, 2013. So uh, <laughs> it's been about a year since I've done an episode of NFAX, and I figured... What the hey, bring it back with a uh, really fun episode that's uh, also practical. So um, that should be coming out very soon. And uh, I also wanted to uh, let you guys know that I just finished um, editing, rendering, and doing a lot of stuff with the, uh, the third season of First Impact Anime. So that's going to actually be coming out starting April. I'm going to do uh, episodes weekly starting April. Um, I haven't figured out the day yet, but uh, I'll definitely let you guys know. So if you uh, want to uh, be the first to know, uh, just follow me on Twitter at uh, the Andison, or uh, follow me on Google Google Plus uh, links and stuff. If you go to my uh, my main YouTube homepage, they're in my uh, my banner up there somewhere. So uh, definitely check those out and uh, follow me, like me, do what you got to do to. Stalk me. <laughs> Almost. Don't, don't be good that. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm getting so much trouble. But anyway, um, yeah, so I got all those videos coming out. I um, got a bunch of other stuff planned. I uh, got a uh, bunch of cool stuff. Uh, yeah, kind of ran out of stuff to talk about. But yeah, that's uh, on the updating side of things. So now moving on to uh, personal news. Um, earlier today, I tried to. Uh, to see if I could get an upgrade on my phone. Uh, right now I'm running the Motorola Droid 4. I love this phone, it's amazing. But I figure it's about time for an upgrade, so I talked to Verizon about it, see uh, what they can do. Because uh, when I upgraded from my Droid 2 Global to uh, this phone right here, Droid 4, um, it was a simple little switcheroo. And I was able to keep my plan and everything. Um, and the only thing they did was just switch out the phone. No big deal, and I actually got an early upgrade opportunity. So, 
That was good. Um, but I went to go talk with them today, and they said that I'm not eligible for an upgrade until October of this year. So, seeing as I'm not going to be stateside in October, um, I just decided to uh, not continue uh, with Verizon uh, once I leave the states. So, at the, uh, the end of, or beginning-ish of May, I will uh, terminate my contract with Verizon. And uh, the cool thing is, uh, there is a little piece of legal thing that I can give them. Because I am military, so I won't get penalized or penalized, whatever, for uh, canceling my contract early. So that's good. That's a little uh, little perk of being in the military there. Um, so I just got to go to uh, the uh, I guess like the legal department, talk to a JAG or something like that, and uh, they'll give me the little form. And when I go to cancel my contract, I just hand them the form, and there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I've talked to them about uh, different uh, plan options because I did want to stick with Verizon because, honestly, ever since I uh, started the whole cell phone thing back in uh, 2004, yeah, a little late on the cell phone bandwagon, but uh, ever since I got my first cell phone back in like 2003, 2004-ish, relatively speaking, uh, I've always been with Verizon. I haven't went to another company. Uh, I know a lot of people have... have uh, been having trouble with them, uh, shoddy customer service and shitty data plans or what what have you, but uh, they've always been there for me and I like to think of myself as a valued customer and a, a long-term customer, but uh, I talked with them about uh, international plans and with the uh, the new uh, jelly bean update, I believe it's either jelly bean or ice cream sandwich, one of the new uh, Android updates. Uh, all Android phones, as long as you have the, uh, the proper SIM card for your uh, geographic area, all the Droid phones are uh, global. So, as long as you get the SIM card, you can uh, call anybody from anywhere. But the problem is, Verizon doesn't allow data to be used internationally. And I actually used this phone while I was on deployment. Uh, when I was in Panama, I called a couple people. And I could only call. I couldn't text. Um, I could only just call or use data. Or I couldn't use data. Excuse me. <laughs> so I could only call. No texting. No data. So, um, yeah. It's kind of sad to see him go. But uh, we're going to be moving on to uh, greener pastures uh, with uh, some of the Japanese, Japanese cell phone companies. I've mostly been heard, hearing a lot about the uh, the big three. You know, stateside we have Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile. I think Boost Mobile is still around. I'm not really sure. But anyway, we have those. Uh, those are the big three out here. So, oh yeah, and AT&T. They're still a thing, right? <laughs> so big four. But uh, over in Japan, uh, from what I've been hearing about, is uh, the big three over there is uh, SoftBank, uh, Docomo, and uh, AU. So, um, I'm probably going to be going with SoftBank. They seem to have the, uh, the really cool cell phones over there. And uh, hopefully they have a nice, uh, nice service, service package for a uh, chronic data, data user like myself that's not going to uh, break the bank softly. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully uh, their mascot, Otosan, will be uh, nice to me. Don't bite me, Otosan. No. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that's that's gonna be a thing, and I guess when I get over there, I'm gonna get one of the cool uh, Japanese Keitai. Uh, it's gonna be a smartphone, of course, because I can't stand the old fo old phones anymore. Uh, but it will be sad to uh, see the uh, the actual uh, slide out keyboard go by the wayside, because um, if I want a really nice smartphone, I have to uh, lose the keyboard because all the really nice smartphones don't have keyboards. Now, I have heard that like iPhone has like a case which has a little QWERTY keyboard that slides out, but uh, I'm not an iPhone or an iProduct guy, so I'm not going to be getting that. Plus, there's way nicer phones out there than the iPhone, honestly. Um, but I will say this, the only real good thing about the iPhone is that they... Uh, this is not really so much the iPhone, but the Apple Store. That's probably the best 
reason to get any eye product is because of the eye store or the Apple store, whatever it's called. Is because there's so many different apps and it just dwarfs the competition as far as apps and stuff. But the Android Marketplace or Google Play, I guess what it's called now, has been getting a, a stronger and stronger foothold as uh, app making companies are uh, pushing for both uh, iPhone and Android uh, versions of their apps. So, awesome. Now, um, yeah, <laughs> that's. Bleh, I kind of kind of lost my train of thought there, as I as I do from time to time, if you notice in this video. So um, yeah, basically the point is uh, lots of new stuff's going to be coming out. Um, I'll be switching over to a new uh, phone service when I get out to Japan in uh, the end of May of this year, 2013. So less than two months, baby. I got less than two months stateside. It's uh, it's kind of hard to imagine. But yeah, let's uh, wrap this video up before it gets too boring. Oh wait, we're nine minutes in. Never mind. <laughs> so yeah, this is the Andy San, right here. Signing off for now. Thank in you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to the April 2013 update video for April 2013. Woo! <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm going to be breaking this uh, video into two separate parts. Um, the first part, which is uh, what you're watching right now, is going to be involving the projects that I'm going to be working on this month. And uh, part two is going to be dealing with uh, some personal life issues, because I kind of want to expound on uh, the personal life stuff, so I decided to just break it into two separate things. So if you just want to see what's going to be coming up this month, uh, this is your video, but uh, if you want to read about my boring ass life, <laughs> uh, part two will be uh, your video. So with that said, let's get started with part one, projects for April 2013. Now first on the list is uh, season three of First Impact Anime. Now, I've already released the first episode from that season, which is where uh, the Talk of Vidalkin and myself, joined by special guests uh, Shiara and Armony, riffed over the uh, very first episode of Sailor Moon. And uh, I really had a blast doing this season, as well as the next season, too. And uh, I think, honestly, it's probably the most fun I've ever had doing First Impact anime. Now, I've had a lot of fun doing it, just because the Talking Vidalk and myself are some witty individuals. It's always a good thing to kind of get us on camera, or at least on the microphone for the riff track. Like I said, you know, this season and season four have been the most fun I've had doing these kind of kinds of things. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoy it, and I really hope that you guys enjoy uh, Shiara and Armony, because uh, they're going to be on for the rest of Season 3 as well as Season 4. Now, as far as uh, subsequent seasons for, like, when I'm in Japan and stuff like that, I'm not really sure how that's going to work just yet. I am working on different ways to do it, like maybe do, like, a Skype thing. I'm just kind of working out the details with that. But if you guys have suggestions, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below, or uh, if it's a little too long, just uh, leave me a personal message on YouTube. So that way we can continue doing First Impact Anime. So this month is Shoujo Month, and next month is is going to be something else so stay tuned for that and they're going to be released every wednesday as well i mean speaking of first impact anime that kind of segues into my next little thing is uh movie night now before we started working on first impact anime talking with vidalkin and myself did a series of riffs called movie night and it was basically a precursor to first impact anime where we found these uh, like really cheap one dollar dvds from walmart with like some really like kooky really cheap ass anime knockoffs type stuff and we just riffed off of that because it's just terrible <laughs> We had a blast doing those. I actually found uh, one of the long-lost uh, DVDs that we couldn't find at Walmart at the time. Found it on YouTube, so we just uh, riffed off of that. The movie Night 5 is already done. I just have to actually get around to uploading it to the YouTubes. So if you guys have any suggestions for when you want Movie Night 5 to be released, uh, be sure to also leave it in the comments below and stuff like that because I don't really want to bombard your uh, subscription feed with a bunch of stuff. I know that a lot of YouTubers tend to do that, but I like to kind of pace my uploads. And besides, that's what my uh, The Andy San channel is for, right? 
<laughs> yeah, just leave your suggestion in the comments below, and uh, I'll try to accommodate as best I can. Once Movie Night 5 is released, I'll also release episodes for uh, Behind the Flop. Now, Behind the Flop is like our behind the scenes series of videos for like First Impact Anime and Movie Night. And it's mostly like extended intros, you know, stuff that got cut from the final intro. Maybe like some blooper reel stuff as well. It's definitely a lot of fun looking back at some of those, especially like some of the early blooper reel stuff. I accidentally deleted the Behind the Flop stuff for uh, season 3 of First Impact Anime. It was just one of those things with my SD card, so I, ac I accidentally deleted all the raw footage when I was moving stuff. There's not going to be any behind the flop stuff for season 3, but I will try to uh, prevent myself from doing that for season 4, so you guys have some more behind the flop stuff to look forward to in the future. Uh, next project on the list is uh, my Convoy Street videos. Now, for those of you who uh, aren't really familiar with San Diego that much, uh, San Diego has a uh, little section of town which is basically geared towards uh, towards Asians and uh, it has like uh, Asian restaurants Asian stores Asian shops stuff like that so it's it's not really like a Chinatown per se or even like a Japan town or a Korea town it's kind of like a mixture of all those uh, different cultures into like one little neighborhood area place thing so it's really fun to go to like a Korean restaurant and then go to like a Japanese market and then go to like a Chinese bakery <laughs> it's it's a real trip I really have a lot of fun out there and it's actually one of of my favorite little secret places to go to in San Diego. I like to go there on the weekends a lot and do stuff there. Yeah, so I have like a, a two series of videos that I did for Convoy Street. The first set was back in 2011 when my friend Sam was here. We were down there recording stuff. I had some music added to it. It's fairly obscure stuff. Just to be on the safe side so that way YouTube doesn't like flag it or anything like that. I'm gonna be putting that on my The Andy San channel. And uh, the second series I did was an updated series for Convoy Street earlier this year in 2013. I have to actually get around to editing those videos because they're just kind of sitting on my uh, computer in a raw unedited format. So I have to get around to compiling the episodes and just kind of breaking them up into different uh, episodes and stuff like that. And I'll try to use uh, some royalty-free music, or at least mix some stuff fairly into the mix. If that made any sense. The 2013 Convoy Street videos, I'm gonna try to get those out this month, so that's gonna be like my big project for this month, or at the very least, you know, early May. Last on the list here is NFAX. I've been trying to make, uh, trying to bring back NFAX as like a weekly series. I've been having problems trying to find uh, really good questions, and I, I have a good stockpile of them for stuff that I think should really be talked about. And I've been kind of getting some ideas here and there. I really want to hear what you guys have to say, you know, as far as, you know, Navy related questions. And it doesn't have to be, you know, boot camp related because, I mean, I don't know if I'm even really qualified to talk about, you know, the boot camp stuff anymore because I went through boot camp. I graduated August 2010 and it's now... April 2013 so while a lot of the same concepts are going to be you know pretty similar if you go on now as opposed to back then I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that's changed in the past two almost three years like I said in the uh, in the videos your experiences will vary because of different uh, variables and stuff like that you know either way it's you're not gonna have the same boot camp experience as I did and that's actually a good thing because it, it kind of gives you your own uh, experience so it's uh, an experience unique to you and not just, you know, playing through somebody else's life. If you have some boot camp related questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them, but just keep in mind, I'm almost three years removed from it, so my info is not exactly up to date as far as that goes, but I'll be happy to answer some questions, maybe answer some like schooling questions and questions out in the fleet and stuff like that. Also, you know, there is some secret information that I can't talk about, so, you know, don't get too mad if, you know, I say, hey, I can't talk about it. It's just something else to keep in mind. I know I put up all these restric restrictions and be like, you know, oh yeah, just leave your suggestions in the comments below, <laughs> but it's just the nature of the beast. Just uh, try to understand, okay? So, like I said, if you guys have any uh, suggestions for future videos, not just NFAX, but just videos or whatever in general, feel free to leave something in the comments below or uh, give me like a personal message on YouTube or even email me too. I get uh, an occasional email here and there from people. I always answer them. That's pretty much it for uh, part one of two for my April 2013 videos. So yeah, this is the Andy San signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to uh, the first part of my April 2013 update video and uh, my other stuff. And I also got to thank you guys for liking commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. See you in part two. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to part two 
of my April 2013 update video for April 2013. Ooh. So in this second part, I'm going to be going through some uh, personal life stuff. And uh, if you guys just want to see um, like my projects and stuff like that for April 2013, like what's going to be coming out, um, be sure to check out part one, which is probably up there somewhere. Or maybe it's the other side. I, I don't know where the orientation is for this video. But anyway, it's up in the sidebar, one of the two. So uh, definitely check that out. That said, let's get started with uh, some personal stuff. April is going to be my last full month here in America. I've really been trying to uh, focus more on living in the present as opposed to focusing too much on the future of things. That's really been helping me kind of get out of my funk because I've basically been in a funk for a couple months now and uh, I didn't really know why because, you know, I'm going to be going to Japan next month. I'm really excited about that. It's basically been my goal my throughout my adult life to get out to Japan. And even before then, you know, just as a kid, I always wanted to visit there because that's where my cousins were at the time. And I just thought it was a really cool place. To actually see that dream realized is really important to me. But I also have to keep in mind, you know, when one goal is completed, I have to establish another goal, always have something something cooking, always be working on something. You know, obviously once I get to Japan, I'll be making a boatload of videos, um, doing a lot more collaborations with the uh, with the J-vloggers out there, and just, you know, getting myself out there and just establishing myself as a media entity. Whoa. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but, you know, seriously, I'll be getting out there doing more stuff. I, and I've been kind of, in a weird way, training for the past seven years to be a J-vlogger. Because that was uh, some of the original styles of videos that I was doing, you know, back in the day. was based on a lot of stuff that uh, Roger Swan and uh, Kevin Cooney from the Tokyo Cooney channel did. I was really inspired by Kurt of the uh, Softy Papa channel to start making, like, uh, episodes where I show little parts of uh, my local town and just areas that I live at and stuff like that. And that he really inspired the, uh, the Life In series of uh, videos that I do. I was initially against it because I thought there was no real merit because I figured I lived in a boring-ass town in Ohio. Nobody wants to see that. But, you know, removing myself from that area it really opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, somebody in San Diego may be curious about what life is like in Ohio. I know, crazy, right? <laughs> the architecture is way different, you know, in my section of Ohio, it's very, uh, very German-based architecture. You know, slate well, roofs and stuff like that as opposed to the, uh, oh, what do they have out here, like stucco or whatever that clay-looking you know, adobe stuff is called, stucco, I guess, I don't freaking know. So that's a, uh, that's a major difference from Ohio to out, out here. And also, you know, population, because I live in a small town in Ohio. I don't live in one of the big seas. I live in Little Sea. <laughs> I live in Salina, not Cleveland or Columbus or Cincinnati. You know, I don't live in the big towns. And there's a lot of cool landmarks out in Salina that I know a lot of locals just kind of take for granted. And it's just like, eh, it's there. So what? Who cares? But, you know, somebody who doesn't live in Salina and is not from the area might be interested in something like that. I mean, who knows? <laughs> you know? You never really know who's watching your videos. And that's another thing that has really been inspiring me. And I think that's what really inspired me to start NFAX again was just a lot of the IRL, you know, in real life feedback of my videos, whether it's positive or just the fact that, hey, I saw your video, you know, <laughs> even if they didn't have anything to say about it, just the fact that, you know, a real person actually watched my video and it wasn't just like a accidental click through and it was like, oh, who's that fat kid? <laughs> you know, something like that. It really means a lot to me and especially you know, I know a couple guys in my class who uh, watched my STGA school graduation video. And um, I think maybe a couple of them watched some of my infacts. I'm not, I'm not sure. But just the fact that they watched just one of my videos is amazing. A group of kids that I had no idea who they were, you know, before starting class, actually know me through my videos. And I've seen, you know, in some way the progress that I've made from being, you know, STGSN to STG2. And that I think is really cool and I really want to make this you know series this season or series whatever you want to call it of in facts really mean something so that's gonna be my goal with that series yeah like I said and getting back to the whole Japan thing I kind of went off on a tangent there I just have to uh, learn to establish uh, different goals now that my main goal of getting to Japan is pretty much fulfilled even though I'm not there yet it's already set in stone that I'm gonna be going out there at the end of May of this year, 2013. I think that's uh, what my just 
general depressed outlook has kind of been subconsciously telling me if that made any sense. It was basically, you know, hey, you got to start working on something else. Especially in the military, you end up getting kind of caught up in the grind and caught up in the, uh, the workflow and stuff like that. And you tend to lose sight of yourself and what you want as opposed to what the command or what your division wants. And you just kind of get caught up in that whole thing. So, you know, you got to make time for yourself. You got to insert some me time in there, you know, for your own sanity or else you're going to go crazy on the ship. Just saying. So I was reading through uh, one of Danny Chu's uh, blog posts the other day, and uh, it was his uh, How Japan Changed My Life post. And I'll, I'll put it down below so you guys can read it as well. And Danny, Danny's mostly famous for, uh, he did a series of videos on YouTube where he was dressed as a, uh, a stormtrooper from Star Wars. And he's just dancing around little areas of uh, Tokyo. That's kind of what got him on the map, internet wise you know or as far as like it you know made him internet famous i guess you could say but he's also really established himself as a real picture blogger for uh japan and a lot of japan related stuff you know he's really into the uh the anime manga scene and a lot of the uh like the figures and the the dolls and stuff like that i'm not i'm not real big on uh the figure well some of the figures maybe but uh, dolls that's that's not really my thing and that's coming from somebody who owns a pink pony <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> wow, that really distracted me. But anyway, um, like I said, nothing wrong with uh, liking dolls. If that's your thing, that's your thing. You know, who am I to judge that? I really enjoyed Danny's uh, posts about Japan as far as like, you know, the different scenery and just life in Japan, as it were. I really enjoyed those, uh, those blog posts the most. And uh, I read his uh, How Japan Changed My Life post. And it basically, it's a really inspiring story on how he managed to go from such... You know, I know it sounds really cliche, but such humble beginnings to being a real uh, player out in Japan as far as like being a real go-getter and not only getting to Japan and moving to Japan, but starting his own business out there, a very successful business, keep in mind, and uh, just really establishing himself out there in Japan. And uh, I really hope that uh, when I get out there, I get a chance to meet him someday and to do like a sit-down interview with him to just kind of ask him about stuff like that and uh, I hope to put it up on my YouTube channel that'll be awesome and I also hope to do more collaborations and stuff like that with other J vloggers out there as well you know I think that's gonna be one of my main goals when I get out to Japan is to do more collaborations and to actually get out there and and meet other youtubers cuz that's the thing like I, I haven't met any other youtubers a lot of my friends and a lot of the guys on the ship you know they kind of refer to me as the guy on YouTube you know, nobody else actually does YouTube videos, and if they do, it's maybe like a one-off video or something like that. You know, no, no big, no big deal. Since I do YouTube videos regularly, you know, I'm known as the YouTube guy. So it'd be nice to actually get to meet some other YouTubers out there and share stories and stuff like that. That's definitely something I really look forward to when I get out to Japan, as well as you know, like I said, making a shit ton of videos, uh, taking pictures, and things of that nature. I think one of the other personal goals I'm going to be having after reading uh, Danny's post is I'm going to start working a little bit more on my Japanese, both uh, spoken and written, because I can't read Japanese for shit. Like, I, I have no clue what any of the characters are. So I think at least just getting like the basic gist of it down will be a vast improvement for me. And I also want to improve my Japanese grammar, because I mean, I know some words and can kind of string them along and what sounds like a sentence, but as far as I know, I could be speaking like the most broken ass Japanese of all. I mean, I don't fucking know. I wanna try my best to improve upon that. And I know that it's not really gonna start taking off until I actually get to Japan, because immersion is the best way to learn something. But I still want to brush up on all that stuff before I get out there. So I'm probably gonna be watching uh, Action Teacher and uh, some Gimme a Flake Man stuff to really uh, get my mind into Japanese mode and learning some phrases and words and things of that nature. That's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. So yeah, this is the Andy San, signing off for now. Thank you and you guys for tuning in to this video and uh, my other stuff. And I also wanna thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. Alright, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. 
I just wanted to record a little something something before I go to bed here. Um, so I'm kind of tired and it's really late, so uh, bear with me here. So um, I was on the bus ride back uh, back to uh, my room here, and uh, there's this uh, there's this one guy that he kind of s- said something that really uh, kind of irked me, and it was just kind of an you know not really an off color, but like a just like a remark. So he didn't. He, I know he didn't really mean anything uh, malicious by it, but it just kind of struck a chord with me. And it was, uh, you know, I was just going to uh, go to my seat, and you know, he was just rambling on about something. He's like, "Oh, there's another Navy guy. Oh, attention on deck." You know, just stupid shit like that, and it just kind of like. <laughs> just kind of bothered me, not because, you know, I'm not proud to be in the Navy, I am, I am definitely proud to be part of this, but it's just that, you know, I think the thing, you know, because I really thought about, like, why it bothered me, and it was because he associated me with being this mindless, you know, kind of slave, and, uh, you know, he thought that he knew who I was, and, you know, he didn't know me. He just knew that I worked for the Navy and thought we were all the same. And uh, that kind of thinking just really bothers me about, you know, about this place. And, you know, the thinking that they're all, that we're all a bunch of mindless baby-killing slaves or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what people think of us they just they think we're all the same and uh that that just bothers me a lot and uh i don't know i just just on the bus ride back and just all night it's just been slowly eating at my brain and it's just a stupid mindless comment i know but for some reason it's just been like gnawing and gnawing and gnawing at me And uh, I thought I'd get it off my chest here, you know, it's just, and I guess I I can kind of apply it to, you know, other facets, you know, like my channel is also known primarily as, you know, the Navy guy's channel and, you know, what this dude in the Navy does and stuff like that and, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not, saying I'm not proud of what I am, I I am proud, it's just that, you know, being in the Navy is not all that I am, it's not, you know, people don't know me because, you know, oh, I'm in the Navy, so I automatically know who you are, you know, that's, that's not the case, you know, we're still people at the end of the day, and I think that's something that uh, the uh, the public at large seems to forget about. You know, they just think we're all mindless soldiers and sailors, just, you know, blank f- blank faces going off to fight wars and all that. But, you know, we're not. We're, we're still people. And uh, that's something a lot of uh, the public seems to forget. You know, they, you know, it just, I don't know, just bugs me is all, so... Yeah, before this uh, this gets any weirder, I'll just uh, sign off here and get some sleep. So yeah, this is the Eddie Sun. Man, this is awkward doing. Signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to my uh, rambly, incoherent blog of incoherentness. <laughs> and uh, I also want to thank you guys for uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Good night. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And I'm looking a little bit paler than normal, but that's because I'm facing the window. But anyway, I just wanted to make this uh, quick video for YouTube to ask you guys a question. Now, um, it's actually about my blog, which you can find in the link below. It's uh, the first link for the majority of my videos, actually. So, www.theandysun.com. And uh, the question I have is, uh, 
Well, actually, let me let me explain some things first. So, um, I haven't updated my blog since uh, last year. It's actually almost been a year since I even bothered with it. But um, I really want to update it. I want to bring it up to speed with all the new videos and stuff like that that have come out uh, since. And uh, I want to, you know, give it a new look, really spruce things up, and start, you know, blogging again because. I've really been uh, really been falling behind on the whole blogging thing. I've been mostly focusing on on this kind of thing, this kind of platform with the uh, vlogging and being on YouTube and stuff like that. I haven't really focused too much on my own blog, which is uh, a real shame because that's that's what really got me started into this whole thing in the first place was just written words rather than uh, spoken words or visual words, I should say. Um, so. Um, I do want to update it, give it a new look, uh, bring it up to speed with videos and stuff like that, like I said. But um, the question I want to ask you guys is, is, uh, is it even worth it? You know, are you guys honestly going to uh, visit the blog? You know, am, am I just wasting my time putting forth all this effort to, you know, spruce things up and maybe get like two or three hits? You know, that's, that's the question I want to ask you guys. So... Uh, be sure to leave your uh, answer in the comments below, or uh, if it's too long, uh, feel free to send me a personal message uh, with your suggestions and stuff like that. Also, video responses are a thing, so once uh, if you decide to send in a video response, I'll look at it, approve it, and uh, be good to go. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to say. So, yeah, this is the Andy Sign. Signing off for now. Thinking. You guys for tuning in to this uh, quick video and my other stuff. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And I'm just uh, making this quick video to uh, kind of discuss a recent blog post that I wrote the other day. And, uh, Link for that post will be down below, so you guys can check it out and uh, comment. And I definitely look forward to uh, hearing what you guys have to say. But uh, in the, <laughs> I guess, less than a day that this post has been out, I've received a lot of, a lot of positive feedback, um, both in comments and messages, uh, general thumbs up and things of that nature. Uh, but I did get a, a message uh, very recently from my own mom. And she feels that I basically, like, vil you know, I vilified her and my stepdad and, you know, just basically didn't take into account their contributions to my own personal development and me basically getting over the death of my own dad and, you know, just basically developing as a person, which is, you know, I, I looked over the letter again to kind of see what they were, you know, talking about. And I, I can kind of see you know, in what parts that she would think that, but in all honesty, I <laughs> I didn't really write that letter about them that much at all. I mean, I only, the only couple mentions I made of my own stepdad was just an offhand remark about how much he's an asshole, and uh, keep in mind that, you know, I'm writing to the Andy from 1996, not the Andy from 2013. My stepdad and I have a totally different relationship now. We're on very amicable terms. We're, you know, we're doing great. But the relationship we had back in 1996, not so much. I mean, he was basically, the, at the time, he was the new guy that my mom was dating. And, you know, he was a jerk and an asshole, and I didn't like him. And, you know, that was, <laughs> that was the whole thing that, you know, I went through for so many years to just you know, get him to stop getting on my case about stuff, but he, you know, it, it took a lot of time and, you know, a lot of talking to, you know, have us get over that, and, you know, I'm glad to say that we have, you know, we're, like I said, we're on a, we're on a much better relationship now than we were back then, and I'm very thankful for that, and I'm very thankful for their contributions to my own personal development, but that particular letter was issued as, uh, 
as kind of a, a letter of regret and certain things that I wish I could do over. And I, I know, I realize, you know, that the mistakes you make, you know, help make the person that you are today and stuff like that. And I, I'm all for that. But there are some, there are only a few uh, mistakes, I guess you could say, that I made that I really wish I could get a do-over on. And dealing with my own dad's death is definitely, like, number one on my list. And, you know, and... Uh, just the fact that I didn't see him at the hospital before he died because I was just too scared to see him in such a weakened state and with all this stuff on him and at that point I hadn't seen him in two years, I hadn't talked to them, I basically pretty much just disowned him at that point because I didn't want to talk to him with, with him or anything. And I had my own brother, John, write that letter to him saying that, you know, we didn't want to see him unless he cleaned up his act, which, unfortunately, he never did. And I realized that it was his choice to do that. We put the ball in his court, and he decided to, you know, keep doing his thing until he died. And we realized that it, that was his choice to make and not ours. And I realized that, and that's what helped me really just move on, basically. But there are a lot of little what-if scenarios, like I said in the letter, that I, you know, regret doing, or like, what if I went to the hospital, you know, instead of just chickening out, and, you know, what if I had tried to, you know, get in touch with him even before he died? Like, what if, you know, when I got a car, I just stop over and be like, you know, hey, how's things going? You know, just a simple little just like a supper or something like that, you know, just something along those lines. But, you know, I realized that, you know, like I, like I said, you know, earlier in this video that the mistakes you make in your past help make who you are today. And, you know, I realized that I can't get a do-over with my own dad as far as dealing with his death. But um, the only thing I could do is just learn from it and just move on with my life but um, I did want to uh, take some time to uh, just show my appreciation for my own mom and my stepdad and really helping me get through his death as well as helping me on my own personal development and stuff like that they were very instrumental it's just that with that particular letter it didn't really involve them too much it was mostly my own regret with dealing with my dad's death and how it affected not only me, but my brother, and it was just bad. That's what I was feeling at the time. It wasn't, you know, that I was bashing on mom or my stepdad. It wasn't that at all. I just, I just kind of put that little quip in there as just a little aside, like I said. So I didn't really mean anything malicious by it. If you took it as such, you know, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, it was just a little aside, so... Uh, that's basically all I wanted to say. Um, I guess for, you know, site updates and stuff like that, like I said in in a previous post, I am working on getting uh, theandysan.com all caught up on uh, my videos and stuff like that. I am going to be uh, starting to write blogs a bit more. As far as, like, the frequency or getting a schedule set up, I can't really, uh, I can't really say right now because my life's kind of in flux. As you guys know, I'm going to be moving to Japan at the end of May, and excuse me, I got finals in my class coming up, and my mom's going to be coming down to San Diego when I graduate, and just a whole bunch of stuffs going on. So it's kind of hard to say, you know, oh well, on Thursdays this is going to come out and this is going to come out, and you know, just I, I can't do that right now. So just, uh, just. Subscribe to my uh, my fa to my Twitter, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you guys want to keep on the up and up with what I'm up to. And uh, that's pretty much the best I can uh, best I can tell you. So, with that said, this is the Andy San signing off for now. Thank you, and you guys for tuning in to my videos as always, and uh, for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.
All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I'm just making this uh, short little video to kind of reminisce about the good old days and stuff like that. Now, as you guys know, a couple days ago I put out uh, two videos of my friends from back in high school that they made around 2006. So it was actually after I graduated, but they had a lot of my old friends, so I thought I'd uh, post it up for uh, nostalgia's sake and uh, made a little bit of uh, modifications to it. Uh, first off, I cut it off into two separate videos for uh, YouTube uh, time reasons, because they won't let me do anything over 15 minutes. Um, I made some of the, uh, the little cuts and transitions a bit shorter, but I still kept the, uh, the VCR wobble, or whatever it's called. And, uh, but um, I did that, and I also made it widescreen, so... You know, for you guys to uh, enjoy it rather than having it be like a little square and you have like the the things on the side, you know, I thought I'd do that. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, doing that, you know, doing the edits and stuff for that video really got me, uh, really got me thinking about the good old days. And just the fact that, uh, you know, I really miss... I really miss my friends from back home, and it's a lot harder to uh, stay in contact with them nowadays just because, you know, they've got their own lives, and a lot of them are working, and, you know, some of them are married, some of them even have kids, you know, it's, we get into that age, you know, where we start developing uh, the rest of our lives and stuff like that, and, you know, it's, it's really got me thinking about, you know, back in the day where if you wanted to hang out, you just, you know, send a text or, you know, call up somebody or something, and hey, let's go hang out, okay, <laughs> you know, there was, there was no, oh, I gotta run it by the wife, or, uh, I'm working early tomorrow, so I can't really do it, and stuff like that, it's just, you know, there, there wasn't any of that, and, you know, I realized that, you know, the good old days weren't always as good as, you know, we like to think they are, there's a lot of you know, bad, shitty times there as well, but I just, I mostly miss the, uh, like, the spontaneity of back then, you know, you could just, you know, text a couple friends or whatever, and get all gathered together, and either hang out at somebody's house, or go out cruising that night, you know, go to the Walmart, or something like that, and, you know, nothing really, uh, life-changing, but, uh, just real simple things, you know, just hang out with your friends, you know, nothing, uh, Nothing too out of the ordinary and stuff like that. So, um, basically, you know, I'm making this video and just kind of sending it out there to YouTube and, you know, hopefully my friends will see it. Excuse me. And I just wanted to let them know that, uh, let you guys know, I should say. I shouldn't refer to them in the third person. My bad. Uh, but I, I, want, I just want to let you guys know that I'll be uh, home in Ohio in May and, uh... I really hope to see all you guys, because this will probably be the last time I'll be able to see you guys, aside from, like, maybe an occasional Christmas visit or something like that. And I know you'll be busy with your own family, so it'll be even harder for us to uh, to get together and see each other in person, rather than just text or checking up on Facebook or something like that. You know, it's, you know I really miss that real hanging out with people connection. As much of, a, as much of an antisocial person as I am, I still... I still miss hanging out with my friends you know, from back in the day. And so I really hope to see you guys when I come home. And I know that the, the last time I was home on leave, I didn't get a chance to really see as much of you guys as I wanted to. But, you know, I, that was kind of a, a last-minute thing, and I didn't really expect the leave to go through. And it just, you know, like I said, it got approved at the last minute, so I didn't have time to really plan things. And, you know, I'm sorry for that, but now I actually do have some time, and, you know, I really want to hang out with you guys before I go off to Japan, where, like I said, it'll be, like, you know, once a year, where I'll see you guys during Christmas time, pretty much. So, um, yeah, <laughs> hope to see you guys in Ohio, so, uh, that's pretty much, uh, all I wanted to say in this video. So, yeah, this is the Andy song, signing off for now, thinking you guys for uh, tuning in to this video and my other stuff and I also want to thank you guys for liking commenting, subscribing sending your friends to the party and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys hope to see you in Ohio soon. Bye Alright, now we're recording. 
Hey gang, Andy here, and I'm making this video to ask you guys a question. For the most part, you guys know that I use uh, just two cameras for uh, the majority of my videos. Um, I've used different cameras in the past, but nowadays, at least of the time of this recording, I use just two. Uh, my main camera is just the one on my phone, my uh, Motorola Droid 4, and uh, I use it mostly because it's, it's always on me, and you know, I can just take videos on the go, take pictures on the go, and if it's something really quick, I can uh, even just upload it to my YouTube straight from the phone. No edits, no nothing, just bam, there you go. So I really like the convenience of that, but the main disadvantage is that the image quality isn't, you know, up to snuff with uh, this camera right here, which is my Canon PowerShot SX230HS. I really like this camera, and it has a lot of stuff about it that I like as opposed to my phone. You know, the image quality is better, uh, sound quality is a little bit better, it's, it's at least on par, but uh, I use it mostly for image quality. But the thing is, with this camera, the battery life is a real issue. It's a very, uh, it's a very uh, power hungry beast, so um, I'm in the market for a new camera. Now, uh, I'm not going to be buying this anytime soon, uh, simply because, you know, I have to save up for it, and I'm going to be moving to Japan in about a month, so I have that to worry about as well. So, but I, I still like something that I can, uh, you know, focus on, keep an eye on, and have something to work for, you know, when I get out to Japan, because the Japanese are really into cameras and stuff like that, so I'll definitely be able to get these out there. I'm going to put a link down below for you guys to check out uh, between the two cameras that I'm debating between. So uh, with that said, let's get down to uh, the comparisons. The two main cameras I'm uh, currently debating between are the Canon PowerShot SX280 HS, which is like two or three upgrades uh, beyond this camera right here, as well as the uh, Sony CyberShot DSC HX50V. I really like Sony's uh, cameras. They have really good image quality. Uh, very good stabilization. In most cases, I don't really like the saturation of the colors. They're a little too bright and kind of cartoony looking in some cases. But I think maybe if I, you know, go in there and fiddle the settings, I could probably downplay that. I, I don't know. But uh, anyway, let's get on with uh, the comparisons that this uh, link here has for uh, the two cameras. So right here we have the Sony CyberShot HX50V, and down below here we have the Canon PowerShot SX280. Right here, the Sony uh, CyberShot. Uh, the main advantages the CyberShot has over the uh, the PowerShot is that the zoom is much higher. The uh, PowerShot only has a 20x zoom, while the CyberShot has a uh, 30x zoom, compared to the current uh, power shot that I have, which only has a 14x zoom. Now keep in mind this is optical, digital is higher, but generally speaking I don't like to use digital for image quality purposes, but in a pinch I can use it. They both have GPS, which eh, kind of iffy on. The Sony CyberShot screen has a higher resolution. Uh, the battery life is almost double that of the power shot, which is a uh, really big advantage that it has over the power shot and also the main feature of the uh, uh, of the HX 50V is that it has a little hot shoe mount right here on top of the camera so I can stick in like my Zoom H1 external mic straight onto the camera without having to you know fiddle around with a mount or something like that so that's really cool all this good stuff comes at a price so the Sony CyberShot CyberShot excuse me geez I can't talk today is going for about 450 on Amazon whereas the Canon PowerShot is going for 329 so <laughs> greatness comes at a price I'm afraid now compared to the Canon PowerShot like the CyberShot it has built-in GPS it also has a, a high frame rate for movies, so you can do like slow-mo stuff like that. Uh, it has a faster shutter speed, which is good for uh, taking pictures, but I'm mostly using these cameras for videos, so um, picture taking is just kind of a, a perk for me. So let's see here, let's go into more of the details. So advantages of the Canon SX280HS over the uh, Sony HX50V. Um, higher speed movies for like the super slow motion stuff which the uh, Sony does not have. Uh, has better maximum light sensitivity. It has a 6400 ISO versus Sony's 3200 ISO. So it's a one F stop better for all you uh, shutter bugs out there who know, who know the terminology. It's a little bit smaller, which is always good. Uh, it's cheaper, about 140 bucks cheaper. Uh, it's a little little lighter, so it's about 10% lighter. And thinner, it's about 10% thinner as well. So it's uh, aesthetically a much more pleasing camera than the uh, HX50V as far as size and all that stuff goes. 
so it's a little easier to fit in your pocket. The advantages that the Sony HX50V have over the Canon SX280HS is that it has about two and a half times more zoom. So 30x zoom versus 20x zoom. A higher resolution screen is about 920k dots versus the Canon's 461k dots, which is good for a picture view and stuff like that. It also has a significantly longer battery life, like I mentioned. Uh, if you're doing it in uh, picture shots, it's uh, 400 shots for the Sony versus Canon's 210 per charge. A slightly better wide angle, 24 millimeter versus 25. Now for wide angle, the smaller the uh, amount, the wider the angle. Having a 24 millimeter is a lot better than like a 25 or a 28 or something like that. And it does support an external flash, but uh, I wouldn't use the horseshoe mount for uh, a flash, like I said. I would use it mostly for an external microphone. That is really cool. Uh, longer exposure times, that's good. A faster max shutter speed, which is always good. Some similarities, they have a built-in GPS, better sensor types, good Im image stabilization, really fast max shutter speeds. 280HS is 3200 versus the HX50s, which is at 4000, so they're all pretty darn fast. A very n narrow, widest aperture size, around f3.5. That's pretty good, I think. <laughs> I'm not really much of a shutter bug, so I can't really uh, explain everything in super good detail, but here's also some uh, similar cameras as well. You got the uh, the Canon PowerShot SX260, Panasonic, a Nikon, another Sony CyberShot, some more power shots. Here's a good look at the uh, at the two cameras here. And they actually kind of screwed up on this one because this is actually the blue one. It's actually the SX270, which is exactly the same as the 280, except it does not have the uh, GPS or Wi-Fi capabilities. Now, I'm not real big on the GPS, but I think I can take advantage of the Wi-Fi, which is why I'm you know, just throwing down the extra 30 bucks for the 280 as opposed to the 270, even though it does come in blue. But I prefer stealth in my shot, so I think I would look a little more professional with a black camera as opposed to a blue one, even though I really want the blue one, but eh, it's whatever. So you got the Canon Power Shot over here on this side, and you got the uh, Sony Cyber Shot on this side. That side right there. <laughs> so here it is, some pictures. And that's pretty much it for this. Okay, so I really look forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments below. Uh, feel free to let me know uh, what camera I should pick. And uh, if you guys have a better uh, idea or a better uh, camera that I should go with, uh, also feel free to list it in the comments below. Before you guys go listing off like DSLRs and dedicated camcorders, um, like I said earlier in the video, you know, for practicality reasons, I don't really like using DSLRs just because they're really heavy and really bulky and a lot of uh, different places kind of frown upon me using such cameras, which is the same for camcorders, although they are smaller and lighter than DSLRs. Um, a lot of places are a little iffy on uh, using ca uh, dedicated camcorders. So for point and shoots, they're generally pretty good about that sort of thing, and they uh, don't give me the business in most cases, which is why I'm going with a point and shoot. So um, like I said, if you guys have any uh, suggestions for uh, other cameras I should get besides the two that I've listed, um, feel free to listen in the comments below. But like I said, if you're going with like DSLRs or camcorders, you know, that's, <laughs> I'm not going for that. I'm going for more of the point and shoot style. So, um, anyway, that's all I have to say for this video. So yeah, this is the Andy Song, signing off for now, thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and my other stuff. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I'm just uh, making this uh, quick video before I go to bed to uh, ask you guys a quick question. And that is, uh, how do you deal with uh, homesickness? And uh, now I know that, you know, I'm going to be able to go down and uh, visit my family in less than two weeks, actually. But I still get these feelings of homesickness. And, you know, I, I keep in touch with my family a lot. I keep in touch with my friends from back home. But it still just kind of eats me up sometimes. And uh, it's, it's really hard for me to deal with. So uh, I was just wondering uh, how you guys uh, manage to deal with it. I mean, do you, you know, just go out for a run? Do you go 
talk with your friends, text with your friends, game with your friends, you know, keep in touch with your family through like Skype, you know, an occasional text message, a weekly call, you know, I, I like to know because, you know, every once in a while these, you know, feelings of nostalgia just kind of, you know, eat me up and I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I was home and it's really hard for me to enjoy the here and now, you know, with those kind of feelings just kind of eating me up, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to make that quick video to ask you guys that question, so yeah, this is the Andy Song, signing off for now, thanking you guys for tuning in to this really quick video, and, uh, for watching my other stuff, and I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending your friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time, catch you there guys, Good night. Alright, now we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome you to the May 2013 update video. Ooh. So I really like the format that the April 2013 update video had, and I think I'm going to stick with it from now on. So for my future uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to break it up into two parts. Part one, which is what you're watching right now, is going to deal with video uploads, uh, different site updates, different uh, projects and stuff like that that I'm going to be working on throughout the month, and uh, things of that nature. Whereas part two will deal with uh, more personal life stuff. So with that said, let's begin part one. Site updates and other various things. Wow. <laughs> so first on the list is Movie Night 5. Now, right now, uh, Movie Night 5 is available on Floppimation's own YouTube channel. Link in the description below. I've had this YouTube channel for Floppimation uh, pretty much since we started doing the whole Movie Night series. But the reason I haven't really uploaded anything to it is because I was afraid of the whole uh, copyright thing that YouTube does. It flags copyrighted content and things of that nature. Even if we use it in the proper manner, it still just auto flags it and it's just a big hassle to deal with. So that's why I switched over to uh, Blit TV for the majority of uh, Flopimation's projects. And we're still gonna be using Blit TV's channel. The thing is, uh, for Flopimation's YouTube channel, it's mostly going to be dedicated towards like uh, the movie night series and uh, we're going to upload like intros and stuff like that uh, behind the flop as well and uh, other miscellaneous stuff to the uh, Flopimation's YouTube channel as well as the Blip TV channel but Blip TV is going to mostly contain like the first impact anime series and stuff like that and uh, I'll keep you guys informed on various other projects that we'll be working on um, as they uh, occur so uh, stay tuned for that now uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, Flopimation projects. Next on the list is First Impact Anime Season Boa. Uh, the Talk of a Dolphin is working on a new intro, so uh, once that's completed, I'll begin work on actually putting the episodes together, uh, just because it's a lot easier to do it from beginning to end rather than just do like the majority of it and then just wait for the intro and just put it in. That's just that's just the easiest way that I found to do it, so uh, it's a little bass backwards, but that's just how it is. So um, once uh, all the episodes have been rendered and everything. I'll upload uh, one episode a week, so uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, next on the list is Behind the Flop, which uh, will be released right after First Impact Anime 4 uh, does its run. So uh, once again, stay tuned for that. <laughs> next on the list is Convoy Street 2013. Now, as of this recording, I only have uh, two more videos left to edit and render of the Convoy Street 2013 series. I've already uploaded the uh, the videos from 2011. I really hope you guys enjoy them. They were some of the last video footage that I had of my friend Sam uh, back when she was still out here in San Diego. And uh, we really had a fun time. You know, despite all that, I really felt that the videos were lacking. And I had a certain vision for those videos, but it just, and it just kind of got mixed up, so that's why I did the uh, 2013 updates. And in addition, uh, they're also in HD, so that's a plus. <laughs> so I uh, definitely hope you uh, hope you enjoy those when they come out, and uh, they'll be released very soon. Like I said, I only have two more videos left, so yeah, that's gonna be coming down the pipe soon. All right, last on the list here for YouTube updates is uh, archives and lost vlogs and other miscellaneous uploads. Now, I've gone through my phone and uh, generally speaking I like to, you know, record a video, you know, from my phone and uh, just upload it, but sometimes when I record stuff it just kind of gets lost in the mix or I forget about it or 
whatever the case may be, and I just don't get a chance to upload it. So that's why you get all these uh, lost vlogs that just kind of come out of nowhere. I recently found a big, uh, a big smattering of them from uh, when I got back from deployment and uh, some around that time frame. So like December, January, 2000, so December 2012 to uh, like January, February 2013 is when the majority of these uh, lost vlogs are. And uh, I know I have some more lost video footage. I'm gonna have to go dig a little deeper into my phone for those. But just uh, just uh, to give you guys a heads up, I'm gonna be releasing these videos uh, periodically throughout the month. And it'll probably carry over to the next month if I find uh, some more footage. So just uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> Moving on to uh, other updates and things of that nature. Um, TheAndySan.com, my own personal website. I've been working on getting it uh, back up to date with uh, my videos. Uh, I've been, you know, posting uh, actual written blogs. I uh, posted like <laughs> two or three last month. Yeah, it's been really great getting back into writing blogs rather than, you know, doing vlogs, which I also enjoy, but written blogs is basically what brought me into this whole uh, internet thing. So uh, just get back to my roots, you know how it is. <laughs> So I'm definitely going to be getting back into uh, writing more posts. Now I don't have like a set schedule for those yet. Those just kind of come and go as I get ideas and inspirations and stuff like that. If you guys uh, want to like kind of keep on the up and up with uh, stuff like that, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my uh, Twitter account which is uh, twitter.com slash theandysan. A uh, link for my Twitter account is up in my uh, little banner area there for uh, my channel homepage. So just click on the little Twitter icon and bam, <laughs> follow me and uh, you'll get the up and up on what I'm up to. In addition to uh, getting the site back up to date and uh, writing more actual written blog posts, I'm also looking to redesign the website. And uh, it's... <laughs> It's been uh, in dire need of a, of a re, uh, of a, uh, like a makeover, I guess you could say. If you guys have any suggestions, cause honestly, I've been out of the whole blog game for a while. I've been mostly focusing on making videos for YouTube that I haven't really uh, been, you know, browsing around uh, blogs, so I don't really know what's cool anymore. And uh, as far as like, you know, how, you, how everything's laid out and stuff like that, I mean, I don't know, I've been out of it for a while, so uh, if you guys have any suggestions for how you want the site to look, uh, feel free to leave me something in the comments below, or if it's a little too long or whatever, uh, feel free to send me a personal message on YouTube as well. I definitely look forward to it. That said, we'll round, round things up here with uh, some new YouTube channels. Um, in addition to the Floppimation channel, which technically isn't a new channel since it's been around since 2010. It's just that I'm now starting to put stuff up on it. I have three more uh, YouTube channels that I made recently. Um, the first one is my Andy Japandi channel. And uh, once again, uh, links and stuff will be down below. So if you want to subscribe and stuff like that, awesome. So like I said, uh, first channel up is my Andy Japandi channel. And it'll be my, basically like my all about Japan channel. Uh, for when I go over to Japan at the end of the month, I'm going to be dedicating that video solely to my uh, videos in Japan. So if you guys just want to see uh, my various exploits and stuff like that in Japan, you have a whole channel dedicated to it. And of course, I'll be uploading them here on my Andy-san channel as well, but I just want to make a, a dedicated channel just for uh, Japan-related videos. So if you guys don't want to deal with uh, my other stuff, you can just uh, have that channel. I'll start uploading and start uh, really working on the channel once I actually get out to Japan. So right now there's nothing on it, on it. so uh, just, uh, just subscribe so that way when I actually get out to Japan and start making videos, you'll be the first to know. So yeah. Okay, next channel up is A Life in Video. It's my, uh, my longest running series to date, um, inspired by the exploits of one Kirk Bell, also known as Softy Papa or Lyle's Brother, <laughs> whatever channel you subscribe to. He also has like a gajillion other channels as well, but those are his uh, main two most famous ones, as well as a uh, YouTube Bullet Train. Can't forget that one. That's a that's another big one. But uh, I started that series uh, actually as part of a of request from him because he wanted to know a little a little bit more about my air the uh, area I was living at at the time, which was Salina, Ohio. And so I just kind of thought of some ideas for local landmarks and stuff like that and just kind of did things that way and it just kind of evolved as I moved to different places you know going from
from Salina, Ohio to Chicago to San Diego, um, different places on deployment, although that's its own separate uh, series, I guess you could say. But uh, just the whole general idea behind it was based on my uh, life and video series. So um, I'm making a whole channel dedicated to those episodes. So uh, very soon I'll be uploading my back catalog of videos and then once I get everything up to current as I upload new life and video episodes to my Andy Son channel I'll be uploading them to my life and video channel as well. If you just want to see uh, the various uh, locales and stuff like that that I visited uh, be sure to subscribe to that channel which uh, like I said links below and uh, enjoy. <laughs> All right, and last on the list is my uh, main channel backup channel, so also no also known as Andy Vasan. It's uh, I decided to make this uh, backup channel just in case uh, anything were to happen to uh, this main channel. As of this month, uh, May 2013, I have two copyright strikes against my Andy Vasan channel, and uh, there are four videos that I made a long time ago, and you know I've long since deleted but YouTube has got something uh, something against me so they just uh, slapped me with two copyright strikes for like I think the same video actually I'll have to go back and look to be sure but yeah so um, if you guys know of any way I can uh, get those copyright strikes uh, removed which is unlikely admittedly but uh, if you guys know of any way that I can get those expounded from my account uh, feel free to once again uh, say something in comments below or send me a personal message I don't really th think that uh, you can remove the copyright strikes you know it's it's very unlikely especially since the videos have long since been removed but um, if there is a possibility and you guys actually know how to do it you know <laughs> feel free to tell me because that will uh, put my channel in less danger of getting uh, terminated, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> For my uh, backup channel, Andy The Son, I'll start uploading my back catalog fairly soon. It'll have uh, pretty much like all my vlogs and pretty much everything that's on this channel right now on that channel. So, yeah, definitely subscribe to that. In the event that something were to happen, I'm not. You know, I don't plan on anything to happen, but it's always good to have a backup just in case. That's it for part one of my May 2013 update video. Stay tuned for part two, where I discuss some uh, personal life stuff. See you then. Bye. All right, and we're back. Hey gang, Andy here, welcoming you to part two of the May 2013 update videos. Woo. So in part two, I'm going to be discussing uh, some personal life stuff that's going to be going on this month. Uh, but if you guys just want to see uh, like YouTube updates and various other site updates, uh, be sure to check out part one. That said, let's continue on to part two. So um, as you guys know, I'm going to be going to Japan at the end of this month. And I'm really nervous because it's, uh, it's a very big change. You know, I've never actually lived outside of the country before. Now, I've, I've gone on deployment, so I've visited other countries before, but I've never actually, you know, picked, packed up my bags and moved to another country before. So it's going to be a real big change. You know, I'm really nervous, but I'm also really excited because going out to Japan has been, you know, a real major life goal for me ever since, you know, I was a little kid and I've been, you know, pursuing it pretty much the majority of my adult life. I'm really looking forward to going out there and representing my country and stuff like that, but you know, I really look forward to making videos out there of my time in Japan and stuff like that. And I really hope to uh, meet some uh, some YouTubers out there as well, because you know, I've, I've been uh, watching the J-Vlogging community, that's the, the community of uh, YouTubers out in Japan uh, doing vlogs like this of their uh, experiences out there and actually showing the sights and scenery and things of that nature and I really look forward to uh, being a part of that community rather than just you know before being an outsider looking in you know I felt like I was fairly welcomed into the community you know everybody treated me very warmly it's just that you know since I wasn't in Japan it's kind of hard to say you know oh I'm a jaywalker the uh, general definition of a J vlogger is a vlogger in Japan. It's kind of hard to be a J vlogger if you're not in Japan or have been in Japan. 
that's just my uh, general opinion on uh, that. But uh, I'm gonna be going out to Japan. I'm gonna be uh, doing my thing out there. And like I said, I hope to uh, start meeting some people. You know, maybe do some collaborations, things of that nature. In addition to, you know, meeting J vloggers, you know, I just look forward to meeting other people that do this whole crazy YouTube thing because you know, I never really met anybody. You know, I've been doing this for over seven years and I still haven't really met any other YouTubers, you know, aside from, you know, maybe my friends that do an occasional video or people that, you know, are in my other videos like uh, the Talking Vidalkin and, you know, his friends and stuff like that. But, I mean, they don't really do videos on their own. They're usually kind of a part of a video series that I do. And I've been trying to get them, you know, to do their own series and to do their own thing, but you know how it is, procrastination. It's a bitch, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, like I said, you know, I really look forward to uh, to uh, doing my thing out in Japan, but uh, before I actually get out there, uh, I'm gonna be going on leave uh, for two weeks. I'm gonna be going back home to Ohio. Uh, actually, my mom and my uh, little brother are gonna be coming down to San Diego uh, next weekend and I'm gonna show them around the sites one last time and once the, the weekend's done we're gonna be heading back to Ohio and uh, I'm gonna be spending two weeks down there and I really hope to uh, uh, to reconnect with a lot of my old friends from high school and college and stuff like that and I realize that not everybody is in Ohio anymore I realize that you know there's some that are out of state so it's uh, it's difficult for them to come back unless it's like Christmas or something like that so you know, I, I understand, you know, those cases, but uh, for those of you who are in Ohio, you have no excuse. No excuse. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, in Ohio for two weeks, and uh, I really hope to uh, see everybody there because um, once I go out to Japan, it's going to be pretty much like only be able to come back for Christmas, if that. Uh, that's just the nature of being forward deployed out in that country. It's just, it's really hard for... Uh, people to come back to the states on leave so that's just uh, just the nature of the beast so I'm hoping to reconnect with everybody and you know have one last good time before uh, I go out to, go out to Japan and it's gonna be like every Christmas and I know you guys have your own families to uh, you know visit during the holidays so you know it'll be even more difficult for us to get together and have a beer or something like that I don't know hope to see you guys uh, want to come back in, in a little more recent news um, um, I've been looking at uh, some colleges again for uh, when I eventually get out of the get out of the Navy, and uh, one that I've been looking at a lot, especially today, is uh, the University of Cincinnati, and uh, it has a lot of programs that I'm really interested in. I've been looking through uh, various like uh, reviews of the campus, I know the faculty, and they've largely been very positive. It's <laughs> It's been difficult to find just a negative review. I mean, the most negative review I've found has just been that, you know, the University of Cincinnati is just, eh. <laughs> that, that's the most negative review I've found of it so far. So that really got me, uh, really got me pumped about it. I've been looking through uh, various uh, programs that it has, and it just seems to hit all the little check marks on my uh, idea of a good campus. But uh, for those of you who don't know, I am looking to uh, get out of the service and go back to college. So I'm gonna be pursuing an early out uh, program in order to do that. It's not that I, you know, you know, don't like the Navy or anything like that. You know, I really love the Navy and I've really enjoyed my time in. It's just that, you know, I wanna go out and go to college before I'm considered, you know, like the old fuck of the class. You know, I want to start going to college full time before I turn 30. So um, that's why I'm pursuing the the, uh, the early out so I can uh, do that. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'll be talking about that a little more in the future once I have uh, have more information available. So uh, that's another episode of Facts that you should uh, stay tuned for. <laughs> You know, I've been looking through uh, various colleges and stuff like that that I want to go to to uh, continue my education. And uh, some of the little check marks that I've been uh, thinking of, like mentally, <laughs> thinking mentally, yeah. I want to have a campus that's fairly close to home. I know I, I want to go and uh, travel and stuff like that, and that's why I joined the Navy was to 
get out of my hometown and go see the world, see other countries, see other states, pretty much. You know, I've lived in San Diego for almost three years now. It's been fun, but I think, you know, especially during this period of my life, you know, I'm, I'm getting older and, you know, during my 20s, I wanted to go out and explore. And, you know, during my late 20s, you know, soon to be early 30s in a couple of years, um, I want to kind of go back to my roots and, uh, you know, just be closer to home. So I'm closer to my family and it's it's either easier for them to come visit me, but it's not like we're gonna run into each other at the Walmart or something like that. You know, I still have, I still have my own space and, you know, I can make Cincinnati, you know, like my place, but um, it's still fairly close enough to where they can, uh, if they want to come down for the weekend or I can go up there for the weekend and, stuff like that and it's you know it's fairly close to my other friends as well so I think it's uh, I think it'll be a good fit but uh, there have been some other campuses that I've been looking into OSU is a good example uh, I've been looking into uh, the Wright State University campus in Dayton I've been looking into uh, some campuses in Michigan even you know so I could be closer to my family up there there have been a lot of good options up there uh, thinking about uh, stuff like that, but uh, currently the University of Cincinnati seems like a pretty good choice. I'm not going to, uh, you know, contact them just yet, just because, you know, I want to do a little more uh, independent study. So if, if uh, any of you guys out there watching, if you go to the University of Cincinnati or if you've been to the University of Cincinnati, if you're like an alumni or something like that, uh, please, by all means, tell me about your experience. You know, write something in the comments below. Send me a personal message. You know, I'd, I really want an honest opinion of the campus. You know, the reviews sound good and, you know, official website makes it sound good, but, you know, that's the idea of the web official website, right? So I just want to hear a very honest, very candid uh, take on the University of Cincinnati, both, you know, the campus, uh, the curriculum, the faculty, various programs and stuff, you know. I just want to want to learn more about it. Like I said, comments below or personal message. <laughs> that's pretty much all that's been going on in my personal life. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing uh, friends and family when I go back to Ohio uh, next week. And uh, it's going to be really exciting going out to Japan as well. Just look forward to a bunch of new videos that are going to be coming out soon. And with that said, this is the Andy San signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to my uh, update videos, this one and part one, as well as uh, my other plethora of videos. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I'm making this uh, late night video response to Linkara on his YouTube channel. Uh, Linkara recently posted like a special video called Please Let the Ads Play, where he talks about how he's been losing some ad revenue due to uh, a lot of you know viewers of his show having ad block enabled and therefore you know not showing the ads. And if the ads aren't shown, then he doesn't get income from that. He doesn't get the uh, the residuals from ads being displayed. So uh, therefore, it's affecting his income for the show. I you know was looking through the the comments of it as well and I'm seeing a lot of you know just self-entitled people you know thinking you know oh you know Linkar is just being a rock star you know he's just asking people for money and you know get a job yeah, you know stuff like that and I'm like dude you know in most people's cases you know my case as well these, you know, YouTube is essentially a hobby. You know, you just, you make videos for fun. If you get a little cash from it, you know, good on you, but you know, you're not living off that kind of money. But in Linkar's case, he's managed to, you know, turn this little hobby into a full-time job and he's actually getting a fairly decent income from it as well. You know, so <laughs> for a fellow content creator, you know, that's a really big deal. I mean, that's like, you know, the dream, you know, that's what a lot of the YouTubers that kind of push to go pro, I mean, that's, you know, that's what a lot of them shoot for, you know, myself included. So, you know, to say, you know, oh, he's just, you know, begging for money and crap like that. And a lot of these people, you know, are self-entitled and they think that they should get all his shows for free and they shouldn't have ads and all this other crap. And it's like, it, it would be one thing if his content sucked, 
I mean, if you just put out a lot of shit videos or something like that, then yeah, just whatever. I don't care. I wouldn't even watch it. But, you know, Linkara puts a lot of time and effort into his videos. And I feel that for someone, you know, of that caliber, you know, we should really be supporting him instead of just, you know, being all up in arms because we have to watch a 30 second video. I mean, really? Really, guys? I mean, like he said, if it really bothers you that much, you could just mute the ad, check your Gmail, check your Facebook, you know, check YouTube or whatever the fuck, and uh, wait until the 30 seconds are up, come back, watch the video, you know, do the same thing for the, uh, the mid ad about halfway through the video, or, you know, like he said, you could just skip to that part, you know, let it roll, mute it, check your Gmail again, until it's done, and in most cases, actually, Blip is starting to adapt the uh, the YouTube style of uh, ads, where they have the little skip skip this ad after five seconds. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of you know Blip TV's advertisement model, so I can't really say. But um, I'm pretty sure that using the skip function doesn't affect you know the amount that he gets from the ads. Now, I could be wrong, but. That's just my assumption. So if it really bothers you that much, like I said, a lot of the ads are starting to adapt the skip this ad after five seconds. And if you're viewing it on mobile devices like I do for a Nostalgia Critic and his uh, pre-roll ads, usually if you just, uh, if you're using the uh, Blip TV app, which is still in uh, like a beta stage pretty much, like not everybody, not everybody's content is on it yet, but there are a select few, namely Nostalgia Critic, who uh, do have it on there. And uh, if it's just, you know, when the ad comes on, just click on the ad, hit your back button, and go back to watching the show. So, if, <laughs> if anything, that actually gives him more money because you clicked on the ad. Now, once again, I could be wrong because, you know, I'm still fairly new to the whole uh, advertising mechanic and how things work. So, if I am wrong, uh, feel free to correct me in the comments below. But um, that's just from my perspective. Um, for me, I think we should all support Linkara. What's 30 seconds, you know? 30 seconds can help him make more videos, make better videos, have more props, and stuff like that. And his setup is a lot more intricate than mine. I mean, me, I mean, the reason I don't have ads on my channel is because, you know, in my case, I got banned from Google AdSense, so I can't even run ads if I wanted to. But, um, the ads that do run on my videos are usually from uh, copyrighted content that was flagged by YouTube, but they still let me keep the video. So um, if there's other videos of mine that have ads, aside from the little pop-up box, I'm talking like the little like pre-roll ads, you know, then please let me know. Um, unless it has copyright content, like I said, they just automatically add that in once it's flagged. So there's nothing I can do about it in that case. But you know, if they haven't flagged it, then uh, I can go in there and disable it, but I'm pretty sure I've gotten them all, but like I said, if you guys find any more, uh, feel free to tell me. I like to support my fellow content creators, and I know he's on like a higher level than I am, you know, like I said, he has, his videos are a lot more intricate than mine, you know, the amount of time and energy, not only recording the video, but, you know, setting it up, doing like storyboards and stuff like that, and just generally getting like the pacing down, and actually when everything's all said and done, going in editing the video and making sure they come out on a weekly basis, right on time. You know, that that is very hard to do. And I mean, I've tried doing the weekly videos too. You know, even though my setup is a lot simpler, a lot more simpler than, uh, <laughs> a lot more simple I should say, than Linkara's stuff. You know, I've tried doing, doing it that way and it was hard. Like seriously, you start running out of things to talk about and it starts becoming a chore, at least in my case. So for him to be doing, you know, weekly videos and then some, you know, he's got specials, you know, he's got the history of Power Rangers, uh, collaborations with uh, other people on That Guy with the Glasses, uh, other videos and con appearances and stuff like that. You know, so he's got a full schedule, so it's not like, you know, he's just goofing off when he's not making a top of the fourth wall. You know, he's he's a very busy dude. So, you know, for me, I really applaud his efforts, and I think that, 
you know, a simple 30 seconds extra of my time to help support them is, you know, all right by me. If anything, I kind of feel guilty for not supporting them more, really. But there are other options. You know, if you don't feel like watching the other uh, 30 second ads, you can go and purchase. Uh, he's going to be releasing some uh, Top of the Fourth Wall on DVD soon. Um, go to his site for more information and uh, links and all that stuff down below as always. And uh, if anything, he's also added a uh, PayPal button on his blog, which, like I said, links below. So if you want to just donate to him directly without actually buying anything or watching ads and all the other stuff, you know, you feel free to do it that way. Um, before this video gets extremely long, and I think it already has, you know, in conclusion, man, support your artists, whether they make music, make videos, pictures, whatever, you know, support your artists, support your content creators. And whether it's just watching a 30 second ad or you know, sending them five bucks through PayPal or, you know, buying a shirt or buying some DVDs or something, you know, support your artists, you know, even, even the little things. I mean, you don't have to buy stuff to support them. I mean, you can share his videos on Facebook, share it on Twitter or whatever, whatever other, you know, social media networks that you're a part of, you know, just, you know, get the word out to help them, you know, branch out to a new audience and help them, you know, build and make more money and make better videos and make more videos. That's all I wanted to say. So yeah, this is the Andy Son. Signing up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and my other stuff. And be sure to check out Link Carter's videos, not only on YouTube, but also on his Blip TV channel. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Hi guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And I just wanted to read to you guys an essay that I wrote recently about uh, dealing with my uh, personal depression and some pent up emotions that have been building up for me, or in me, for the last couple months and even years, really. So uh, I just want to put a disclaimer out here now. This is just me um, airing out some pent up frustrations, pent up feelings, a lot of emotions and stuff like that. So. If I do name names and call you out or something like that, it's nothing personal. I still love you guys. <laughs> it's just that I need to get these feelings out, otherwise I'll just blow up. So, um, still love you guys, just uh, keep that in mind. So, let's begin the essay called The Lowest Point in My Life. I've never wanted to crawl into a hole so bad before in my life. I know I may act all chipper in front of the camera and say everything's fine, but the truth is so far removed from that. The truth is, I'm depressed. Have I always been this way? No. I've had moments where I was happy like any other person. Does being depressed make me a psychotic bipolar schizo? Wrong again. The reason I don't like to air my feeling of discontent as much as I used to is because I don't want people, my mom especially, to worry if I have that thing your father had, or that I'll simply kill myself. Now, rest assured, I'm not, and I repeat, not suicidal. Have I had suicidal moments? Yes, back in college and the couple of years afterward. The reason I didn't go through with it is because I know it would have been a burden on my parents to bury me and to have to deal with the grief of losing their firstborn son, someone who they thought up to that point had it all together. I couldn't do that to them, not in this lifetime or the next, if there is such a thing. So what do I do? I keep on living, trying to make things work, reasoning with myself that maybe it's not so bad. Maybe things will work out like they always do. Not always in my favor initially, but in the grand scheme of things. So if you made it this far in the video, you're probably wondering, Andy, why are you such a whiny emo bitch? Well, there are several reasons, most of which are pretty stock and unoriginal. Go figure. Let's start off with the first one, the Navy. The truth is, I'm just tired of being in the Navy. While I've made some really good friends during my time in, I feel so lonely out here. The transitional nature of the Navy makes it hard for someone like me to make friends since they're just going to leave in a year or so anyway. So it feels like just when I really get to know someone beyond their one time in boot camp and pre-Navy stories, they up and leave for greener pastures elsewhere. It makes it hard to personally invest myself in anyone, and therefore while I'm generally friendly towards people, I keep my distance. Maybe that's why I'm so attached to my friends from my high school college days. 
I know that for the most part, they're not going to up and leave very far from where they are, so we can still hang out in real life when I come home and leave. Call me selfish or stuck in the past or whatever, but I need some manner of stability in my life. While my Navy friends and myself may be coming and going, it's nice to know that at the end of the day, my friends back home will be there for me when I go to visit. It gives me a warm fuzzy. But don't confuse stability with monotony. I get that enough for my folks back home. I love them to pieces, but damn can they be a bore to listen to after a while. Sometimes I just put myself on autopilot since all conversations are something something new laundry person quit. Something something so and so did this and that. Something something can you believe it? I feel bad for putting them on blast like that, but it drives me up a wall sometimes, you know? Anyway, back to the whole Navy thing. My folks and some of my close Navy friends want me to stay in, do my 20 years, and get out with a paycheck for the rest of my life. While that sounds like a very stable way to approach things, money for the rest of your life is nothing to take lightly. I can't imagine staying in for that long. I couldn't live with myself if I did so. While I certainly respect others who want to pursue this career path, it simply isn't for me, and there's nothing wrong with that. Going back to college. I always viewed the Navy as my stepping stone for going back to college and getting my life back on track. I never wanted to make a career out of it. Making E5 last year, however, had me questioning if I should stay in, at least for a second enlistment for sure duty. Then I remembered why I joined in the first place and I recommitted myself to getting out and going back to college. I'll be hitting my three year mark on June 24th of this year, so only a month and some change away. Once that happens, I'll apply for an early out program that'll let me use 100% of my GI and post 9-11 bills. Although I would like to pursue another major, in order to keep myself marketable, I've decided to just keep my current major, Information Systems. In order to make things interesting for me, I'll also be pursuing a minor slash certificate in Japanese. While it may not be the most marketable thing in America, I'm doing that mostly for fun and for my postgraduate job, teaching English in Japan. In addition to taking advantage of study abroad programs while I'm in college to explore Japan on my own terms, I plan on moving there after college to teach English. There are several ways to go about getting such a job, but I want to try out the JET program first. And uh, if you guys want to look at the JET program, I have a link down below, so if you guys want to check that out. Getting closer to 30. Another realization that has been creeping ever closer in my mind is that I'll be turning 30 in a couple of years. I'm currently 27, so I still have three years before then, but it still bothers me. The reason being is that I thought I'd have my life figured out by this point, and that I'd just be focused on what I found my, my life purpose, my goals, my aspirations, my passions were. I thought I had a pretty good handle on who I was and what I like and what I want to do with my life, but as time goes on, I find that notion drifting farther and farther from the truth each day. I still like playing guitar, watching anime, learning more about Japanese culture, exploring new places, making videos about my discoveries, and so on. However, this feeling of inevitable dread makes me question every facet of myself, from my interests to my appearance to my mannerisms. I'm in my late 20s now, no longer my early or even mid 20s. I'm still young, and yet people expect me to act and dress a certain way. They expect me to act like a stuffy old grown up. That's just not my style, not me. It's hard for me to relate to people anymore. If I talk to the younger early 20 somethings, the mentality is too immature for my taste. All they want to do is get drunk and get their dicks wet. Nothing wrong with a drink or two and the company of the fairer sex, but I don't want to base my li entire life on that. There's too much more to me than that. The older 20 plus crowd is a little bit better, but their mentality is often that of someone in their 40s and up, which still make it hard for me to relate to them. They're mostly married, and while I really want to get married someday, the truth is that I'm painfully single, so I can't relate to their married lives. Some even have kids, both singular and plural. Yeah, they're getting to that age where they're just popping them out every year or so. I see it on Facebook all the damn time. I also want to be a father someday, but I don't have kids currently so I can't relate to parenthood problems. So I'm stuck in this limbo of not being a party-going, pussy-pounding son of a gun, or being a family man. It's not a fun place to be, let me tell you. Between the fucked up support system and the crippling loneliness, I don't know what's worse. Sure there's Facebook and other online methods to communicate with my friends and family, but that only goes so far. It's good for conveying messages, but it's quite limited to sending out genuine emotions beyond the kind you put on a smiley emoticon. <laughs> Seeing my girl slash friend go across the country. I feel so disconnected, so lost. I thought I had a good handle on myself when I got out here to San Diego, but ever since Sam, one of my best friends, left from Norfolk last year, I've been secretly in shambles. She meant a lot to me, 
My dumbass didn't want to get serious because we're both in the Navy. Dual military relationships usually don't work out long term. And we could get orders to commands across the country, and hell, across the world even, which is exactly what happened. She's since gotten herself a boyfriend, and he seems nice, so I'm happy that she's happy. Everywhere I go in this town, I'm constantly reminded of her. The time we went here, the time we went there, I can't escape it. Maybe that's why, despite the incredible scenery of San Diego, I've grown to hate this place. Staring at the rising sun. Aside from living in Japan, living in California was one of my personal life goals. I'm happy to say that I've achieved that. However, it all seems so bittersweet and it makes me question whether or not I will feel that way about Japan someday as well. If I would get burnt out on the places, the faces, the culture, the attitudes. I don't know what I'd do with myself if that were to happen. Japan has been my personal escape for years. Whenever life's burdens and pressures would be too much for me to handle, I would always think of Japan, the sakura trees in bloom, the castles from long ago standing tall against the flow of time, the massive cityscape that seems to be a living, breathing organism, the, ble the beautiful gardens, the loving and sweet nature of the Japanese people, especially the girls with their long black hair and small button noses and large almond eyes that pierce my soul and leave me feeling naked yet warm and comforted from head to toe. Of course, this is a super idealistic view of Japan, I realize that. But you have no idea how many times I was able to bring myself back from the deepest and darkest depressions with these thoughts from Japan. I had to fight back tears as I remembered those times and then put those thoughts into typed words. Now into spoken words. Seriously. The only peace is a state of mind. I came to the realization not too long ago that to fix my feelings of disconnect, I need to go out there in the world and try to find myself again. It won't be easy and it won't be brief. I've come to realize that finding myself isn't so much a destination, but a journey. I've, come, I've just come to a point where I feel comfortable and branch off from there until the never-ending yearning for more in life arises. Then I go back on the hunt for myself again. I hope you guys will continue to journey with me, and I thank those of you who've stuck with me thus far. Being by myself while looking for myself is such a lonely journey, and sometimes I need the support of others to help me keep going, you know? Until next time, Space Cowboys. So yeah, thanks for tuning in to my reading of my essay. If you guys want to, you know, read the whole thing in its entirety, links down below to the post, as well as a link to the uh, JET program as well. So if you guys want to check that out, links are down below. So yeah, this is the Andy San, signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and my other stuff. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. I'm making a YouTube video response to a ciliary 2. At least I think that's how you pronounce his name. If I, if I goofed it, I apologize. But um, anyway, I'm making a response video to his response video, Responception, of uh, the whole Linkara uh, Please Let the Ads Play video. Now, as you guys know, a couple days ago, I made a video response to uh, the video in question uh, made by Linkara, and uh, I basically said my piece, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I said, you know, you should really support your fellow content creators, you know, whether that's watching a 30-second ad, maybe throw them five bucks on their uh, PayPal donation, buy whatever products they got, like a t-shirt, a plushie buttons, whatever the fuck they're hawking, just stuff like that. And that's mostly geared towards like content creators that you really enjoy. And you know, you don't have to do that for everybody, obviously. And I mean, if people are putting out really shit content, I mean, <laughs> you're not gonna buy their t-shirt, you're not gonna bother even watching their videos. So I mean, why even go there? But I'm talking about the content creators that you do support and the, the videos that you do enjoy watching. In the comments for my uh, video response to Linkar's video, um, Aciliary 2's name was one that popped up a lot, and so I decided to check out his channel, see if he had some videos about the whole Linkar situation, and <laughs> boy did he ever. He had uh, two, in fact. Um, one was a straight-up parody of the whole Linkar thing, you know, he's on a, on a beige couch, you know, whining and throwing his arms up in the air and shit like that, and I thought it was funny as hell, I gotta be honest. So. 
I left a really positive comment on uh, that video. And uh, then I watched his second video, which is uh, the response that I'm making this video to, which was a play-by-play uh, -play breakdown of uh, the whole video that uh, Linkara made. I was originally going to go in a little heated, a little hot-headed, and just kind of be like, you know, fuck you, you don't know what you're talking about, you're just an old stuffy dude that just wants him to get a job flipping burgers and shit like that, blah, blah, blah. But I actually sat down and watched the video. I know, watching the whole video is crazy, right? You know, just read the title, that's the whole thing. Ah! I did watch the whole video and god damn it if he didn't make a lot of good points i can't be mad at him i can't call him a slimy little shit bag or any of that other stuff he he made a lot of really good honest points he, admittedly he took a, a couple pot shots that's part of the course for the internet you know you gotta have a thick skin to hang with the big boys you know what i'm saying i just wanted to make this video to not really talk about the stuff that he talked about because he already said <laughs> pretty much everything that you know i'd just be restating his points and you know, I didn't want to make a video, you know, restating the points that I made in my previous video because I thought that I said my piece pretty well. I did want to put my perspective on things as to why the whole ad gate video, as it's been referred to by him, has uh, gone so awry in the comments and stuff like that. And I've been keeping up in the comments not only with my video, but with Linkar's video, on his blog. I haven't even gone to that guy with the glasses forums, but I've heard, you know, everybody's losing their damn minds, you know? They're just losing their shit about watching a 30 second ad and stuff like that. I just kind of wanted to put my own two cents into the issue, and that is, simply put, you know, I just want to explain to you what advertising actually is. Basically, advertising in its most basic concept is an advertiser, usually a business or somebody selling something, a product, a service, whatever, decides to pay money, actual money, not, you know, internet YouTube play money or some kind of weird funny money or bonus tokens or whatever the fuck. It's actual fucking dollar dollar bills, y'all, to present their product in the best possible way to consumers in an area where a lot of eyeballs are present. They want this particular uh, medium to present the product in such a way that it would kind of entice um, people to, you know, buy it or try it out or just kind of, you know, get more information to see what all the, all the fuss is about. That's the general concept of advertising. Now, let me tell you what uh, ad blocking does and why I think that ad blocking is stealing. And it is stealing. The basic mechanic is this. Advertisers pay money to not only make ads, but to put the ads up in places where there's the most eyeballs, or an area which has a lot of eyeballs in general. The concept is that the eyeballs will look at the uh, product being presented, they go out and buy it, and they make their money that way. What Adblocker does is, say you got like a billboard ad or something like that. You, you know, hire a bunch of uh, marketing whizzes and they get all the cool stuff up there and they got like the chick with the big tits, you know, all pushed up and shit. And they're like, buy my product, mm, yeah. Buy my product, cause I got big tits and they're all pushed up and shit. And you know, she's looking good, she's looking fine, she's got the product, she's all fucking soaked wet, oiled and all this kind of shit. And it looks fucking good. People are gonna be knocking down the doors at Walmart and wherever the fuck to buy this damn thing. They're gonna be, you know, selling their kids to Pakistan just to get this thing and it's gonna be a, the, the next big thing. It's gonna be a big craze. And they put the advertisement up, get it all nice, pretty, nice and straight, all nice and looking good in the right place with a lot of eyeballs, it's looking good. And then some asshole with a can of white paint and a roller brush does this all over the ad. Blocks the thing out. Can't see shit. And so you as the advertiser are fucking losing your goddamn mind because you put all this time, you put all this money, you put all this effort into making an ad to bring in business to sell products or services or whatever the fuck you're doing. And some fucking asshole has the goddamn nerve to whitewash it so that way Nobody else knows what the fuck you're selling, or even knows that there's an advertisement there to begin with. The advertisers don't make money, they don't sell their products, and fucking everybody loses on that end, on that end. Where the content creators and all those other people come in, they come in on the back end. The content creators are kind of like, uh, like affiliate marketers, you know? They do the advertising for these people, you know? They're like, you know, hey, I tried this product and it worked for me, and 
here's what's so cool about it, you know. And they kind of use their own fame and stuff like that to market the product. It's basically like using celebrities or something to hawk your shit. That's kind of where, you know, affiliate marker, marketers and, you know, a lot of the AdSense revenue and stuff like that comes from. They're using a, a known presence, whether it's, you know, a celebrity or like a, an e-celebrity or whatever the fuck to gather a lot of eyeballs because they know people are going to be watching for his or her show, present the ad, and then those eyeballs will be like, you know what, that bottle of soap or maybe, you know, maybe I'll go to Applebee's for supper or whatever the fuck. You know, at least that's the general concept. Personally, do I think these ads, you know, especially the ones online, do, do I think that they actually present that in a very marketable way that will make you go out in stores and knock over old ladies to get this shit? No. In, in most cases, no. They're very obtrusive, they're very invasive. They put cookies onto your browser, so that way, wherever else you go, they have these little ads that are, you know, tailor-made to uh, whatever the fuck you clicked on, and it's, it's very invasive, and I get that. You know, I'm really pissed off at the way that they're doing things, too. Now, I can kind of understand why, you know, for marketing purposes, and trying to get ads tailor-made to you, which will uh, produce a higher click rate. You know, if they present ads that are geared towards you, that will gear towards your interests, you're more than likely to click on it, you know. I mean, I'm not in the market for, like, hair products. Fucking obviously. <laughs> An advertisement for, like, L'Oreal or fucking hair curlers, whatever the fuck, you know, is not gonna appeal to me. So, obviously, I'm not gonna click on the ad. But, I'm a guitar player, not good, but I play it. Maybe an advertisement for like a particular uh, guitar model or maybe like an amp or something like that would be a little more appealing to me. So I'm more likely to click on the ad for the guitar rather than the ad for hair curlers or L'Oreal or whatever the fuck. That's the general concept behind that. And like I said with the whole affiliate marketers and stuff like that, because the advertisers don't get paid for their ad, they give whatever they earn back to um, like little affiliate marketers. They get like a percentage of whatever the advertiser is paid for. So say the advertiser paid like five bucks for like one guy to view his shit. It's pretty outrageous, but it does happen. So one, one guy pays like five bucks. Your video gets like a thousand hits. So let's just say you get a nickel for every 1,000 views for this guy's ad. So, you know, add up the views, add up the views, make multiple videos. And I mean, over time, you can make more money. So obviously you're making more than a nickel per view. You know, you move up to 10 cents, a quarter, 50 cents, and pretty soon you're in like dollar territory per 1,000 views. So, you know, if you're someone on the level of like uh, epic rap battles or something like that, and they got like 23 million views per video and climbing, you can make a really decent living off of just advertising alone. We're not talking t-shirts, buttons, uh, little plushies and shit like that. We're not talking that stuff at all. I mean, if you got a lot of eyeballs, you can sell shit. In that sense, yes, ad blocking is stealing. But the thing that pissed a lot of people off about Linkar's video is he didn't take a stand for the advertisers. He didn't say, you know, this is wrong. We're taking money from the advertisers and running with it. He didn't say anything about that. It was all a very selfish me, me, me kind of deal. And you're affecting me and I'm not getting paid because you're blocking my ads and stuff like that. And his persona online as the Linkara character is one of kind of a pompous, arrogant asshole, basically. And in that video, he was still, in my opinion, in the Linkara character. So he kind of came across like a really bad Phil Hartman impersonation. You know, that whole deal. I think if he would have came out a little more honest, I mean, if he would have came out as Lewis Lovehug and not the Linkara character, then I think people would have been a little more receptive to that. I know that, especially in the breakdown that uh, Asiliary put out, um, he made a lot of points about that as well, that he just kind of comes off as like a smarmy, slimy fuckhole. Looking at the recap, I can I can honestly see why. I'll just uh, run through real quick ways I think Linkara can still make money doing what he does without having to get some kind of part-time job or even a full-time job to, you know, pay the bills, basically. And that is um, what a lot of te tech blogs are doing is uh, putting in-video advertising. And I'm not talking about the little 15, 30-second, you know, pre-roll ads or mid-roll ads or whatever. 
I'm talking about, you know, this video is brought to you by so-and-so. And he does like a little plug for them and, you know, he could get like little affiliate stuff from them. Like say, say Netflix decides to sponsor his show for some reason. You know, before every Atop the Fourth Wall episode, he says, Atop the Fourth Wall is sponsored by Netflix. Put in the code LINKY to get two free weeks of Netflix. You know, he'll get some back end off of that as well as the initial advertisement for Netflix. If he pulls in a lot of eyeballs, he could make a lot of money off of just that alone. Like I said, he could do some affiliate products related to a show, like if he wanted to support like some independent comic book, I guess label, company, whatever they call them. If he wanted to support like an independent uh, company that makes comic books and comic book memorabilia or maybe like stuff for a store, you know, he could, you know, do the little in-video ad, you know, this video is brought to you by Doug's Comic Book Shop or something like that. Now, if you say the code LINKY, you'll get like 10% off or something like that. You know, just little things here and there that he can do. And obviously, you know, because he does make a lot of videos, he's not just, you know, sleeping on a pile of gold or anything like that, which I think a lot of uh, commenters think he's doing. He could uh, learn to streamline his video process. If editing and rendering videos does take a lot of time and effort, there are ways he can streamline the process. You know, I mean, he doesn't have to, you know, have all this extra like green screen work and stuff like that. I mean, he can save that for special episodes rather than doing it, you know, every episode. So that way it'll streamline the process, streamlines the process. He has more time to work on more videos, time to write, you know, better scripts or you know if he does it enough he can get like a part-time job or something like that I mean if he's really hard up for money stuff like that that's just a couple suggestions that I have for Linkara and his uh, his money woes I know this video is like ridiculously long I appreciate you guys for watching this video and uh, Ciliary too if you're watching this as well definitely uh, thanks for the video response to Linkara's video and uh, I really like the, uh, the parody episode that was pretty cool sorry it, it took so long Long and I kind of went on rant mode there for a second. This is uh, the Andy San signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I'm here to address some issues that I have with uh, so-called full-time content creators. But before we get into that, I wanna uh, address another issue that's been coming up in the comments a lot, not only in my videos, but uh, in other people's videos as well, and in blogs and whatnot. And that is the validity, or lack thereof, of a full-time content creator being an actual job. Is making YouTube videos an actual J-O-B job? And I'm here to tell you that as long as you're making money in a perfectly legal fashion and you're able to pay your bills, then it's a job. There's <laughs> there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. It's a J-O-B job. Uh, where a lot of people get their panties in a bunch about it is the fact that in most people's cases, if they start making money off of making YouTube videos, it's uh, as like a part-time or maybe a supplemental income. And that's perfectly fine too. If you just want to do this as a hobby, or maybe as like a good part-time supplemental income, like I said, then that's perfectly fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. Or even if you don't wanna make money, if you just wanna do this strictly for fun, that's also fine too. But there are those who wanna go the extra mile, who want to just make YouTube videos or just write blogs or both and make money that way. And if they're able to connect to such an audience or find means to do so, then good on you. This video is here to address five issues that I have with uh, full-time content creators. So with that said, let's begin. The top five things full-time content creators are doing wrong. And these are in no particular order, by the way, so let's begin. Number one, they don't have their finger on the pulse. Now to paraphrase a quote that Wayne Gretzky said, you should go not for where the puck is, but for where it's gonna be. I see this a lot with uh, established content creators. Um, let's use Linkara as an example, since he's been a pretty uh, hot topic lately. I mean, I've already made two videos about his, uh, his recent money woes. So let's use him as an example. He got famous for his A Top of the Fourth Wall video series, as well as History of Power Rangers, which I personally enjoy. 
the top of the fourth wall for me, and kind of hit or miss. But that's neither here nor there. He originally started doing written comic book reviews, and that was what he cut his teeth on. Then he started making video versions of those reviews, which eventually evolved into a top of the fourth wall. And, you know, he got his pacing and his timing down, and he improved on the quality of equipment. Um, he was able to put in props, use some green screen effects, and et cetera, to build up the product to a quote-unquote professional grade. The thing is, initially, the video series was very successful. It was a big hit. A lot of people really liked what they saw. But over time, he fell into a format. And he started becoming very predictable. And people didn't even need to watch the video to know it was going to go on. They just needed to read the title and maybe the description. And they got the basic gist of the video. OK, then Kara is going to review another bad comic. He's going to yell a lot. He's going to be very condescending. And at the end of the video, he's going to hold the comic book high and he's gonna proclaim, this comic sucks! Throw it down on his couch and walk off in disgust. That's it. That's all his Atop the Fourth Wall videos are. Predictable, and they have their own format. And I mean, that works for a time, but eventually you have to evolve. You have to see what the next big thing is. See where not only the eyeballs are at that moment in time, but where they're going to be what trends are going to pop up that are going to make people go, ooh, I want to watch that. That looks interesting. You always have to have your finger on the pulse. Because the minute you take your finger off the pulse, somebody else who's a lot hungrier than you and wants it more than you is going to kick your ass. And you're going to start losing your viewers to that guy. Because people are going to watch him. Because he's entertaining. And he's the next thing. So what I would recommend to Linkara in that case is to, when viewership is starting to decline, start experimenting. Start putting some different ideas out on the side. You know, continue to do a top the fourth wall. You know, continue doing your thing. But do some videos on the side. Do something else. See what sticks. If you get a good idea that sticks, run with it. You know, whether or not you decide to cancel a top the fourth wall to work on that video series full time, that's your call. If you want to do it, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. Always go for where the puck's gonna be. Don't continue to follow the trends. Don't continue to be predictable. Number two, they don't have professional or at least good equipment. And I see this a lot with the uh, amateur uh, vloggers. You know, they, they're just working with an old webcam from 1998 that barely works, and the audio is shitty, and the lighting is poor, and it's just a big mess to watch. For the average Joe YouTuber, or somebody who isn't doing it for the money and isn't doing it full time, it's a little more forgivable in the grand scheme of things. For somebody who's out there proclaiming themselves to be a YouTube pro or a professional vlogger and stuff like that, if they're running on an old shitty ass 240p shitty crackly audio webcam in a dirty ass room with poor lighting, then it's downright insulting. It's embarrassing to the ones who actually put in the work, the ones who actually put a lot of detail into their presentation. They have lighting, they have top-end gear, and it's just embarrassing to call yourself a professional vlogger with such a shitty setup. Now, of course, you can go on to the other extreme side of things. You know, you don't necessarily have to have that $2,000 or $3,000 camera and this $3,000, $6,000 plus lighting setup, soundstage, and all this other stuff to make a good video. Now, just to take myself for an example, the camera that I'm shooting this video on right now is a Canon PowerShot SX230HS. It's a slightly older PowerShot model, maybe like a year, maybe two years old. It records video really good. It records audio very good. Is it the best camera out there? No, but it works. I mean, you can see me just fine. You can hear me just fine. It works for me. Will I eventually upgrade? Of course. This camera only costs me 200, 250 tops. Not all that much in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it's a little above an entry model for a point and shoot camera. For doing these kinds of videos, the talking head, you know, just me and the camera kind of videos, it works. You honestly don't need anything more than that. Now, I know that there are YouTubers out there who use DSLRs and a lot of high-end gear to record just 
basic videos like this. And that's fine too. But my point is you don't necessarily need that to record a video. You just need something that sounds good and looks good. So that way you can present it in such a way that say you have a web series that's gaining in popularity, it's got a good solid fan base, and you want to present it to a bunch of execs who want to either pick up your show and put it on a network, or you know maybe they want to sponsor your show. And you put together like a little demo reel or like a compilation so they can get an idea of who you are and what your product is. Would you feel embarrassed to display your product to a bunch of suits in an, an exec room? Moving on to number three. They're boring as fuck. And I find this a lot with the more established acts, the ones with like the, the forced humor. Let's use the people from that guy with the glasses as an example. The people who aren't Doug or Rob Walker. You know, they are honestly really, really second rate clones of the nostalgia critic and the angry video game nerd. But they appeal to a particular niche. You know, maybe they review stuff that's geared towards women, or maybe they review certain films, you know, from this genre or this set years. Or maybe they review independent films or certain types of games and so on and so forth. But basically, it's the same deal. It's the same shtick. You know, they yell and swear and throw a big fit and, you know, say this movie or this game or whatever sucks and everybody tunes in because it's fun. In my opinion, I honestly don't, don't know how these guys are getting paid at all. And I'm not talking about, you know, maybe a little bit of ad revenue or something like that. I honestly don't know who is watching these people enough to warrant them getting any kind of money whatsoever. A lot of them don't have at least good equipment. A lot of them are running like really shitty webcams with really bad audio, really bad lighting. Their on-screen persona is just boring. Their timing is awful. And it's just an uninteresting, unwatchable video. And it's, it's a chore to watch those kinds of videos. The point is, while you may have interesting things to say and do, if they're not presented in a way that keeps the audience engaged, or at least entertained, they're just gonna click away and move on. There's absolutely no reason that an audience has to be forced to watch your videos. Absolutely none. There are plenty of other YouTubers, plenty of other content creators out there in the web, out there in the world, that make videos that are better quality than yours. They have better equipment than yours. They, they sound better, they present it in a way that is interesting and in a way that people can uh, digest easier. You know, there's always somebody out there who's better than you. In order to keep that person or persons from stealing your audience, you have to constantly improve yourself. You con constantly have to better yourself. You have to make yourself more engaging, more entertaining. Not necessarily in like a sellout kind of way, Keep things interesting, keep things in a very engaging format. Otherwise, people are just gonna click back, go to Google, search for something else. That's just the nature of the game. Full-time content creators should honestly know better. They should honestly know what they're getting them themselves into. Now, if you're just a part-time guy, or you're just doing this for fun, and you know, you go from earning 40 bucks a month to 20 bucks a month, you might get a little bummed, but it's not gonna affect your life. Whereas if you're a full-time content creator, and that's your bread and butter, that's how you make your money, and you get your salary cut in half, you're gonna lose your damn mind. You have bills to pay and stuff like that. But the thing is, you have to know that the internet audience is a very fickle bunch, and they don't have to watch your stuff. They choose to watch your stuff. Your audience isn't given to you, it's earned. And in order to earn it, you have to make content that is interesting, entertaining, and engaging. If you can't deal with the fact that you may have a nice audience in one moment, then if you start making a lot of shit content, they start dispersing and going away, and all of a sudden you're not pulling in the views you used to, and you get your feelings hurt, maybe making full-time content isn't for you. You know, stick to having it as like a part-time thing or just a simple hobby. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Moving on to reason number four. They don't interact with their audience or just interact with them properly. And this is especially noticeable for the um, higher echelon of 
content creators. The ones who have you know, the millions upon millions of views, comments, messages, and things like that. I do understand, you know, it's hard for one person or even two or three people to answer every single message, every single video response. I get that. Especially if, you know, you have a large scale of people. It's hard for one person to answer quite literally a million comments. And that's fine. If that's the case, go through, find a comment that is engaging or something that you can build a conversation off of, and build a conversation off of that person. And then if they respond, you know, just continue to keep the conversation going. Chances are, if you have a lot of people, you know, they're going to want to jump in the conversation too. It's not just you and that person. It's everybody. So you get a good conversation going, start building the comments up, and you get a nice engaged audience. You have to interact with your audience, especially online. This is the whole point of the whole Web 2.0 social media revolution, is the fact that no longer are you just watching a video or reading something, and that, that's it. The video ends, the book ends, that's it. You know, now people can leave comments. They can send email to the creators, the authors. They can even make video responses to said authors and creators. If you don't take advantage of that, and if you don't join in the conversation, people are gonna just think you don't care. They're just gonna think you're gonna be in your nice little high tower of e-fame and e-celebrityism, and the fact that you know they think that you know you're above answering a simple comment. You're above liking something. You know, you're above engaging with your audience. If that's the case, they're gonna see that you don't care about your audience. And if you don't care about your audience, your audience isn't gonna care about you. They're not gonna watch your stuff. They're not going to buy your products. They're just gonna up and leave. Because like I said with point number three, nobody's required to watch your videos. Nobody is forced, or is going to be forced, to buy your products. You have to give them a reason to watch your videos. You have to give them a reason to buy your products. That's just the nature of the game. So, with that said, we move on to the fifth and final point of this video. They rely on only one or a few sources of income. The vast majority of people who do full-time content creation or even part-time cre content creation, if they're just pulling in any sort of money, chances are it's coming from some manner of advertising, whether it's AdSense or some other version of AdSense. That's usually a, a decent way to make money. Now, is it the only way to make money? Of course not. Is it the best way to make money? <laughs> not by a long shot. Not even close. Now, granted, if you have a lot of eyeballs, sure, you can make a decent living off of advertising alone. But there are a myriad, myriad of different ways to make money off of blogs, vlogs, and other content. You can do affiliate, affiliate marketing. You can do um, sponsorships, endorsements. You can um, maybe do guest posts on other people's blogs and vlogs to not only build yourself up, but to get your message out there. There are other income streams out there besides advertising. You know, a lot of people like to put out merchandise, whether that's putting your product in DVD form, maybe you like to write, you know, if you have a good blog, maybe you want to write an actual book, whether it's a hard copy book or maybe a PDF file that you sell for a couple bucks. Maybe you have a t-shirt, some buttons, things of that nature. There's more than one way to earn money. And that honestly is the beauty, the beauty of making content online is the fact that there's more than one way to earn a buck. You know, you're not limited to one income stream. Is one income stream better than the other? Of course, that's just the nature of the beast. But there's no law that says that you can't have more than one. Now, if you're working a nine to five job, you only have one source of income. And that's either from your salary or your wage. You know, you clock in 40 hours a week, you get whatever it is per hour from the amount of hours you worked, that's your paycheck. That is your singular source of income. Now, say you're a waiter or a salesman, 
in addition to your wage, you also get commission. Yeah, you get enough to kind of pay your bills and get by, but if you really work hard enough and you sell enough and you get yourself out there enough, then you start pulling in more money. You start pulling in another source of income. Because in addition to your wage, which is more or less going to stay the same, I mean, yeah, you might get a raise here or there, but it's pretty much going to be the same as it always is. Whereas, say, you make twice the sales that you made last week, you know, obviously your other source of income coming from your commissions is going to be much higher. Even if you have that full-time job, you may have another job. You may have a part-time job. Maybe you're a tutor or a teacher. Maybe you give lessons, mow the lawn for somebody, you know, shovel snow. There you go. There's 10 bucks. There's 15 bucks. When your main income starts to dwindle down and it's like your one and only source of income, you're screwed. Whereas if you have multiple source, sources of income, then you have a little more of a security net. It's less, you know, falling off a bicycle at full speed and a little more like falling off a bicycle at full speed with a nice net to catch you. Sure, you might scrape your knee on the dirt and, you know, have a bruised elbow or something like that, but you're not gonna have to worry about broken bones or your whole face getting smashed in or your skull getting crushed. It lets you down a little more gently. Yeah, your main income source dwindled down and there's nothing left, but that's okay because you have these other sources of income, so you have a nice little safety net to help you out. Now, of course, you can't you know, completely rely on those because it's not enough to support yourself, but it is enough to soften the blow. That's why I recommend having more than one source of income, more than one way to bring in the money. That's all I wanted to say in this video. So yeah, this is the Andy song. Signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And I totally encourage you guys to uh, leave your comments and your thoughts and stuff in the comments. <laughs> if you'd like to send me a personal message, that's fine too. But uh, please try to keep the comments and the messages civil. You know, that, that's all I ask. I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, this will be my last vlog in America. <laughs> How'd you guys go in there for a second, didn't I? Um, yeah, in about an hour and some change, I'll be uh, heading onto a plane bound for Japan. Finally. You know, I, I can't wait. I'm real nervous, real twitchy, and real sleep deprived, but I'm also really excited, so I just wanted to put this video out there just in case, uh, just in case, you know, I'm, I'm busy as soon as I get there or whatever, so that way you guys know that I'll be out in Japan and stuff like that and to expect a lot of videos, but then again, I don't know what the workload's going to be, so we'll see, we'll see. Real excited, but like I said, <laughs> pretty sleep deprived and at this point I just want to get over there you know so yeah that's uh that's all, all I wanted to say for this video so yeah this is Andy Sun signing off for the last time here in America well for a while anyway <laughs> and uh wanted to thank you guys for liking commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time Catch you there, guys. See you in Japan very soon. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And I know it's a little late, but I'm now coming out with my uh, June 2013 update video for June 2013. Ooh. <laughs> so anyway, um, just like with the more recent update videos, I'm going to be breaking this into two separate parts. Uh, the first part, which is what you're watching right now, is going to be dealing with uh, site updates and uh, future videos and whatnot. And then the second part is going to be dealing with uh, some more personal life stuff. So with that said, let's begin. Part one, site updates and upcoming videos and whatnot. So if you guys hadn't heard the news, I'm in Japan now, so that's awesome. I mean, that's that's uh, it's been uh, it's been one of my life goals to get out here, and uh, it's finally come true. So 
Awesome. Check one off the bucket list. The big one, in fact. But now that I'm here, um, I can start making uh, videos about Japan, you know, J-vlogs and stuff like that. Now I'm, I'm an official J-vlogger, so I think I'll take advantage of that and uh, make some videos. So um, I've already made about, uh, I think like eight or nine videos at the time of this recording. So um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, liked those. And uh, as always, if you have uh, um, like ideas for future videos and whatnot, uh, feel free to Give me a little uh, comment love below, or uh, send me a personal message if you'd like. I read all the comments and I read all the personal messages, so yeah, can't wait to hear from you guys. But anyway, um, right now since I just got out here to Japan, I don't have all my stuff out here yet. So, um, I don't have my laptop or any of that other stuff to help me edit videos. So the best I can do is just these uh, little one take wonder uh, mobile videos that you see right now. Uh, but once I get my laptop out, uh, some more videos are going to be coming out. Um, I've already recorded several videos, but they need editing before I put them out there because they're broken up into little pieces and whatnot. So. Um, yeah, those are going to be coming down the pipes. Sorry about the noise. Anyway, those are going to be coming down the pipes uh, fairly soon once I get my laptop or buy a new laptop, depending on uh, how much money I have to work with and uh, stuff like that. So, um, and also, since I'm out here in Japan, I'm looking forward to doing some collaboration videos with uh, other J vloggers and whatnot. And, you know, stuff like that. So, definitely looking forward to uh, meeting up with other J vloggers. So that that should be interesting. Let's see, quick time check. Yeah, um, that's <laughs> not really uh, too much on the uh, like side updates and whatnot because, like I said, I don't have my computer with me, so I can't really get too in depth with uh, blogging and whatnot. So. I, not really much to say as far as, you know, the Antisound.com site updates. Uh, but, like I always say, if you guys want to keep on the up and up with what I'm up to, you can always follow me on Twitter at uh, the Antisan, Or you can uh, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, which also I have to give a special uh, shout out to Molly of the Warmoth Strat channel who uh, gave me a shout out the other day and bumped up my subscriber base to a full 800 plus. Woo! So, thanks Molly for the uh, shout out. And I hope to continue to uh, keep on making videos during my uh, time out here in Japan. And of course after my time out in Japan, I don't think I'll stop anytime soon. So, um, yeah. Um, not really too much else. Um, like I said, once I get my computer, I'll be able to uh, do more and uh, upload uh, to my other various channels. But because I just have my cell phone at the moment, um, there's not really too much I can do beyond my main channel. So um, if you guys are wondering about the whole Andy Japandi channel, um, I'm going to wait until I get my main computer to start uploading uh, the Andy Japandi series of videos of my life out here in Japan. Um, onto that channel as well, and I think it'll be kind of good because I'll be able to build up a good uh, base of videos. So you guys have a little something, something to watch when I finally get my computer and are able to upload stuff to that channel. So um, yeah, not really much uh, as far as uh, upcoming videos and whatnot for this month. Um, like I said, I just got here, so. Um, if you guys want to see uh, certain spots of Japan or want to know certain uh, things about Japan, um, feel free to uh, send me something in the comments below or uh, send me a personal message if you'd like. You know, read all the comments, read all the personal messages. So with that said, um, hope you guys tune in to uh, part two, which is more uh, personal life updates and stuff like that. So yeah, this is the end son. Signing off for now. Taking you guys for tuning in to this video and my other stuff. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Alright, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And welcome to part two of my June 2013 update videos for June 2013.
So um, I decided to move the location of my update video to Starbucks here by uh, Dye Mall in Yokosuka because I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little rainy outside. <laughs> so um, yeah, I decided to uh, move the party inside because uh, it's rainy and windy and all that kind of stuff. So you guys can hear me better, even though it's kind of loud, but that's whatever. Anyway, like I said, uh, part two, which is what you're watching right now, is going to deal with some uh, personal life updates. But uh, part one will deal with um, more like site updates and video updates and things of that nature. So if you just want to, you know, tune into that, uh, be sure to tune into part one. So with that said, let's get on with part two, personal life stuff. So um, if you guys don't know already, I'm in Japan. So um, definitely uh, one of my big personal life goals has been checked off the list. And uh, yeah, I've you know, been really enjoying my time here. And you may notice I have the, uh, the sniffles. Um, not sure if it's allergies or if I actually have something. So I'm pretty sure it's allergies because um, Japan is noted for uh, high pollen content. And I noticed uh, even though it's raining, uh, my allergies have gone down a little bit. So it may actually be allergies rather than an actual cold or flu or whatever some people think it may be. But anyway, yeah, I, I got sick <laughs> a couple days after I got here. So um, for uh, new people coming into Japan, this may happen to you. And it all depends, obviously, on when you come and stuff like that. You know, if you come during the winter time, maybe not so much. But, you know, during spring, summer, uh, fall, stuff like that, it could possibly happen to you. But don't worry, you'll get over it. It's just a, a matter of uh, having your butt body adjust to uh, the new plants and uh, other stuff around here. I mean, the same thing happened to me when I first moved out to San Diego. So um, after maybe like a week or two, I was fine. So yeah, just uh, just another little something, something to get through. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Ever since I got out here, you know, I love Japan. It's great. Um, I haven't really gone out to like Tokyo or anything like that. But um, I definitely do have plans in the works for that. But um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to say like what what else is like major in like my personal life. Um, you know, the biggest change obviously is being in Japan and you know seeing that goal fulfilled is uh, definitely an accomplishment. And uh, I feel great now that I've actually accomplished that goal. But the real task is, you know, where do I go from here? And uh, it's something I've been uh, dealing with ever since I got here. You know, it's, you know, you've been chasing the dream for so long, and then when you finally catch it, you kind of wonder what, where to go from there, you know? But um, I know I definitely want to continue uh, making videos and stuff like that during my stay here. Um, not only to show you guys what Japan is like and stuff like that, but to also um, have some manner of record of uh, you know my time here in Japan so I can uh, look back on it you know years from now and say, you know, hey, I went there. I was there. Here are the videos of me there. You know, it's really cool. And uh, another cool thing is, you know, or maybe uncool thing if you think about it a certain way, is that you know my kids and eventually grandkids and further on down the line may get to see these videos and get to see you know what their dad or their grandpa, or great grandpa, or one of their long lost ancestors did uh, back in the day. I mean, I don't even know if there is going to be a Japan or an America as we know it um, that far off into the future. So I think it'd be kind of cool for them as well. And I know it's kind of a, a little egotistical thinking that, but um, it is a possibility. I mean, you know, we still have, uh, we're still playing like classical music based on uh, old writings and texts from uh, back in the day, so you know, who's to say that a simple little video like this couldn't, you know, stand the test of time in uh, some manner or fashion, you know, it's, you know who knows? <laughs> so, um, anyway, um, yeah, not too much else going on, like I said, you know, I'm just 
you know, getting here, uh, looking for new things to do, um, always exploring and keep my eye out for new places to visit as well as film. And uh, hopefully uh, <clears throat> I want to start uh, connecting with people out here as well. Not only, you know, other foreigners, but, you know, some locals as well. In order to uh, help, you know, bridge relations and, uh, you know, get more friends and stuff like that. Um, but uh, to also help me uh, improve my Jap Japanese. And uh, one of the things I found really, uh, really shocking to me was um, the fact that, you know, there's lots of sailors around here who have been here a lot longer than me. I mean, keep in mind, at the time of this recording, I've only been here for uh, a little over two weeks now. So, um, you know, so just keep that in mind. But, you know, my Japanese is actually better than theirs. You know, I have a better understanding of things than most of them do. There's a couple that are better than me, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I know a bit more than them, and, you know, they tend to, you know, try to speak English to somebody who only knows Japanese, and it's like, are you serious, dude? Like, they're, they don't understand you. <laughs> you know, and then you go and ask, you know, why aren't the signs in English? How come nobody speaks English? It's because you're not in America, bro. This is Japan. English is a secondary language, if that, you know. So it's just something you have to deal with. And, uh, you know, as much of, you know, a Japan enthusiast as I am, you know, there have been moments which have been uh, kind of scary, you know, at least for me, you know, I didn't want to embarrass myself or anything like that. You know, there have been times where I go into like a ramen restaurant or something like that, and uh, there's no like English subtext or anything like that, it's entirely in Japanese, and you're, you know, I'm like, my brain's like, oh crap, I have no safety net, no safety net, <laughs> so uh, that happened to me the other day, I went to a, a ramen shop where there was no English text, so it was, you know, sink or swim, and um, I just kind of let the guy uh, behind me, and you know, go ahead and order his ramen first, and I uh, just kind of looked to see what he ordered, and prayed to God it was miso ramen, and it was, thankfully, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing I gotta work on while I'm here, is not only improve my uh, spoken Japanese, but also learn to read uh, some of the characters, at least, at least some of the common characters. You know, get started on those and then uh, just kind of branch off from there. I mean, I don't need to know every obscure character and whatnot, but uh, just at least get a basic understanding of some of the more common characters and then from there I can kind of branch off and uh, do my own thing. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the plan and uh, like I said, if you guys want to see uh, what's going on with the future site updates and uh, upcoming videos, I've already recorded a boatload of new videos that I have to wait for my laptop to get here to piece together. Uh, so, yeah, I seriously can't wait to uh, show those to you guys. But also, you know, if you guys have suggestions uh, for future videos, please feel free to uh, say something in the comments below or uh, leave me a personal message. You know, like I said in the first video, I read all the comments and I read all the personal messages. You know, it may take me a little bit to respond, but I'll get there eventually. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. So, yeah, this is the end song. Signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs> Alright, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I'm making this uh, special video to commemorate a very special day in my life. That is uh, my three, count them, three years in the Navy as of today, uh, which is uh, June 24th, 2013, at least on my coast. So, um, yeah.
Anyway, um, it's uh, it's been a really fun three years in the Navy so far. You know, I've gone from uh, just boot camp to uh, basic electronics school, ATT, in uh, Great Lakes. Went to Chicago a couple times with the family. It's a lot of fun. Uh, from there, went to San Diego for about two and a half years. Uh, did my schooling there. Uh, went to my first ship out there. Uh, did my first uh, actual deployment with that ship. Came back, decommissioned her. Went back to school. Then came out here to uh, Yokosuka, Japan for uh, my new tour. And uh, yeah, it's, usually this kind of uh, this kind of stuff doesn't really happen in such a short time frame. Time frame. But hey. It could happen to you. <laughs> so, um, I really enjoyed my time in so far, but um, as I said with my uh, two year anniversary video, a year ago today, <laughs> actually, um, I do have plans of uh, getting out of the military, and uh, it's not that I, you know, hate being in or anything like that, you know, it's not that I hate the service or the people in it or anything like that, it's just. Um, I think at this point, especially, you know, since I'm getting closer to 30, um, I should be uh, pursuing other options. And I never really wanted to make the military my career. You know, I figured, you know, just do my time, go back to college, and, you know, go on to other things, which is actually the plan. Um, I am currently going to be uh, pursuing... Uh, different routes for uh, an early outs and uh, the uh, early out programs have definitely changed over the past year so it's going to be a little more difficult for me to get an early out so um, but I am going to try um, unlike most uh, contracts uh, because I went through so much schooling instead of the usual four year deal um, I had to sign for a two year extension so that may uh, may mess up some things uh, hopefully I can uh, get some manner of early out approved so I can uh, go back to the States and go to college full time. Be a bit closer to uh, family and friends in, uh, in Ohio. And uh, I know the Andy from like three or four years ago is going to, you know, <laughs> if, if he would see this video, he would, uh, he'd be losing his mind wondering, you know, why the hell I'm, you know, giving up you know, living in Japan to go back to Ohio for, I mean, that's, that's like, what? <laughs> what? But, you know, as you get older and the more you're apart from your family and your friends from back home, you start to realize that um, they were actually, you know, really important. And it was, don't get me wrong, I, it was important for me to um, separate myself from them for a while because things were getting a little hectic at that time. So it was definitely right for me at that time to uh, leave, join the Navy, go on and do my own thing. But um, after three years now of you know not being home a whole lot, um, I think it's time you know it's time for me to go home. You know not not forever, but you know just for a while. You know I plan on. Um, finding some manner of an early out program so I can uh, go back to Ohio, go back to college full time and uh, either during my time in college or uh, maybe when I get out, you know, when I graduate, um, do some kind of a, like a study abroad program back here to Japan because I really love it out here and uh, that really made my decision very hard to, uh, you know, either stay in for my tour and then, you know, peace out or uh, just, you know, pursue some manner of early out. But um, I'm going to see what options are available to me. If there's no uh, feasible early out program, you know, I have uh, two years left here. So, um, granted, I could extend for another year and finish on my contract. That's, that's also a possibility. But, um, yeah, as much as I like it out here, um, I think that I should really uh, be focusing more on my education, especially at this point in my life, like I said, you know, because I'm getting closer to 30 and, uh, you know, I really got to start thinking about, you know, the long haul and, uh, you know, just job and uh, life beyond the Navy. So I really want to start setting myself up in that manner, too. So um, I know, you know, a lot of people have been uh, watching my uh, Navy related videos and finding them very informative and uh, for those people I definitely thank you for uh, watching and you know thank you for serving it's always 
always a good deal. And, uh, you know, I still stand by the videos. And, you know, I still answer questions and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, like I said, you know, I want to, you know, pursue other options outside the Navy and just kind of start my life, you know, beyond the Navy, you know, start a family and things of that nature. So, um, the current plan, <laughs> and as I've said before in other videos, you know, it's subject to change as other schools and things become available and whatnot, is to uh, find some manner of early out program while I'm here, and depending on uh, how many years it can shave off my contract or whatever, you know, stay for the remainder here, then, you know, once I'm out, uh, go back home and uh, go to uh, the college I'm looking at right now is uh, the University of Cincinnati in Ohio, obviously. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be uh, looking into that college a bit more. Um, just uh, I'm going to be finishing up my uh, my four-year degree in uh, information systems, which is basically like a business meets computers kind of deal. Be doing that. Uh, they also have a, uh, some Japanese courses out there too. So I'm going to be pursuing. Uh, not, I, don't, I think they. I don't think it's technically a minor. I think they call it like a certificate or something like that. But it's it's essentially a minor. But you know, a certificate in you know Japanese language study or whatever it's called. So I'll be just doing that for fun and for my own personal enjoyment. Uh, so that's going to be. Uh, it's going to be the you know, the plan in the future, and then once, you know, like I said, once I graduate, you know, come out here, teach a little English to the kids, um, pursue our other options, you know, just see what happens. You know, like I said, at this point in my life, I want to focus more on my education and uh, just prepare myself for life outside the Navy. So, um, yeah, that is the plan, and uh, sorry if I've rambled on for, what, over seven and a half minutes now? But basically the same stuff, but that's eh, whatever. And I know you guys enjoy these kinds of vlogs every once in a while. So, that said, let's uh, <laughs> close out the video here. So yeah, this is Danny San. Signing off for now. Thanking you guys for uh, joining me these past three years in the Navy. And I hope to uh, finish out my contract with uh, on good terms uh, and part ways amicably and uh, go on to pursue other options. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Alright, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And I just wanted to make a, another quick video before I uh, head out here. Um, I'm going to be pretty busy for a little bit, so I'm going to be taking a uh, very brief sabbatical from YouTube. And, uh, you know, it, it happens from time to time, you know, considering the workload out here. And I know I've been posting videos pretty consistently since I got out, but um, the workload is going to be increasing uh, a whole lot very soon. So, um, because of that, I, you know, I'm going to take a uh, short sabbatical from YouTube. Um, basically, not going to be posting videos for a while. Um, I'm definitely going to be coming back. I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not quitting YouTube or anything like that. It's just uh, I'm going to be taking a uh, short break. Um, and hopefully, when I come back, I'll be able to uh, start making videos again. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. That's just the, uh, the nature of the beast when you come out here to Japan. You know, you got nice times where, you know, there's not a whole lot going on. So you got a little bit of downtime. You can make some videos here and there. Excuse me. And then uh, there's also times where you can barely get any sleep. So, um, yeah, that's basically what's going to be going on. So, um, I'm going to be... Uh, you know, making videos as much as I can, when I can, but uh, I am going to be taking a uh, short break, so um, hopefully uh, you guys tune in when I come back and uh, be able to bring our thing back in style. So yeah, this is Mandy-san, signing off for now, thanking 
you guys for tuning in to my videos and uh, my videos. <laughs> this video and others is what I meant to say. But anyway, um, you know the spiel, you know. I want to thank you guys for uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. And we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Just uh, making a video for the first time in for freaking ever. Um, yeah, so um, right now we're just hanging out uh, in Australia of all places. Uh, we're here for a bit and uh, got a nice hotel room. Um, give you guys a quick little look around at it. You got like all kinds of weird paintings and stuff on the wall and it's really nice and there's the bathroom over there. It's got a painting over there on the actual glass. So that's it's pretty pretty crazy. And uh it's been fun, you know, getting a break from uh the uh the crazy go go life <laughs> being forward deployed and all that. Um yeah, last month was just insane. Um, obviously, I can't talk about it, but uh, the workload was definitely uh, intense. <laughs> there was times where I spent like, you know, 16, 17 hours on the console. And, uh, oof, I thought my eyeballs were going to melt out of my skull. It's crazy. So, um, but yeah, right now we're resting, relaxing in lovely Australia. Um, so, um, yeah, it's good to just chill out. I know this isn't exactly the most exciting vlog, you know, I'm not going around seeing the sights and all that, but, uh, you know, after last month, I just, I just need a break. You need time to recharge the batteries, you know, just, you know, sometimes it's, it's you know, something as simple as just laying here in bed, you know, chilling out, you know, eating a pizza or drinking something, watching some crappy TV. <laughs> Yeah, apparently they have their own version of uh, Jersey Shore here called uh, Geordie Shore, but I think that's the uh, the British version. It's being shown here. I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> so that's uh, that's a thing. But anyway, yeah, I guess just wanted to give you guys an update. I don't know if this is technically my August 2013 update video, but I, I guess it could be. But. It's whatever. But anyway, um, I guess to give you guys a quick little update, uh, blah. <laughs> I can't really think right now. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. But, um, I haven't really recorded much, because like I said, I've been super busy. Um, I have, uh, another video, I have just one video recorded so far, besides this one. Um, this is a Steel Beach picnic we had before we pulled in. Um, Got that. That'll be coming out in a couple of days. Um, yeah, I'm gonna resume making videos when we get, when uh, we pull back into Yokosuka, which will be be a while. Um, and then whenever you know we pull into port, you know, try to make videos and stuff like that of the local surroundings and whatnot. But I don't know that this visit, I was just burn out and tired so I didn't really go out and do much uh, but eh, it's whatever so hopefully uh, hopefully next port visit we'll uh, be able to do a little more maybe <laughs> so yeah once uh, once uh, we pull back into Yokosuka I'm gonna be looking into uh, getting my own place so uh, that'll be fun you know get my own little Japanese house apartment probably a house <laughs> now don't don't get too excited about the term house out there because uh you know it could just be like a two bedroom or two room house you know something small i don't, I don't honestly need a whole lot of room but you know it's whatever we'll we'll see what's available so that's mostly what i'm going to be working on when i get back and then you know just you know find some time to move in as quickly as possible and then you know, once I'm all moved in, I can, you know, start making videos a bit better, you know, and actually have a place to make videos rather than just kind of doing it all on the fly, you know. 
then once I get my place, you know, you know, hopefully get my stuff uh, from America, um, then maybe save up for uh, some new things, you know, new computer, new camera, you know, stuff like that. But that'll be a while because I I still have to get some stuff for the for my house, you know, like a bed and couch and TV and stuff. So so that uh, that might be a while, but it's definitely on the horizon. That's for sure. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on with me. You know, I've been, you know, taking this time, you know, just rest, relax, uh, catch up with uh, friends and family back home, um, catch up on my YouTube subscriptions, which uh, have been seriously backlog backlogged, but uh, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And I also got to work on responding to comments, too, because... Uh, those are long overdue, so if you've left a comment for me recently and I haven't responded, sorry, I'm kind of busy, you know, doing stuff and things. Uh, so, um, hope to get on that soon, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got for now. So, yeah, this is Andy San, signing out for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this uh, kind of home home video and my other stuff. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Coming at you from uh, lovely Sydney, Australia, of all places. Uh, right now I'm just chilling in a hotel room. I'll give out a uh, short uh, room tour uh, in a later video, so uh, definitely stay tuned for that. And I know that my, uh, my more recent videos haven't exactly been super exciting. You know, I've been sitting here again, talking in a bed to a camera. Uh, so I promise I'll be getting more interesting videos out soon. It's just um, I just wanted to kind of sit here and talk with you guys about uh, some things that have been going on in the old uh, nog nog of the Andy San here and uh, stuff like that. So uh, this video might get a little ranty, so uh, beware. <laughs> but I'll try to keep it under ten minutes. I promise. But um, anyway, and I know this uh, this camera angle doesn't exactly. Uh, giving me a very flattering look, you know, it looks like I have a super double chin here, but um, actually I have been losing a lot of weight. Um, I haven't had a good chance to weigh myself because, you know, being on the ship, it rocks, so it's hard to get a, an accurate reading. But um, suffice it to say, my uniforms and my clothes definitely fit better. There's a lot more room in them now. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's just one of those weird things, man. Like, I, I always lose weight when, I'm on, when uh, the ship is underway. But when we hit port, that's when I usually put it back on. But uh, being in Yokosuka, there's a lot less uh, temptation with fast food. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's it's definitely there. You know, there's definitely fast food and junk food and that kind of stuff there. But for some reason or another, it, it doesn't um, affect me as much. You know, it's not as pervasive. And it's usually the more uh, Japanese food that's uh, more dominant than the uh, American style fast food or even the Japanese style fast food. So I'm more drawn to just going to regular Japanese food, which is probably another reason why I haven't uh, gained the weight back. So um, that's good. <laughs> you know, eating ramen and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and uh, when we get back, I'll be doing a lot more running. So, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get myself back into fighting shape for the next PRT. You know, that'll be good. But um, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is uh, just kind of one of the uh, one of the downsides of uh, living a life of travel and living abroad and stuff like that, and that's uh, just general loneliness and quasi depression. Well, not really quasi, but just depression. And you know, sometimes you get these feelings of you know homesickness. You know, you miss your your family and your friends back home and you just you just miss being home and it's you know it's one of those things that I didn't think I would have to deal with because I figured you know I'd, I'd had enough of my <laughs> of, uh, of life back home in Ohio and I 
just didn't want to be there anymore. You know, I was just tired of it. I wanted to go out and explore the world, you know, go beyond Mercer County in Ohio and, you know, see things that I normally wouldn't have seen. And uh, for the past, over the past three years, three plus years, uh, I've definitely done that, you know, being in the Navy. I've gone to several countries. I've even traveled across the, across the U.S. You know, I've gone from Ohio to uh, Chicago, Illinois, and Great Lakes to San Diego. And uh, San Diego was a lot of fun, but I was there for the majority of my career, stationed there. And uh, I think it was just time for me to move on to another place. Although I, I, I do miss it, and I am wearing a California t-shirt right now. So yeah, I, I definitely do miss uh, miss it. But um, yeah, it was just time for me to move on. And I, I always wanted to go to Japan anyway. That was the main reason I joined the Navy was to either go uh, while I was in or have an opportunity when I got out to uh, study abroad, you know, for college or something like that. So um, I definitely do enjoy my time in Japan. Um, but um, it, it is kind of hard, especially being away, like I said, from your friends and family back home. Uh, so you do get, you know, these times where you just you get time to reflect. You get, you know, these feelings of loneliness. And, you know, yeah, you get to go and travel to all these neat places that you never really would have gone to. I mean, <laughs> who would have thought that I'd be here in Sydney, Australia? I mean... <laughs> So, um, but, you know, you do, you do miss your, at least I do. I mean, I know some, some people who have their own families and stuff. Yeah, they miss them, but, you know, they don't really miss their hometown quite as much because they've already started their life with their own family. So, you know, it's, it doesn't really affect them as much, but, you know, being a single guy, you know, it's... It can be hard, you know, and uh, I do want to try to take leave sometime so I can uh, get back to the States and uh, visit everybody, but uh, nothing's guaranteed, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But, um, yeah, I just uh, want to, uh, when I get back to Yokosuka, definitely, uh, definitely socialize more, you know, go out and uh, make some friends, you know, Make some, meet some local friends, you know, and I've, you know, met a lot, met a, a couple uh, YouTubers, actually, a little bit before I left, I met uh, TKO Sam, that was, that was a lot of fun hanging with him, eating some uh, Chicago style pizza, which was really good, by the way, uh, might have to do a video of that sometime, um, didn't record video at that time, but uh, we might have to do a video of that uh, particular uh, pizzeria sometime in the future, so... Stay tuned for that, possibly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think just uh, if I made some more local friends and uh, got together with some YouTubers, but the main problem is with my work schedule. It's really hard for me to uh, go out and really mingle with people, you know, either because, you know, I, I work so late or uh, the curfews kind of get in the way and stuff like that or... You know, being with a Liberty buddy who doesn't really want, who's not really interested in the whole uh, meeting YouTubers kind of thing. You know, it's not really his or her scene. So it'd feel, as I think, it would feel kind of awkward just dragging them into that in that situation. But, um, yeah, I am hoping, uh, speaking of YouTube meetups, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they're, uh, there's one coming up in, I believe, September or something of the like, somewhere in uh, Tokyo. And uh, I am hoping to go to that, uh, pending ship schedule and uh, duty section and all that all that jazz. So I am hoping to go to that and, uh, you know, meet some people. Meet some, uh, you know, some YouTubers face-to-face -face rather than, you know, talking to a camera or sending a comment or something like that. So that would be... It'd be really nice to uh, see other people who do this crazy YouTube thing, stuff like that. Um, but uh, like I said, no guarantees. That's 
The only guarantee of being forward deployed or even being in the Navy in general is that there's no guarantees. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what goes on. But, um, yeah, that's just uh, my little ranty rant of the day. And like I said before, I hope to uh, get more exciting videos out of my travels here in uh, Australia. And, you know, when we get back to Yokosuka, you know, more uh, Japan travel videos. Um, I only really have time during the weekend to really go out in town because by the time I get off work, it's like, you know, I'm really tired and I don't really want to travel that far. And plus it starts to get dark and, you know, it's kind of hard to film on a cell phone in the dark. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> just bear with me there. Uh, but, uh. Anyway, oh, one more thing. Uh, like I said in one of my previous videos, I am planning on getting my own place. So, um, hopefully I'll be able to get that um, shortly after we get back. But um, depending on uh, <laughs> what the ship says and going through the actual process of finding a place, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so, with that said... This is the Andy Son, signing off for now, thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And uh, if you have uh, suggestions for beating homesickness or the like, uh, feel free to leave something in the comments below or uh, send me a personal message, uh, whatever you like. But uh, anyway, I just want to thank you guys for uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and I just wanted to show off a little bit of uh, stuff that I bought today when I was uh, out in Sydney, and uh, this is uh, one of the more notable things I wanted to get, was the uh, Australian leather hat. This is made from a real kangaroo leather too, and it's one of those like squishy foldable hats. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I know that uh, Kurt Bell from the uh, Softy Papa Lyles Brother YouTube Bullet Train and other various channels we'll get a kick out of it because he got one when he was down in australia too so we're vlogging brothers vlogging brothers ah, something like that I don't, I don't freaking know so ooh, close up on the phone <laughs> all right anyway uh next i'll show you the uh the other hat that i got so uh yeah just go in here uh let's see this hat right here let me put it on real quick before I show you guys. Yeah, there's a lovely bathroom. Hopefully I can poop. <laughs> I don't have it upside down. Alright. Drum roll. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those uh, those UGG hats. And uh, I know, I know, UGG, ugly, whatever. But I like it and it'll keep me, uh, keep me warm during the uh, harsh winter months of Japan. So, uh, yeah, uh, it'll definitely be a while before I break this bad boy out, but hey, it's going to keep me warm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I wanted to do for this uh, short video. So, yeah, this is the Andy Song, signing up for now, thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, and a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Alright, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you with a, a little life update vlog. Um, this isn't technically like a September 2013 update video or anything like that. Um, planning on doing a, a more proper one once uh, I get some time and once it's actually September 2013. So, um, it's in the same vein, but it's a little different. It's a life vlog thing, whatever. I don't know. I'm bringing it back, I guess. Whatever. So. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's get things started. So, um, right now I'm currently in Guam, and uh, I'm having a great time at this place called uh, Port Omoka Coffee House. Lovely place, good internet, um, good coffee, and uh, good times. So, yeah, um, definitely recommend you checking it out if you happen to be in Guam for whatever reason. And uh, yeah, so let's begin with. Uh, some life updates and uh, video updates and things like that. So let's start off with the video updates. 
and things of that nature. Um, as you guys know, uh, I recorded a bunch of videos, uh, both while I was in Japan and in Australia, which I recently visited. I went to Melbourne and Sydney. And honestly, in Melbourne, by the time you know we actually pulled into Melbourne, uh, I was pretty burnt out from the uh, rigorous ship schedule. So I didn't really do a whole lot. Honestly, I spent most of my time just sitting in the hotel room. I was just exhausted, both mentally, physically. I just I needed a break, big time. So I pretty much just caught up on stuff on the internet, uh, lounged around, talked with uh, family and friends. Oh, so, yeah, just had to check on my phone. Yeah, and uh, stuff like that. But when we got down to Sydney, um, I actually did more. Now, uh, keep in mind, uh, during the time I visited Australia, it was their winter season. So, Melbourne was pretty cold, so it was another reason I didn't make a whole lot of videos out there. And, uh, Sydney was like San Diego winter, so it was definitely uh, tolerable, a lot more tolerable than Melbourne. So, and I generally went out and did more in Sydney. So, um, recorded a bunch of videos. Now, recorded a bunch of videos at the uh, Sydney Zoo, Sydney Aquarium, uh, Opera House, uh, different places downtown, I think. I, I can't honestly name them all. I think I got, oh yeah, Sydney Tower, that's a big one. Um, bunch of others. I, I can't even name them all of them off the top of my head. Uh, those are the main ones. So, um, but the thing is, uh, I recorded those videos in pieces, uh, so I have to wait until I get my computer back from the States, which is when I get my own place, um, before I can start putting those videos together. So, um, yeah, definitely, once I get my computer and my place and all that stuff lined up, um, expect a lot of uh, good videos to be coming out of my adventures in Sydney, as well as uh, a couple videos that I recorded in Japan, too. Um, I recorded uh, some stuff before we left, um, my little trip to uh, Kamakura Town, really nice place, definitely recommend it. Um, at that time, it was Japan's rainy season, and we did get a chance to, or we did get an opportunity to go see the Great Buddha, but um, I didn't go because it was just too rainy. I just didn't want to deal with it, and my phone battery was running low, and I was running out of space on my uh, SD card for stuff. So, yeah, just a bunch of different circumstances. So, um, I'm hoping to, uh, when we get back, to go and see the Great Buddha and so make a video. Of it. So, uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Um, also made a couple videos in uh, Akihabara. Um, I did a little visit visit to uh, Super Potato. That's gonna be awesome. Let's see, I went to Endoshima uh, Beach earlier this year. Um, that was good. That, that's a shorter video, but it's still a little two or three pieces that I gotta put together. Um, let's see. A couple others. Oh, uh, the big one that I did was uh, a tribute to the late great Roger Swan. His, uh, one of my favorite episodes that he did when he was a uh, student at Keio University in Japan was uh, the Real Life Shenmue episode. And, uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, for that video. I definitely suggest you guys check it out. It's really well done. And, uh, basically, uh, the gist of the video is he goes around uh, the local Yokosuka area looking for like landmarks and stuff like that based on uh, the game Shenmue for the Dreamcast, I believe. I've never played the game, so I, I don't really know too much about it other than stuff I looked up on Wikipedia and whatnot. And I used uh, various reference points in Roger's video to uh, make a tribute video of my own of the local Yokosuka area, as well as uh, the base. You know, I recorded a bunch of videos on base as well. And uh, it was, uh, at the time, it was recorded uh, really close to the five-year anniversary of that video. So you'll hear me saying a lot in the video, you know, oh, it's the five-year anniversary and stuff like that, even though it'll probably probably be released in, like, September or something like that. So it'll be a little after the fact, but at the time, we're on the five-year anniversary mark, so just keep that in mind. Let's see. Currently, I'm checking my phone here. Um, currently uploading 
uh, something that I recorded in Guam well, during my stay here uh, earlier today. And uh, my last video from Sydney is also going to be uploaded uh, later on this week as well. So that's definitely going to be fun. Um, hoping to uh, make a lot more videos once I get back to Japan. Uh, I've been reading guys' comments both on YouTube, personal messages, uh, stuff on Facebook. Uh, I got a couple of Twitter comments. Um, I don't get enough Twitter comments, but I, I do respond to those that uh, do decide to comment or leave replies. I don't know. Same deal. Anyway, um, I'm definitely getting a lot of good ideas for uh, future Japan related videos and stuff like that. And I'm going to try to accommodate as best I can. Uh, depending on ship schedule and uh, budget's not really too much of a concern. You know, I do have a lot of. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm rich or nothing, but you know, I have a good amount of money that I can, you know, put away for uh, certain trips and stuff like that. But uh, for the ones that are a little far out, like if, you know, it's kind of hard for me to go to like Nagoya or, or Okinawa or something like that. So I can't exactly go that far, you know, based on, you know, base rules and stuff like that, so. But for stuff a little bit closer, you know, stuff in, like, Tokyo or whatnot is perfectly fine. And speaking of which, um, there's going to be a little YouTube get-together that, uh, Molly of the Warm Strat channel, I believe he's putting it together, along with a couple other, uh, J-vloggers, and, uh, Depending on ship schedule and uh, duty section rotation, I'm not quite sure how it's going to be when we get back, you know, but I am hoping to uh, attend that. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun actually meeting uh, some people face to face, you know, a lot of the bloggers and the J bloggers and stuff that, you know, I've watched over the past couple of years, both when I was in America and even while I was in Japan as well, just getting inspiration from them. Not only in, you know, life, life in Japan stuff, but just life in general, you know? Just, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's just my thing, so it sounds a little creepy stalker-ish, but it's whatever. So, um, anyway, yeah, I hope to uh, meet some of those guys in person. Um, let's see, I'll put a link to the event also down below, so you guys can check that out. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, if you're in the local Tokyo area, um, hope to see you guys there as well. So, yeah. Um, that's what's going on as far as like video uploading schedule and a little bit of personal stuff like that. But um, for some personal stuff, um, the main thing I'm going to be focusing on is uh, when we get back is getting my own place. A little apartment and stuff out in local coast area, someplace fairly close to base, so I don't have to walk that far um, to work every day. So, um, and I'm hoping to bring you guys more details as they arrive. And, uh, keep you guys posted as best I can. And with that said, this is Danny Sanson, signing off for now, from Guam. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching this video and my other stuff, and for all the personal messages, comments, and everything throughout these couple months while I was underway. You know, it's, it's really, it really means a lot to me, you know, all the comments and stuff like that. It really helps me keep going and just kind of encourages me to make more videos and make different kinds of videos. And, uh, I also want to thank you guys for uh, liking, commenting, like I said earlier, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you. Next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Alright, never recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you with the uh, September 2013 update video for September 2013. <laughs> Ooh. So, anyway, um, if you guys have been uh, following me on Twitter, you know that I'm finally back in uh, Yokosuka, Japan. So, um, really excited to be back. Uh, it's been a long two months uh, being underway, but. Um, Definitely looking forward to uh, just relaxing and uh, just recuperating from the uh, rigorous uh, schedule these past couple months and uh, stuff like that. So, that said, let's uh, begin with some updates. Uh, starting with uh, YouTube updates. Um, 
Now that I'm back in Japan, I definitely uh, plan on making more uh, of my Andy Japandi series of videos where I go around Japan and show off different locales or uh, talk about um, various uh, little Japanisms and uh, cultural differences and stuff like that. Uh, so I definitely look forward to more of those videos coming down the pipes. And uh, also, there's going to be a, uh, a YouTube uh, vlogger meetup this coming Saturday. And I'll put uh, details and stuff in the description below for you guys to check out. If you happen to be in the Tokyo area, I definitely recommend you uh, coming to the party. But as for me, unfortunately, I have duty that day, so I won't be able to come. But um, I definitely send my regards to everyone at the party. Um, Victor from the Give Me a Break Man, Break Man channel. Uh, Hiko Simon. I believe uh, Steve from the uh, Chi Ranger channel is going to be there. Uh, Molly and Tomoko are going to be there from the Warm Strat channel and uh, her own channel. <laughs> I can't remember the full name of it off the top of my head. And uh, lots of other uh, vloggers are going to be out there. So. It uh, doesn't matter if you're a vlogger or a viewer, uh, I definitely recommend uh, going there and uh, chilling <laughs> and making some videos and chatting it up and stuff like that. Sadly, I won't be able to attend, but I do hope to uh, make uh, future appearances at uh, upcoming YouTube gatherings. So if there happens to be another one in the future that uh, hopefully I can make, um, I'll try to do it. I'll do my best. I promise. So, yeah. Uh, with that said, let's get on to uh, some more personal life updates and things of that nature. Um, so now that I'm back in Japan, I'm going to be starting up my uh, uh, house hunting uh, venture. So I'm going to be looking for a place to live, you know, off base, off the ship. <laughs> so um, definitely going to uh, be working really hard at that so I can get uh, all my stuff from America moved over here as well. So I can start making uh, edited videos again, too. Um, the best I can do right now, since I don't have an actual computer uh, with me to put together videos, I can only do stuff from either my tablet, which is what I'm recording on right now, or my cell phone. And they're uh, basically like one take wonders, you know, so <laughs> no cuts or anything like that. Um, but I do want to put, put together some uh, edited, vid edited videos. Um, I did mention a couple uh, upcoming projects in uh, one of my earlier videos, the uh, Of Life in Guam video, a couple vlogs ago. Uh, so if you guys watch that video, you'll know what's going to be coming down the pipes. And if you haven't, uh, just a quick recap. Um, there's going to be some uh, Japan videos that are going to be coming out. Lots of Japan videos. Um, some videos of when I was in uh, Sydney, Australia, visiting the uh, Sydney Zoo and Aquarium and things like that. Uh, the Opera House as well. And uh, a couple others that uh, I can't I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, they're definitely going to be in the works once I get uh, get moved in and get all my stuff back from America and get my computer back and stuff like that. So uh, that stuff in the works. And uh, yeah, uh, I always put this out, but I definitely want to uh, make mention of the fact that if you guys want to uh, see a particular part of Japan uh, within reason, I mean I can't. You know, go out to Hokkaido or anything like that at a moment's notice. You know, just someplace within the Tokyo area. Uh, definitely uh, hit me up in the comments below or uh, send me a personal message. And I'll try to accommodate as best I can. And even if it's not going to a particular area, you know, if you want to see or you want to know how to do something in Japan, I mean, I'm. <laughs> I'm no expert and I haven't really been here that long to quantify myself as a Japan expert, but I'll definitely do my best to accommodate uh, requests and stuff like that. So if you, if you have something you want to see, uh, feel free to let me know. And with that said, this is the Andy Song. That's how I am for now. Thank you guys right there <laughs> for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you with a uh, fairly random vlog today. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, kick things off by saying no, I'm not wearing the same shirt as I was in the previous vlog. This is my San Diego shirt.
The other one was a Hard Rock Cafe shirt I got in Guam. So, anyway, random vlog is random. So, um, I'm going to kick things off by uh, asking you guys, uh, specifically you guys out in Japan, a question. And that is, um, how do you guys uh, meet people out here in Japan? I realize that there are certain uh, taboos and stuff like that about how you approach people and stuff like that. It's not like it is back in the States where you can just walk up to somebody and be like, hey. <laughs> I realize that they're fairly self-conscious about their English speaking abilities and I'm kind of self-conscious about my Japanese speaking abilities. So um, yeah, I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say or giving me some tips and stuff in the comments below or uh, in a personal message if you feel like. So um, yeah, <laughs> definitely need some help. I'd like to meet some people. Anyway, um, next topic is... Uh, Oh, sorry about the noise. But anyway, the next topic is um, an article I recently read by uh, Steve Pavlina called uh, Embracing the New. And uh, in the article, he talks about, you guessed it, Embracing the New. And uh, I'm going to put a link to it in the description below if you guys want to check it out as well. Um, basically, what I'm going to be doing to just kind of liven things up and uh, embrace the new and all that is uh, just simply do little things that kind of, you know, add up to uh, big changes over time. And uh, one of the things we're going to be doing, uh, especially this week, is uh, just simply eating at a new place every day, places I don't normally go to. And I'm going to try to stay away from the, uh, the American-style restaurants, go for more, more on the Japanese side of things, you know, just so I can try out some new things and just kind of break out of the box, so to speak. And I uh, started it off today, and uh, so far it's been going pretty good. So I'll keep you, I'll keep you guys uh, updated, you know, as things go along with that. And uh, I was also walking around different parts of uh, a local neighborhood out here in Yokosuka. And uh, it's, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was real refreshing. You know, I went to different places that I never explored before. And uh, I didn't really get anything on video just because um, it was really rainy. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe next time I'll get some video of the local area and, I don't know, make some Andy Japandi videos or something like that. So, yeah, there's that. And uh, to close off the, uh, the video here, we're going to be uh, dedicating a portion of this to uh, remembering 9-11, uh, or uh, September 11th. And uh, it's been 12 years since 9-11 uh, happened, and uh, I'll never forget back in, uh, uh, I, was a, I was a sophomore in a high school, in a study hall, and I remember all the TVs were on, and everybody was just looking and didn't really know what to, know what to do or know what to think, and when school let out that day, um, everybody was at the gas stations because they thought that we were going to get our oil supply cut off in the Middle East, so everybody was getting as much gas as they possibly could, you know, <laughs> to, uh, they're just stocking up, basically. So it, it was really crazy and stuff, and, you know, 12 years later, we'll, we'll still remember those who uh, lost their lives and those who have dedicated their lives to uh, making uh, a better America and such. So, maybe gone, but you certainly not forgot. Um, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. So yeah, this is the Andy Song. Signing up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Alright, everyone recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. And uh, sorry I haven't been making uh, videos lately. I've been really busy both uh, with work and also uh, with uh, house hunting, which uh, give you guys a quick update on that. Uh, it's going pretty well. Uh, today I went and saw two separate places. Uh, one was a big house and the other was a pretty big, nice apartment. And uh, I'm really torn between the two places because they both have their own uh, advantages and disadvantages and things I like and dislike about them. So we'll kind of go over uh, the pros and cons of each one. So we'll start off with the house. Um, the house is a very nice uh, four bedroom house and it's really big. Even 
you know, it's fairly average size by American house standards, you know, but it's it's really big, especially uh, for a single guy like myself. So um, I really liked it. It's a nice, quiet neighborhood, like three minutes from the train station. Like you just <laughs> go down the street, turn left, and bam, there's a train station. <laughs> it's that close, and I really like that. Um, but some of the disadvantages are that uh, just because it'll be pretty much just me living there, um, I might get a roommate, you know, just because. But uh, for the most part, it'll be just me. Um, it's a very big place, and it'll take a lot of time to, you know, clean, you know, maintain the yard and all the other stuff. So it'll, you know, take some time. It's not like an apartment where you can just pretty much do whatever. I guess, um, but um, anyway, um, the house was nice, but like I said, it's a lot of room, and there, it, it, it's in a small community, so there's not a lot of uh, places that are fairly close by, except for like maybe a grocery store or something like that, which is nice, but I'll talk about that more when we talk about the apartment. Uh, now, the apartment. The apartment really surprised me, actually. Um, I was actually geared more towards the house, and, you know, I figured the apartment was just going to be an afterthought. I was just going to be like, okay, I'll look at the apartment just to be nice. You know, she was offering me, you know, to look at it anyway, so I figured, eh, whatever. But the apartment really, uh, really surprised me. It's, it's oceanfront property. Yeah. So it's got a nice view of the ocean. And, uh... It's only three bedrooms, uh, but it's still pretty spacious, but everything is um, pretty well contained. It's only one floor as opposed to two with the house. Um, so um, it'll be a lot easier to clean. Um, and with two extra rooms, um, I'll have a spare bedroom for like guests or people who want to crash in my pad or whatever. So that's nice. Um, Everything is pretty well laid out, and I got a really nice balcony. The uh, the balcony at the house was, was okay, but it's you know it's not it's nothing compared to the one at the apartment. The apartment one is very nice, very long too. It pretty much wrapped around the entire uh, my apartment, pretty much just like wrapped around the whole thing. So yeah, it's not just a standard like balcony. It's it's really nice. Um, like I said, oceanfront, and also it's it's only uh, like 10 minutes or so away from the nearest train station, and it's actually in between two separate train stations, so it's about 10 minutes or so from each, and it's got lots of grocery stores, lots of uh, like department stores and stuff like that really close by. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking more towards getting the apartment as opposed to getting the house, but then again, the house is really nice too, but um, the apartment just seems overall a lot more convenient. It's in a, a more convenient spot. Uh, the view is really nice, and I was <laughs> I was honestly surprised by it. So I know I was gonna make this kind of a what do you think I should get video, but just judging from all the advantages and disadvantages of each place. I think I'm going to be going more towards the direction of the apartment, which is still in a fairly, fairly quiet neighborhood, and you know I'll have to keep the noise down a little bit, but that's not so not so difficult to do. You know, get some headphones or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, so next week I'm going to be talking with the realtor about uh, setting it up so I can start start renting and start okay. filing in the paperwork because I heard that you, you know the sooner I get it in and get it processed in my go. ship you know the faster I'll be able to move in and you know I'll, I hope to move in within this month that that's my goal is to move in within either you know by the end of September or very early October that's that's my goal so the sooner I can get the paperwork in filed through send it back out to her you know the more I can or the faster I can move into my new place and uh, like I said it's it's really nice so um, I really should have recorded some videos of the different places I, I didn't really think of that um, but yeah um, hope to show you guys around the uh, the new place soon and I'll keep you guys updated on uh, what's gonna be going on with uh, 
my new place, and uh, other things. Um, that's pretty much uh, the big thing that's been going on lately, um, personal-wise. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope to check in more often. I've just been kind of busy this week, like I said. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. So, yeah. This is the Andy Son. Sign out for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, see you next time. <laughs> Get you there, guys. Bye. Hey, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys about something. Um, I'm going to be making an upcoming video, which is basically like a self-interview, get-to-know-me-better kind of video. So, um, I wanted to ask, uh, from you guys, uh, what, uh, questions you would like me to answer. You know, just stuff about myself, you know, why'd you come to Japan, how'd you become interested in Japan, um, what do you like to do, where are you from, I don't know, stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to be making that video fairly soon, so I uh, look forward to hearing uh, your questions in either the comments below or uh, in a personal message if you feel like. So, yeah, that's going to be uh, an upcoming video coming down the pipes for you. So, yeah, this is the Andy Son. Signing out for now. Thanking you guys up there <laughs> for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing. Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you there, guys. Look forward to hearing your questions. Bye. Alright, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. And as promised, um, I am doing a, uh, an Ask Me Anything uh, video in an effort to uh, help you guys uh, get to know me better. So, um, in just the uh, short amount of time the video has been up, I've already got a good uh, smattering of questions here that I'm going to... Uh, start answering so that way you guys can uh, know me a little better so uh, let's get things started off <clears throat> uh, the first one is uh, what happened to your anime series I was looking forward to that um, I'm assuming that he's talking about like my anime reviews and stuff like that um, just do, do the workload that I have and stuff like that it's just it kinda got ate up due to time and stuff like that um, but uh, first impact to anime and all that kind of stuff, um, once I get my computer and get my own place, I'll be able to uh, start work on those. So those will be coming out um, as soon as I can get them out. I, <laughs> I don't have a set release date for them or anything like that. So I'll try to work on them as fast as I can and as soon as I can. So um, there you go. <laughs> Let's see. I'd be interested in knowing, why did you join the Navy? Well, here's like a, a series of questions. So first one, uh, why did I join was, uh, to make a long story short, um, the reason I joined was that way I could go back to college, basically, and to see the world and to uh, come out here to Japan, <laughs> either while I was in or, you know, managed to get out, um, go through it via college. But fortunately for me, I managed to uh, make it out here before I uh, got out, so awesome. Uh, let's see. What makes working in the Navy a positive and negative job? Um, people. Really, that's <laughs> that's about the uh, the end-all, be-all answer. You know, uh, the people you work with can either make it uh, an okay place to work, or it can make it a, a really shitty place to work. So, if you got a good crew, then you know at least you know if you got a, a really sucky task or something ahead of you, at least you'll be able to get through it without too many headaches. But if your crew's not so good, then it's uh, it's going to be a long day. So, let's see. Next question. What do you do in your free time aside from YouTube? Um, <laughs> this is going to sound really sad. I don't, I don't really do too much, actually. Um, since I don't have my own place, I don't really have a lot of uh, hobbies or anything that I can do without my own place. So, um... I, I do enjoy playing guitar, but I don't have a guitar out here, and uh, I don't have my own place to store said guitar, because there's not a whole lot of room on the ships that I can use. So, um, yeah, I do enjoy playing guitar, and uh, just going out and exploring, you know, getting out of off the ship, you know, off base as much as I can, and uh, 
stuff like that. Let's see. Um, let's see, you much of a drinker? Um, not really. I mean, I, I'm not against it. I just don't go out and drink, you know, all that much. So, um, but I'm definitely not one to deny a, a good beer or something like that. Let's see. Best place you've had, uh, or best port visit you've had. Um, that's hard to say. Um, just because usually, you know, just about any port I go to is a good port as long as I can leave the ship. <laughs> so as long as I can leave the ship and have a good time, it's a good port. But if you really want a, a more definitive answer, I'd have to say, um... It's a toss-up between uh, Sydney, Australia, and Columbia. Now, even though in Columbia we didn't really do a whole lot, um, we we went through this awesome waterfall tour that was just amazing. And I got to hang out, hang out with my division, and it was a good time. And in Sydney, well, <laughs> there was definitely no shortage of things to do out there. There's a lot, a lot of sightseeing. Just simply walking around. I mean, you didn't even have to spend a whole lot of money to really do a lot. But I do have to say, Australia is very expensive. I mean, you guys think that Japan is expensive. No. <laughs> no, you, Japan has nothing on Australia. Australia is, like, probably the most expensive place I've been to. Like, three bucks for a can of Coke. You serious? No. Well, it, it was a nice place. I do have to say. But <laughs> very expensive. Very expensive. Uh, let's see. Uh, the worst, scariest port you've ever visited. Um, I never really had any uh, scary ports. Um, probably uh, the closest one um, initially was Columbia, just because of the uh, the kind of the, the stereotype of Columbia being this major like <laughs> like everybody's a drug dealer and. You know, like like basically a country full of like mob bosses killing everybody, but it, it was not like that at all. At least in the area we were in. So initially, I was kind of scared going out to Columbia, but I mean, once I left the boat, it was nice. Um, let's see. Worst port. Uh, it's hard to say, really, because like I said, if I get a chance to get off the off the boat and just relax, it's a good port. So. I'm, I'm not. I'm not hard to please. Let's see, ever been harassed by locals for being in the service? Um, there was a couple times in San Diego I got harassed, uh, but but it wasn't it wasn't too bad. It was mostly just you know people see the short haircut and you know they start spitting you know lingo and stuff like that. And it was it was just more annoying rather than you know like I, I didn't get beat up or anything like that over it. So. It was just, you know, some drunk dudes on the bus, so... No big deal. Uh, let's see. Favorite food and favorite Japanese food. So I'm assuming favorite food being, like, favorite, like, American food, I guess. Um, truth be told, I th if, if I really had to pick my favorite food, it would have to be just uh, jambalaya rice mix. From, like, Zatarain's or something like that. It's, like... I always get it, it's like chicken jambalaya. I know traditional jambalaya is like shrimp and stuff like that, but I usually like put chicken or like a spicy sausage or something like that in it. And uh, get that like that mix, that uh, jambalaya mix. Oh man, oh so good, so good. But it, it, it's hard to find out here. And even back in San Diego, it's really hard to find. So um, let's see if I can hit that up soon. And also, uh, my mom's vegetable soup. She makes a really awesome vegetable soup that I've been craving for so long. Hopefully, when I get my, when I get my own place, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit her up for the recipe and see if I can recreate it. And let's see, favorite Japanese food. Um, I've been really tiptoeing around uh, Japanese food just because um, a lot of it's very seafood based. And <laughs> truth be told, I'm not really into the whole seafood side of the uh, of the dinner, dinner table so um, I've been really tiptoeing around it but there are some uh, foods that I do enjoy uh, mostly ramen and I'm not talking about like the insta they're like the cup noodle ramen which is good too but um, like the actual like you go to a, a restaurant and they make ramen 
and it's awesome. And I'll definitely cover it in future videos, so don't worry. Let's see, next, next, next. I know you have an interest in Japan, so if you had to learn a language aside from Japanese, uh, what would it be? Um, probably, uh, like, Korean. Uh, maybe brush up on some more Spanish if I was still living in San Diego. I'd probably be more inclined to brush up on Spanish a bit more. But during my six-month deployment down in Central America, I went from, my Spanish went from being, you know, muy poquito to just poquito. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so probably like Korean and Spanish. And uh, I heard that if you know Japanese, Korean's not as hard. It's just a little different. So that will definitely help. Let's see. What's your favorite city in the U.S. you've been to? Um, it's kind of a toss-up between San Diego and Chicago. I mean, Chicago is nice. Had a lot of really great food. The Chicago-style pizza is amazing. Um, and just the vast architecture out there is just incredible. But I've lived in San Diego for a long time, and there's a, definitely a lot to do. There's no, no shortage of things to do out there. So I'm, you know, <laughs> really torn between those two. Um, have you ever had a chance to do any exercises with the Canadian Navy, and if so, your impressions? Um, we haven't had any interactions with the Canadian Navy as of yet. Um, we did uh, do some stuff with the Australian Navy a couple months ago, and I never had any personal interactions with them, so <laughs> I can't really say. Um, let's see. And the last question is, uh, what are your work hours like? And uh, it varies depending on uh, what needs to get done for the day, but, you know, typically um, probably from, like, 8 to 10 hours a day usually maybe 12 if it's uh if we really got to get stuff done uh but usually around 8 to 10 that's the norm when we're in port when we're underway we're pretty much working like all the time if you're not working you're on watch if you're not on watch and you're not working you're pretty much sleeping or doing maintenance or something you're pretty much on the clock 24 7 but in port 8 to 10 hours usually so let's see, that is the last question. So uh, hopefully this video is uh, educational and it's a bit long, of like 11 plus minutes. And I uh, really hope that uh, you guys got to know me a little better. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any more questions at all, feel free to ask in either the comments below or uh, in a personal message. Like I said, I read all the comments and I read all the personal messages. So yeah, this is the Andy Son. Signing off for now. Thinking you guys for tuning in to this video and others and i also want to thank you guys for liking commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys thanks for the questions bye all right and we're recording hey gang andy here welcoming you to my november 2013 update video for november 2013 Ooh. So anyway, yeah, it's definitely been a while since I've done one of these uh, update video thingamabobs, uh, but I want to get right into it. Uh, lots been going on, and I really haven't had a whole lot of free time to be uh, making videos. So with that said, here we go. Light. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, first thing on the list is new videos. I uh, realize, realize I haven't been posting too much lately, but... Um, Fear not, for that's going to change. Um, I have videos scheduled for release, uh, one video a day for the next two weeks, so definitely look forward to that on my channel. Um, speaking of which, um, YouTube did, did some really funny things with the comments and stuff, so um, apologies if I haven't gotten around to answering your comments or if there's been some delays. It's just YouTube did some funny things, and you know I've been busy with work, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to get in front of the computer and answer comments and emails and whatnot. But um, yeah, I, I got some time etched away for the past couple days, and I managed to answer all the comments and stuff that have been in my videos thus far. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Um, oh yeah, in the more personal news, um, give you guys an update on my apartment. Um, when I left... 
I had just gotten the advance for my apartment to move in. You know, I had everything all taken care of. I had approval for my chain of command. I got, you know, everything set up for the contract signing. But the day that I had set up for my contract signing, um, I had, didn't have the advance yet. But, you know, I didn't actually get the advance until the day I left. So I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so I couldn't really do anything about it. Um, but I'm hoping to, when we uh, pull back in, to um, actually get, every, get a contract signing set up so I can move in and have my place uh, before the holidays and before my birthday, hopefully. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that. Um, and speaking of holidays, actually, um, I did get approval from my chain of command, so it's official now. Um, I will be coming home to Ohio for the holidays for uh, the first part of holiday stand down, so I'll be there for Christmas. Um, be there for two weeks, get a chance to catch up with family and friends, see my puppies, miss ya. And uh, yeah, hopefully do some collabs with the Talking Vidalkin and just catching up with everybody. It's It's been a long time since I've been home. Um, last time I actually saw anybody from home uh, was when my mom and my little brother came out for uh, Mother's Day right before I left San Diego. So it's, it's definitely been a while since I've seen everybody. And uh, it's going to be a little different this time around simply because um, uh, from the last time that I was there, uh, my folks moved. So it's not so much, you know, coming home to the house where I grew up. It's more like visiting my folks. So I'm still going to enjoy my time there, but it's, it's going to be a slightly different vibe. So... There's that. Um, I already mentioned the move-in thing. Um, yeah, and speaking of which, once I move in, um, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> if I can talk, um, hopefully I can start work on uh, uh, my back catalog of videos that I've I made, and they go all the way back to uh, the fourth season of First Impact Anime, uh, which I was in the middle of working on right before I moved from San Diego out to Japan. So I <laughs> didn't get a whole lot of time to work on them. And coming out here, or er, to Japan, I'm, I'm in Hong Kong right now, by the way. Uh, excuse me. You know, it was, took a lot of my time. So I didn't really get a whole lot to uh, work on those videos. Um, but they are going to be coming out. So I have a whole back catalog of stuff that's going to be coming out, ranging from, like I said, Season 4, First Impact Anime, all the way to when I first got to Japan... Uh, through Singapore, basically. Um, so I, you know, I made a lot of great videos. Um, I really can't wait to get those videos out and show you guys because there's going to be a lot of great stuff, and I, I might have to cut some things just because it's too long. But you know, we'll see what happens when I get down to editing. So I definitely hope you guys uh, like like the uh, final product. Uh, let's see what else. Um, new gear, new gear. I always, I always talk about new gear, new gear. Getting like a new laptop, new camera, new s stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping this year, if uh, plane tickets and everything aren't too expensive, to get myself a new camera. And I already made a video a while back, you know, talking about what camera should I buy. And uh, it was mostly for the, you know, the point and shoots. But I really want to focus more on the camcorder side of things, just because, you know, point and shoots are good for what they do, but, you know, they're not really designed to make videos. They just can make videos. So, I'm not saying they're bad, it's just camcorders are a little more, more of a natural uh, way to make videos. You know, they're, you know, just little ergonomics and things. But anyway, um... I'm looking into the Sony Handycam line of camcorders. Um, there's one that has this thing called the Balanced Optical Steady Shot, where um, if you're familiar with how like uh, image stabilization everything works, um, for like this cell phone, for instance, it has you know some image image stabilization, but it kind of makes makes you look like jelly if you shake it a whole bunch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so um, there's a mechan there's a like a computerized stabilization which kind of keeps everything in check and there's the balanced steady shot which actually moves the whole aperture around so it kind of looks like a little eyeball if you look at it it's really cool 
and it keeps things extremely steady. You know, I've seen a lot of footage where you don't really see wobble too much unless you're actively looking for it and if the camera's like zoomed in all the way. So, you know, I don't I don't plan on using the zoom too much, but I like to have it have it there just in case I need it for something. Usually concerts or outside footage that's too far away and uh stuff like that. And plus, it also has the ability for screw-in lenses. And earlier I was toying with the idea of getting a GoPro, but I think realistically, if I just got one of the screw-on like fisheye lenses, that will kind of suit my purposes for the GoPro, because I mostly wanted the GoPro just for the wide-angle lens, so it, you know, when I do these kind of videos, it's less, you know, all my face all the time and a little more out here, but you know, out here I feel like I can, I can hear myself the best. You know, if I'm all the way out here, it's kind of hard to, you know, do the angle right. And plus I feel like I can't really hear myself too well. So, that's just me. Just one of my little isms. But, anyway, there's that going to be coming down the pipes as well as a new laptop. Eventually. Because <laughs> my, uh, my Alienware has seen better days. You know, the monitor's broken. I have to plug in an external monitor. <clears throat> Excuse me to uh, make it work nowadays and plus I just need a, a new system a new a new rig <laughs> so uh, but moving in is gonna be really expensive so that may have to wait um, I gotta get like new TV new couch new dresser new stuff <laughs> so um, it's definitely gonna be taking priority over little gadgets and stuff like that uh, but I am hoping to get it within the next couple months, so uh, that's going to be that's going to be uh, arriving shortly. <laughs> I don't want to say coming out of the pipes too much. You know, I've noticed I've said that a bit much, but um, yeah, um, that's basically the gist of what's going on. Uh, I have been reading your comments a lot about um, what you guys want to see in future videos when I get back to Japan, and uh, most of the videos have you know most of the. Uh, uh, the comments when I ask, you know, what video do you guys want to see? You know, do you want to see like a specific landmark, a uh, different place in Japan? You know, what do you want to see? Because I feel that there's a lot of Japan related material on YouTube. And, you know, I don't want my videos just to become another, and just another redundant channel of, oh, here's me in this place where it has like 10,000 other videos of other guys in the same place doing the same thing. Now granted, you know, there's landmarks and stuff like that where it's unavoidable and I actually want to go to those. But I want to try to make things a little more unique or at least approach the same landmarks and the same places from a unique perspective. So, you know, there's that. But most of the responses I've been getting has just been like neighborhood tours and just me being in Japan. You know, stuff like that. Um, and I can't really explain too much of the Japanese culture like I'm familiar with it, you know, from from reading blogs and watching videos and stuff like that, but keep in mind, I just moved there like May of 2013, the end of May of 2013, and I haven't really spent too much time there because we've been underway and busy on the ship and stuff like that, so I haven't really spent a lot of time actually in Japan doing Japan stuff. So I'm not, you know, super familiar with everything, you know, like the history behind stuff and things like that. So um, for that kind of stuff, there's other channels out there. Um, I recommend like the Softy Papa channel, Warmoth Strat channel, uh, Mexican Samurai channel for, you know, the guys that have been in Japan for a while and know what's up. <laughs> so there's that. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, that's... All I got to say for now, you know, that's about it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little little rambly today, but uh, this video has been brought to you by Kieran Beer. Drink Kieran Beer. Mm. Oh, I forgot to cheers. Bink. All right, so enough drunk and fun. So, yeah, this is the Andy song. Sign out for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to my video, as always. And I want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.
All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I know it's a little late, but it's time for our December 2013 update video for December 2013. Ooh. So yeah, like I said, sorry for being a little late to the party, but uh, I've been very busy lately. Um, excuse me. I just got back from being underway a couple weeks ago. Um, been super busy right after getting back. It's pretty much just been uh, getting stuff ready for a holiday stand down, as well as getting my new Japanese apartment. Um, I got that one about a week ago. I've been busy moving into that, getting everything all set up there, getting my boxes, and stuff like that. So it's been pretty busy in my personal life, so that's why it's been difficult to uh, make videos and whatnot. And plus, I don't have a Wi-Fi set up there, so I can't upload stuff through uh, the phone networks in Japan. They, they won't let me. <laughs> Only Wi-Fi, so yeah. Um, Anyway, like I said, I got my new Japanese apartment last week, and I recorded uh, two uh, tour videos. Uh, one with this camera, which is my new baby, my, my uh, Sony CX430V, and I've recorded another one with my old uh, standby, the Canon SX230HS. So just to give you a little compare and contrast as far as like the stabilization features and maybe focus features and things of that sort. So. Those will be coming down the pipe soon, I just have to get around to editing them, and like I said, now that I have my own apartment and my computer and all that stuff back, um, once I get back to Japan, I'll uh, start working on those videos. But right now, I'm currently uh, back home in Ohio at my uh, folks' new place, um, not too far from where I used to live, so um, it wasn't quite like, you know, just visiting the folks like I thought it was going to be. It's actually very reminiscent of uh, my uh, old house, so... Yeah, things are in different spots, but, you know, I still feel pretty welcome here, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, like I said, I'm back in Ohio, currently on Christmas leave, day four. Um, just been busy, uh, you know, not getting a haircut. <laughs> a little on set right now, but I don't care. Um, yeah, just uh, busy getting t getting uh, together with uh, old friends and stuff like that. Just hung out with uh, my old friends from way back in the day. Um seeing what he's all up to and stuff like that. i um, hoping to get together with uh, the Talking Dolkin and uh, some other friends as well before uh, I head back. Um, but it's a lot different now compared to back in the day. I mean, back in the day, like, you know, not necessarily like way back in the day, but, you know, I'll say like college, high school during that time. Uh, it was a lot easier to uh, get together with friends just because, you know, they really didn't have jobs or jobs that really took a lot of time off their hands but now it's like well I gotta run it by work to see if you know we can hang out or I gotta run it by the wife or you know make sure the kids asleep and, you know crap like that so I guess it's just another part of uh, getting older right so yeah but you know we, we make do we work it out so that's good um, in uh, YouTube news I recently found some videos from uh, way back in the day in the archives um, I've been wanting to upload these videos for a while, but they just kind of got lost in the shuffle. So I got six videos that are already uploaded, as well as uh, some newer videos. Um, I recorded one uh, during Thanksgiving while we were still underway. So I just recorded a little look around of the uh, of the uh, mess line. And uh, during that time, we had uh, uh, the officers serving. So we had the uh, the CEO serving like the front of the line and then the XO is at the back, you know, serving pies and stuff like that. So I think that'd be kind of interesting for you guys to see. Um, also, uh, the other video I recorded that's a bit newer is my uh, unboxing of this camera right here, actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just hate some little gassy. Anyway, um, those are going to be coming down the pipe soon. And uh, like I said, now that I have my computer back, um, when I get back to Japan, I can start working on... Uh, uh, my back catalog. <laughs> Sorry, my brain just kind of stopped. But yeah, I can start working on my back catalog now. And I have a lot of stuff to catch up on, let me tell you. But uh, because I'll be getting back fairly late in December, um, I won't actually be releasing those videos until probably at least January. You know, so that's just, just the nature of the beast, I guess. You know, But, you know, we've been really busy this year and it's just been hard to... Uh, get videos out and to, you know, etch away time for editing and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's been difficult, but I, I've been making do. So, um, 
As always, if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below or uh, send me a personal message. As I always say, I read all the comments and I read all the personal messages. And I noticed that YouTube has been doing some funny things with comments lately. So if a video comes out and it says comments have been disabled or something like that, please let me know so I can go in there and try to fix it. Um, I don't know if they're doing maintenance or something like that, so it may just correct itself. I don't know, but I am definitely looking into that. So if something like that pops up on one of my videos, please let me know so I can fix it. So that said, this is the Andy San. Sign out for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this video and others. And I also want to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And I'm coming at you with uh, the end of the year uh, five question tag uh, thing Uh It's a little thing that's been going around YouTube lately, so I figured I'd get myself into the game and. Uh, yeah, just answer some questions. So without further ado, here we go. I wrote them down down here. So if I look down like this, uh, it's because I'm reading the questions. So yeah. <laughs> All right, so question number one. What was the best thing that happened to you this year? Um, I gotta say hands down, uh, next to actually moving to Japan or getting stationed out there, I should say. Um, I have to say moving into an apartment in Japan has been hands down the best thing that's happened to me this year. Without question, without question. All right, number two, what was the worst, most challenging thing that happened to you this year? I also have to say, uh, getting used to the uh, work tempo on my new ship, it's, uh, it's a lot busier than on my old ship back in San Diego, and the environment is a lot less, um, how can I say, a little less casual than it is back in San Diego, so it's, that's another thing I had to get used to, and just a different climate, uh, working with different people, things like that, and it, it was, it's been really hard on me, I have to say. Um, there's a couple times I really went through uh, some depression uh, because of it, just because it was so different and, uh, you know, people didn't get along like they did back on my old ship, so um, it was definitely something difficult that uh, I fortunately uh, worked through and I'm back to my happy self for now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Number three. Tell us about your favorite thing from 2013, like uh, shows, games, apps, stuff like that. So I have to say, uh, one of my favorite things, maybe not my all-time favorite thing, but one of my favorite things is uh, Rock Lee from Naruto. He got his own spin-off in 2013. I think it's called uh, Naruto SD Rock Lee no Seshun something or other. Um, just look up uh, Naruto SD on uh, Crunchyroll. It has the whole series as the, at the time of this recording, so you can watch all 50 some odd episodes, and it is hilarious. <laughs> Especially if you're a fan of uh, Naruto. I'm, me personally, I'm more of a casual fan, but I, I still get a lot of the references and stuff like that, so it is nice to um, also see some of the more subtle humor and just kind of stabs at the anime industry that it has just very subtly, but but they're there. So, and it's just fun to see Rock Lee do his, uh, his Rock Lee thing. So yeah, definitely a series to check out. All right, now we're on to number four. Show us the three best things you bought this year. Well, two of those things I can't show you because uh, the number one thing that I bought this year is my Japanese apartment and that's 3,000 some odd miles away. So I obviously can't show you that. Uh, my new camcorder, which is what I'm recording on right now, uh, the Sony CX430V. Uh, Obviously, I can't show you because I'm recording on it. But I can show you one of the other things, and that is my Japanese cell phone. It's a uh, Motorola Razr M, bought via SoftBank. So you know it's Japanese, even though it's made in America, I guess. So whatever. <laughs> yeah, turns out Motorola is not that big of a company out in uh, Japan, so... I got egg on my face, but it's still a good phone, nonetheless. Uh, let's see. And we'll wrap it up with question number five. I can get my whole hand in there. Question number five. <laughs> All right, what's my New Year's resolution? Now, I know a lot of other people have, you know, the typical ones, you know, lose weight and, I don't know, do better at stuff, you know. And, or, you know, I, 
I know I need to lose weight too, but why pick such a generic thing? So let's go with something a little slightly less generic, even though it's still pretty generic. But um, I think my New Year's resolution for 2014 is going to be to uh, get, get more serious about uh, dating in Japan. I mean, I am getting closer to 30, and I think that, you know, it should be time for me to start settling down or at least start thinking of... Uh, developing relationships rather than just going solo all the time, you know, so I think we're gonna get a little more serious about my relationships, you know, and I'm in Japan I'll be in Japan, you know, I'm in, I'm in Ohio right now visiting my folks, but uh, I'll be in Japan So I think that's a that's a great place to uh, meet some wonderful ladies and uh, If you're interested, you know, send me a personal message How you doing? <laughs> anyway, yeah, you know, just getting serious about, you know, dating, maybe not for marriage I mean, we'll see where it goes but um, yeah, definitely start hitting up the dating scene and start to get more serious about developing personal relationships with people. So yeah, that's uh, my little five question end of the year 2013 thing to do, Bob. Um, I guess the rule of this is I'm supposed to tag people, but I don't know who to tag. So um, yeah, if you guys uh, want to hit up this whole uh, uh, five question thing to do, Bob. Uh, you can either uh, list your answers in the comments below, or you too can uh, make a video like this one and just uh, reference it in the comments below as well. I know that YouTube is a little more keen on uh, doing uh, like links and stuff like that. So if you do like a message response to this or a video response, I mean, to the five question thing, uh, be sure to put it in the comments below or simply just list them out in text. So yeah, that said, this is the Andy San signing off for now. Thinking. You guys for tuning into this video and others, and I also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.